All right, guys, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Merrick Health. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that Merrick was the first company to step up and help support the Table Talk podcast. You guys are selecting Merrick for your telehealth platform needs, but it also tells me that they're providing the service that you're all looking for. They have a couple different ways that they go about doing this. The first is through a self-selected experience. So you go to the link in the description box. So there's a table talk panel, which is the full panel. That would be the panel that I personally get twice a year, but probably is more suggested to get that full panel once a year. That's checking everything. Optimal performance, longevity, health, hormones, you name it, it's all there. The other panel is a checkup panel. You don't need to have the full panel every single time you have blood. I get my blood work done on a quarterly basis. So once a year, there's a full panel. Sometimes there's even more than that. And then there's the checkup panel, which is going to be every three or four months. With a guided optimization, you're connected with a patient care coordinator. And the patient care coordinator will meet with you to determine what your needs are what you're looking for. Anything to be able to help optimize your health or mitigate without judgment like you would have if you go to see your physician now. So the discount code again is Table Talk. The link is in the description box, Merrick Health for all your hormone optimization and performance needs. The Swiss Symposium 2023. Yes, we are bringing this back to Columbus again. The date is October 20 and 21, Columbus, Ohio, Hilton, it's the same location it was last year. If you head over to the website, there's a big banner that links directly to Swiss. There's also a link in the description box so you can see who the presenters are as we are booking them for the symposium. The symposium has been going on for 20 years. It's, in my opinion, probably a little biased, but in my opinion, one of the best symposiums when it comes to strength and conditioning, uh, sport medicine, therapy, physical therapy. Right now, the admission is 38% off or 48% off. It's I'm don't know. I'm not looking. I'm just kind of looking at the camera right now, but it's the early, early, early bird rate. That rate is until July 1st. So now is the best time for you to sign up. When you go to register, there's three different ways that you can res register for the symposium. There's the general admission, which gets you into all the different lectures that you want to go to. The caveat is there's three or four lectures going on at the same time. So the second option allows you to purchase the videos of all the lectures for you to be able to watch at a later time. So that allows you and gives you access to everybody that's presenting if there's two people presenting at the same time that you would really like to see. The format that those are in is, it's a streaming service. So it's, it's if you've ever purchased a training course from anybody before, it's very similar to that. So you log in and then there's all the presentations that are there. You just click, you watch, you stream. It's how it works. The third option is the VIP option. And included in that is the Sunday after the symposium. A limited number of people will be coming out to our gym, the S5 compound at Elite FTS with a handful, maybe a little bit more of the presenters that are there just to train, to hang out, have some barbecue, have a good time. And that again is limited on the attendance. It's already 50% sold out or 50% of the spots left, depending on how you want to look at it. Go to the link in the description. We'll have more information about the Swiss throughout the podcast. As we move forward, we have a lot of the presenters booked for the podcast. So we'll be talking more about it. We'll see you there. As I want to call out the limited edition apparel, the link is in the description. As I've spoken about before, the limited edition apparel is apparel that I basically come up with. So some of the designs suck, some of them not so much. It's a weird thing. The ones that I think are gonna do really well usually don't. The ones that I think aren't gonna do really well 
do really well. Either way, they're all limited runs, so it changes you know, every single month. But all limited edition items are tri-blend material with, you know, the cut that everybody wants now that's a little bit tighter on their arms so they can show off how big their fucking arms are. The limited edition items directly support the podcast. So head over, pick up your shirt today. Could be a hoodie, could be shorts. We got these ball hugger shorts right now, which I would never wear, but I was told they were super popular, but you know what? They were wrong because they're still sitting there and I probably should discount them right now. Anyhow, if you want to see the discount on the ball hugger shorts, head over, over to the limited edition apparel, link in the description box. Today's episode is brought to you by EliteFTS.com. Founded in 1998 with the primary aim to live, learn, and pass on. Please help Elite FTS support this mission by smashing the like button, leaving a comment, sharing with a friend, and thinking of us for your training needs. If you can put it in a gym bag or load weights on it, Elite FTS has it. What's going on? I'm Dave Tate, and we are broadcasting from the middle of the Elite FTS weight room, where the underground still thrives, and you're part of the crew. It's time to sit down, keep it real, and cut the bullshit. Welcome to Table Talk. <laughs> So good. <laughs> <laughs> Every window. So we're starting. It's not the fall that gets you. All right, I guess yeah. we're starting this. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of Table Talk. The guests today, for like the tenth time, are <clears throat> Matt Rhodes, Jim Wendler, and Vincent Desenzio. This is going to completely go off the rails. So before it starts going too far off the rails, got a couple <laughs> announcements I want to make. One of them's in regards to Swiss. The early bird rate is still up. It's on the site. The link is in the description. Yesterday I was talking to Kanakin, and all the presenters are pretty much solidified, laid out, done. That should start popping up on the the link that's in the cart that goes to the presenter page. So if you go in there, we'll say for more information, click on that. It's too much shit to put on one page in the shopping cart because yep. there's a lot of the different presenters. Jim will be presenting. Um, Sheena Lehman will be presenting as well. I want to do a special shout out to her new book, I Can Jump Rope. It's also a follow up to the book, The Power of the Note. These, <clears throat> these books are based around uh, training children that are on the spectrum, which <laughs> I guess we were <laughs> in our own fucked up way. We yeah. kind of all were as power lifters, but Vincent's works with special needs and both you guys are working with high school kids. So <laughs> the, well, and they're not all they're in there, but the, the oh, cool right. thing with this is she, yeah, she, Sheena was the one that um, helped my son when he right. was young and helped progress through in this recent book, I Can Jump Rope, is talking about milestones, where as power lifters, we had the squat bench and the deadlift, but that doesn't really work so well with special populations it could be jumping rope it could be hanging from a monkey bar and she details how she uses that for the different children that she's worked with the link is in the description check that out the first book was awesome sorry to interrupt i didn't read the second yet but i as someone professional in the field the first book was really amazing there you can have the second i'll give it each you guys that's the first one i think you've seen that one yeah well Um, done by sheena yeah definitely worth the read check it out pick it up help support the podcast will her she is our senior content editor if anybody didn't know she's been with us for 10 years and does an amazing job so my pleasure to shout that book out and congratulations to her for publishing the second book the next thing i want to talk about is the crew the training crew the link is in the description Uh, Just to give an update on that, within the next couple weeks, we're going to launch a tier membership for the crew. I don't know exactly what the rates are going to be for the tiers. I'm going back and forth with what that is right now. But what I can say is tier three, which is what everybody has right now. And if you sign up right now, it will automatically become tier three, be grandfathered in or a legacy member until this changes over. So I would highly suggest you join the crew now and become a legacy member when you join the crew you get the extra podcast each month which is the crew cast you also get access to our training discord which has form checks where you can put any of the big three lifts in there your accessory lifts and we have team members in there and other community members will help break down the lift tell you what is wrong with that there's a training q a there's about 50 different ebooks there's seminars there's lectures 
and the highest the highest tier member, which you would automatically be right now, is also eligible to register for crew training events that we're going to have a few times each year out here at the compound for just, I call it training, <laughs> barbecue, bullshitting, and ball busting. <laughs> and so that allows that as well. So I highly suggest you go join the crew today because it will save you either 25 or 50% on what the tier three rate is going to be. You join now, you're automatically going to be tier three. With that said, let's get on with the podcast. I always got like five questions in here to discuss. <laughs> Where they, I never stick to them. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to I'm going to ask the first one, and then that will be like a jumping off point. I also got these stupid question cards, which are going to be funny if we get stuck, which I seriously doubt we will. We can, yeah, right? we can talk. Let me see those. Dude. Yeah. Here, <laughs> oh boy. Actually, just start with those because this could be funnier in hell. You can reword and recontext any of those. All right. First, I'm going. While well, Jim's uh, figuring out card, you, I'm going to give every. You asked the first question, Dave. Let me search for something that's. I'm giving. Well, what I, what I, I got a gift in. first for everybody. I, is that a Fit Crunch bar no. or something like that? You it's know what? I gotta admit, it's a muscle sandwich. Is it a big? These you were fucking me? good, man. These were good. You have the chocolate one. This the peanut butter graham cracker. It is the original. The this package, is the original. The these package are the shit. changed, but the taste is the same. Dude, Jim and I used to eat all these before. You never sold them before you. Sold I them. know we never sold them. They hey, Dave. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but someone ate all the muscle sandwiches. No, <laughs> they're, they're they're sold where, where did these come from? <laughs> I ordered them off of Amazon. They're are still they like, making them. Are they like ten years old? I no, know. they're brand new. They taste as good as they. They. You know how you. you yeah. You nostalgia. You, you romanticize things. These are as good as you will remember. They're fantastic. So it's not just us going back remembering no. something like. No. I, I split one with my wife the other day. She's like, "You're kidding me." Yeah, you remember like growing up how Taco Bell was the shit, and you go now, and you're like, "What yeah. the fuck happened?" No, no. Yep. It's it's not like the Taco Bell thing. Take no, take a bite, and you're gonna see that like, never happened to me with the Big Mac. It got taste. smaller though, man. It did. The taste is sound still. I think. Now you got to order a double cheeseburger now with Big Mac sauce. But, oh yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I've done. You got to hack it. I've done the the double <laughs> the double quarter pounder with Big Mac sauce. Yeah, is solid. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go back. Yeah. Dave wanted to walk something yeah. back. What, what, yeah. I, we had a text the other day. What was it about? The what? Oh, the fucking what, what was the, what was that one? The, <laughs> the fit crunch, thing. right? Yeah. Because it's. Now that I'm watching Get my, my eat a little bit better, last right? Year. So I'm having these stupid protein bars, right? I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to try the Fit Crunch. And it, uh, Go ahead. You it, have it, it was all right. It. it was good, man. Yeah. So I had to send him a text saying, you know, look. <laughs> they had to hurt it's, still not, it's still not a fucking Snicker Never bar. Never said it was. But yeah. I'm not going to eat a Snicker bar. Yeah. yeah. So, so, But yes, fucking. these are, seriously... I, it the package change and they're they're just as good. They're they're yeah. amazing. Anybody from there that would like to support the podcast, <laughs> yes, <laughs> reach out. Let us know, or we'll reach out to you, and we'll go from there. Um, we, first question that I have here is: We've all been asked all you know training stories and all this other stuff. I want to go back even further. <laughs> like we, you you started training in high school, right? Yes. I know Jim did, and I, you did as well. What's one of the stupidest training sessions you ever did in high school that you can think back on that's either it's funnier in hell or stupid or just intense but one of them that you think back on like oh my god that's funnier in hell so what is the it's it's almost like a glute ham raise but you, we used to do it where a partner would hold your legs down yeah. and you'd go forward and yeah. come back yeah. yeah my friend in high school every time i every session would do that and he he would pinch the back of my hamstring <laughs> So viciously. What do you mean, pinch? Like the skin, like a monkey bite. Like, you know, kids, you grab each other. Oh, so you're going down and then he yeah. would just pinch you. And almost every, it's like me not making fun of Rhodes. It, it just, it always happened. And he's going to walk into it yeah, every time. And I'm like, don't, don't. And I'd have welts on the back of my legs. Now, not a great training story, but that's the first thing that came to mind. That anytime I did that stupid <laughs> You know what, that's exercise. probably in some context over the years, that's probably become some muscle activation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I use priming my right hamstring. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I'll think of something better while these guys, I, yeah. I gave him some time what do you got? Throw Mine away. is just the dumb stuff of thinking the bench press was important. Like nothing, like any specific workout that was crazy. But every day, you've got a bench, <laughs> and it's like just no squat, no nothing, no nothing, just stupidity. And then I had someone kind of take me under their wing, and yeah, oh, okay. 
All right, so when I was a sophomore in high school, there was seven of us sophomores that got moved up to varsity. And uh, so, of course, it's a big, big to do because there's seven young kids and the var juniors and seniors didn't like us. And uh, we had a squat test in which, I don't know why they chose this, but you had to squat your body weight, 1.5 times your body weight for as many reps as you could. So I was, oh my God, I was uh, 160 pounds. So I, 240, is that right? Yep. One and a half. And I did uh, 44 reps, because it was Tom Rathman's number, which is fucking retarded. And right after that, we had a run uh, conditioning. And I, so first of all, not only that changed the coach's outlook. They're like, holy cow, how's this 160 pound kid squat 245 pounds or whatever it was for 44 reps. They actually changed their training. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is, mm -hmm. but I remember we had, and when back, that's back in the day running. We didn't just run 10 hundreds. You had to run like 30. And yeah. I remember mm -hmm. I was crawling half the time. <laughs> I couldn't even fucking walk. I couldn't move anything. And I just remember being like, uh, <clears throat> I shouldn't have done this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was like I'm, I was so fucking pumped up that I kicked so much ass, and then I just realized I just got my ass kicked. And the second one was, it was probably my senior year. We were doing two a days or three a days. That's what we did. And remember, we had uh, to run our conditioning afterwards. You guys remember the old 300 yard shuttle test? Ugh. Mm -hmm. 25 you, yards and 25. Back. We did 30. So 30. 30, 30 okay, so yeah. yeah. So you did uh, 30 10. yards down and back 10 times. If you've ever done that, after just one, your legs are smoked. Well, we had to finish in a certain amount of time, and then if you didn't, everyone had to go again. Well, no one finished in time. We did 15 of those. Oh, my Lord. 15. And this was during three days. And I remember being like, I, I remember I, we, everyone weighed in like 20 pounds lighter that day. You know, at, after yeah, practice, yeah. and I just remember like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, and those are I, I think I know those as down and backs, right? Yeah, but it's, it's like uh, yeah, but if uh, the so you down and back, but you do down and back ten times. Yeah, and uh, the amount of muscle burn and Holy stuff was fuck. crazy. So at the end, no one was even close to making times. So yeah, people were just puking their guts out. And I remember being like, God, I still got practice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's back in the day when when it was, yeah. uh, and it's that's going to build mental toughness, and that's yeah, gonna, you know, well, the, there's something to that, but. It's like well, we would always play our later. first game really well, and then yeah. as the season went on, everyone was just Dead. too tired. Yeah. Now, my senior year, our, uh, I think we started changing things towards the end, but we never. That's why even today at London, cut out all conditioning during the season. Fuck it. You're right. Yeah, I remember make, that make shit. Practice I was, good. Yeah, I remember that. I couldn't escape it because it was there for football, and that sucked because it's the whole field. And then wrestling. And then even, fucking wrestling, yeah. it came back. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I remember during football, you couldn't go to the. It was like a water it was a trough. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah like dude. We got we pipe. got one water break for yeah. football. That's uh, all we got. A session, and, and it was, it was never rusty. Then. Yeah. It was all. That's why yeah. I, I got my, all my minerals in. Yeah, your minerals, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. Who needs <laughs> who needs element if you can get your fucking sodium <laughs> yeah. and your yeah. minerals through a rusty? And they pipe. fucking yelled at you if you took too long at the fucking hole. Like, come yeah. on, we gotta go, we gotta go. You had to get there first too, <laughs> because yeah. they some you. fat fucker in front of you is gonna be yeah. sucking on it the whole time and not leave. They they'd give you five minutes and at thirty seconds they'd be like, all right, we gotta get back to it. Yeah, you're like, you know. No, yeah, yeah. It helped us see if I can stimulate more ideas. Some of the things that I had was um, my first weight set I got was just a weight set, like the plastic stupid shit that we all Did got. You have the, the sand, cement weight, the yep. sand weight set. Yep. And so the bench press I made was sitting it on uh, milk crates. And I remember in the front yard, I did like all the weights. You know, whatever it yeah. was, 200 pounds. And then I tried to do a backflip and missed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm so thinking I'm going to stick to this lifting thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm like, but I was doing like uh, ground presses, which were yeah. floor presses. Like I, yeah. I invented that shit, right? Because there's yeah. no bench. Jesse Kellum, my ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Then we used to do this shit for biceps where we would sit on the floor and put the bench, like the dumbbell bench, mm -hmm. not the press bench, to support the arms. Yep. And yeah, then yeah, a yeah. low cable, and then a fucking yeah. curl. And then we yeah, curl yeah. for a half hour. <laughs> so like we would do, yeah. we would work up and yeah. then work down. Then yeah. we, the whole thing was just to keep going because the burn was good. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember uh, the strength coach for the Cincinnati Bengals? He was a hit guy. Yeah. If I heard his name, I would know it. And uh, he was a big fucking bench Ken, presser. Ken, Ken, Ken. No, it'll I, come to me in a minute. It's uh, Kim, 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 Kim Wood. Yes, yes, yes. I remember reading an old thing. He's like, uh, he didn't know any better when he was training. So he's like, you you worked out at a weight. 
Does that make sense? So you just like, what do you work out at? He just, so every, when he did a hundred pounds, he's like, well, I got to do a hundred reps. And when he worked up to 125, he did how many reps? 125. 125. Yeah, yeah. And then he got up to 200. He's like, I got to do 200 reps. That's what he thought was, uh, and that's why he was such a good bench presser. But it's like, God, he's like, 500's got to be fucking tough. <laughs> <laughs> a long day. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to make it that far. I mean, there's a lot of stupid yeah. shit. I, I did well, a lot of stupid shit. Well, along those shit. lines, I remember Kevin Schmidtke. When mm -hmm. you did one of those, by the way, Kevin Schmicky played with us. He was one yeah. of the few guys, and I'm not at making this up, who couldn't train. He would get so yeah. fucking big, so fast that you yeah. just like you'd like listen, just do a couple sets, you'd be fine. Yeah, really? he was so hyper responsive. And oh. I remember one year he got too big, like he got comically large. Like, and then coach is like, dude, you got to lose 20 pounds. Like, you can't. <laughs> yeah, how did it hurt him? He just was so Probably stiff too and big. too tight. Yeah, and he's a yeah. super fast kid. And uh, But I remember, like, he was the hyper – like, what a fucking asshole. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, there was a kid that plays at University of Cincinnati right now. He's their court starting quarterback. And he was player of the year in basketball and in football. It's like, you know, save some pussy for the rest of us. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, I mean, that's yeah. insane, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. What a dick. Well, it's kind of a lot so of – what, what, what were you – But it's just that we, we had uh, – now. Sorry, buddy. We, yeah. No, it's all good. It, this isn't a great story anyway. <laughs> But it's along the lines of the bicep thing. We had done our Let's whatever gym, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. Jim told us to do because he like twenty ones. Yeah, but we we were doing dips, but we weren't doing dips. We were using the machine that you could sit in. Oh my God, is that gay? Yeah, it Sorry. was. Yeah, it, it was That's one of those fruity. deals where we. <laughs> That's very. Vincent. We did it for like thirty minutes or forty five minutes, and it was just. In the next couple days, it was just like, oh my God. Then you try to recreate that, mm -hmm. and you can't. You know, you have some of those days that just. You just feel really good, and you get that the crazy pump, ever, and ever, the burn. First time I ever awesome. took ephedrine, I couldn't. And I'm then, like, dude, I'm gonna work out forever. <laughs> that was you know, maxed shit, out on squat Many twice. Things, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I can. How come I can't? I'm not joking. How come I, I can't? Did, I squatted, and then I did like 500 for eight, and then I did leg press. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, fuck. I think I'm better for. I can do 500 for 10. Couldn't urinate, but oh, oh, <laughs> well, that, that, that was a fucked up thing, right? Especially <laughs> when you stand there, you start putting your briefs come in. on. You know, you can do it. You oh, got yeah. your briefs you on. You your took epidurin, caffeine, and uh, aspirin. Yeah, you know, I got all. pissed so bad. <laughs> and you got, if you can wiggle your dick out from the fucking pubes to, through the suit, you stand there all you broken still hard. Go. You can't fucking go. That was a nightmare, man. Because yeah. you didn't know. Like, is this a false alarm or is this for real? I remember going to meets and like, you know, after you warm up a little bit, you're like, you start the breach out and like, dude, you gotta. You gotta make Once a decision. These are on, hey, that's, on. That's like, it. I'm yeah. not taking these fuckers off. And it's like, yeah. no, I'm good. People missed all that. I, I, it's, I know it's nostalgic, but it, it, there was a lot more fun because I'm still around it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll still go to some competitions with a friend and I'll watch. And it's just the fun isn't there. The wild stories, the, the, you know, I guess the, the saying old school is always better, but it just, it was a wild sport. My, it was a wild my sport, first and now meet it's was. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. It's just, and it's still great, but it's just you don't have the stories. Like, yeah, you know who's well, there was who's big, doing what in the back yeah. room, and there was big personalities. Yeah. Well, I think that too, but you also had to have a crew. Oh right? yeah. So now they don't have that. So if you you get six people together for yeah. four or five months, then you get past that getting to know each other. You phase, get stories, and then you really start fucking with each other. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. when the crazy shit happens because you're purposely trying to make somebody mad, but they know you're doing that. But then when you can still break them, yeah, it's yeah. Fucking I, would, I would do that to Josh all the time. You didn't have to work very hard. To no, break I him. didn't. Because well, so when we were benching, he was better at some of the training lifts than I was, like floor press or whatever, whatever they were. And when he would choose what we were doing, I'm like, oh, Josh is better at me than this. <laughs> so he'd walk in the gym. I'd be like, Josh, I'm not going to talk any trash to you today. I'm not going to say a word to you. I promise. I don't want to get in your head. This is a lift that, <laughs> that you're probably better than me at. And I want you to have a good day because you, you deserve, you're doing a me too. And you, you, so I'm not going to say a word to you all. So I would do this while we were getting, <laughs> getting ready. Up, yeah. Right. And then when the, it would start, I didn't always keep my mouth shut, but sometimes I just not talk to him at all the rest of the day. Did he get mad because oh, he didn't? A, no, he got, well, I would get in his head. He was easy yeah. to get in his head. It was so it was so fun to mess with him. Uh -huh. He tormented him. Oh, it was bad. It was bullying. It, it was straight it was, bullying. It was, it was straight bullying. Bullying. Before bullying was a thing. Yeah, like, it was even straight I, bullying. Even I felt uncomfortable. Like, yeah, oh. it was straight bullying. Nobody wanted to be around him because he was just it was unbearable. Yeah. It was just he'd be on him from the second he walked in the door. He couldn't awesome. do anything right. 
and he would be on him, and you just be, like, oh. You know when all the energy goes out of the room? And you're just, oh, I mean, oh, settle down, Beavis, because if you were in a mood, too. I mean, outside of showing up, did he do anything right? I mean, is there yeah. some? Yeah. He was, he was a pretty good lifter. He, he was, was a he great was a handler. Lifter. He was yeah. a great teammate. He lifted. He and Rhodes what just. he was willing to put in, he got out what he put in. So, like, if he had worked harder, he'd have been better type thing. But he, he did what he Big, was kid. willing to do. He fractured his sense. forearm yes. benching. At a meet, and yeah. uh, he still came back. He yeah. had surgery mm -hmm. yeah. and still came back yeah. and did some good lifting. Yeah. And you know, yeah. to say that about someone is to say a lot because a lot of people won't come back. I mean, that was, I was like, Woof, yeah. that was bad. Like I'm like, yeah. he was lifting. I said, turn around, walk I was, away. I was two lifters. Like, you don't want to see that when it when it went. It was like, oh god, because mm. you heard it. Yeah, that was heard it. That was oh, vicious. Was, yeah, it was a rough one. But yeah, Luckily, he, we didn't have to. We left one person to stay at the hospital with him, and neither of us were the short straw. Well, yeah. I was competing, so yeah. No, that was yeah. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll stay if I have to. Yeah. Oh no, I got. It. I'm like, okay, thanks. Yeah, I gotta take care of Rhodes. Yeah. At what yeah. point did the really stupid shit stop? Yeah, you know, like the tricep push downs for a thousand reps. Well, uh, according, to tomorrow, right. according to tomorrow, according to tomorrow, it's it not. Yeah. For me, for me, it was honestly like when. I was introduced to the West Side stuff, and I had something to follow, and and then the next step would be getting with Vincent and that group, and really just like if you expend enough energy benching and doing the supplemental lifts for the bench, and you have energy to do tricep pushdowns, you probably should have benched harder mm -hmm. or done more, you know, more floor presses or more close or whatever. You should have worked on the lifts that were a little more important to building, in this case, the bench. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, so it wasn't anybody saying anything. No, no it, but one of the things that I was really good at, and I'll toot my own horn if I could. Uh, <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, um, is I, 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 as much as I talked, I listened and I watched a lot. Yeah. And so I'm like, I kind of want to do what he does in the bench. I'm going to watch what he does, and then I'm going to do what he does, and I'll figure out why he's doing it or ask eventually. But I shut up as far as talking about training, and I just watched and I listened. And I'm like, all right, if he's doing that, I'm going to do that. And then I figured my own path out based on kind of what he was trying to accomplish. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, yeah, no one ever said, like, stop doing this. Um, and then I think when I started training with Teddy – uh, Forbes to squat. Yeah. He told me to drop the fourth day of lifting. And I did. That was probably the only thing that anyone ever told me, like, stop doing this. Do what do you mean the fourth day? So I was doing the typical two bench days to squat, like the West side deal. Yeah. And he's like, drop your other lower body day and just hammer it on whatever day we squatted Saturday or whatever it was. He's like, we're going to hammer it and then let your body rest. And I fought it because, mm -hmm. but I was like, this guy's helping me. He's done what I want to do. I'm going to listen. And I didn't necessarily like it, but I was smart enough to listen to someone who was better than I was and go, all right, we'll give it a shot. Did it work? Yeah. For me, it did, yeah. Now, do you yeah. think it worked just because it was a change? I think that was part of it. Yeah. I also um, think you were probably out of shape. Yes. And that's not an insult? No. Because so many it's, of yeah, us were? I, I, I think it was I think it was a... <laughs> you I, just didn't... You, didn't, you we weren't were in shape. Yeah. We were in shape for what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. but that fourth day sometimes... That's getting, bullshit. I'm just making shit. Well, I think getting rid of <laughs> that other, fourth day. I also I fell I know exactly in, what was happening. Right <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I fell into the trap, too, with... with the, you're this, not doing anything. <laughs> fell into the trap. Fucking, yeah. I was out there telling everybody to do it. Yeah. Well, no, no, but I mean, as far as the trap of, of speed work, thinking that... If you didn't have at least two plates on the bar when you were squatting, you know, and yeah, like the the weight of the dynamic day, my ego was too fragile to be like, you know, maybe I should be doing two twenty five instead of two seventy five or three fifteen, just because mm -hmm. I could move it fast and I could do it. it. Couple that with the max effort day. At some point, the, the body's going to give out. But if you keep the dynamic day lighter. Yeah, it, you know what I'm, I'm well, not he, saying. He had to right, love it but, because he got a longer rest period. Yeah, because he had to take his five plates down in year two. <laughs> it's awesome, <laughs> right? But he did it when he when he was doing. I can't remember which competition it was. You started over and you didn't do the dynamic effort, you know, 
per West Side, but the concept you did, you started with 135. I, I did. And I brought it, it back like, to I brought it back to 185 it, on yeah. the bench. And That's it was like I, triples, and then it was like 185 to 205 to 225 to 245, whatever it was. I ended up. That was my first 600 pound bench, and That's Dave thirty percent. Dave, Dave helped me because I ended up doing. 365 by the end of my 365 for yeah. speed with like a double band and a it, chain. Yeah, and it was essentially linear periodization, wasn't it? Like every two weeks or three. I don't remember exactly yeah, what I it went was, way but it was back a down. super long. You just, <coughs> excuse me, you were still able to hammer your your Friday day yep. with the heavy stuff, the board presses and the shirt and all that. And then on your Monday, I think it was you 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 tape you tempered your volume so your body could accumulate. A, acclimatized to whatever you were doing. And so yes. by the time you got to 365, you were ready for I was it. Right, yeah. Whereas when I probably started doing the West Side stuff, you went right off the I percentage. Went, Boom, this is what I'm supposed to do. 12 sets of two, you know, whatever it was. And 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 I I I didn't know any better. I just followed what I was supposed to do and I wasn't ready for it. My mm -hmm. body wasn't ready. And then eventually obviously that's gonna catch up with you. It, it, it's funny now, even so many years later that the whole time <clears throat> Jim, myself, and many others were telling people, this is a very adaptive. You know, like we can't really tell you what right. we do because we're in there. But the, the people are like, what percent? You're like, uh, 40 to 90? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't know. Then after a while, you kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. well, it's know, like where a, it's supposed to be. I try to tell people, like, you know, when I, I and I, I didn't train there, you guys train there, but it's, you had a lot of guys of a lot of different weights, you know, weight classes and strength, but all jumping and doing assistance with whatever was on the bar. Yeah. You know, for yeah. pull down, like if you were, if you happen to be 275 pounds, you'd be doing the same pull down where you guys would just go after each other. Yeah. And some well, people would. Don't don't misunderstand because that was a plate loaded machine, right? And it was like a top loaded. It wasn't the easiest thing to put weights on, right? So what was on there was on there, yeah, kind of. And whatever handle is whatever handle, yeah. yeah. They're, they're waste so, your time so with you, that, right? But, yeah. yeah. But it's the whole thing about volume now and how people are talking about you know uh, effective amount of reps, and it's like yeah, well, you know, you're gonna do some heavier stuff for lower reps, and you're gonna do some lighter stuff for a lot of reps. So if you weigh you know, 185 and the pull down bar was had the same as somebody who's 275. You're going to be doing less reps than the guy who's 275. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you ain't reps. taking it off. Yeah. And it, and it yeah. worked for everybody. Yeah. And I fall into that trap of trying to find the perfect, well, you know, for max hypertrophy and strength, and I need to be in this percentage, and you need to be this far away from failure. And you just, the information can make you really perseverate now. Whereas yeah. we just, everybody got strong, and, you know, they just, you just did what you did. Yeah. There were a lot of different methods mm -hmm. to get big and strong, yeah. and most of them work if you're d yeah. disciplined, in a lot of consistent, and you have some intensity. And a lot of them mirror each other, even if they're not the same. Yeah. Like, if you want to lift heavier weights, you probably do lower reps. <laughs> you want to build bigger muscle, yeah. right? And name the different programs. Give that me, a, were give that me all... a pen and paper there, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> you want that? Yeah, you know, but okay. yeah. just struck I, I old. some, some I things it. are, <laughs> it's like what you were talking about with uh, Elijah and that the metabolic training you're doing, like every time you, you look at things, it, this is what holds true. Yep. And it's it, like some, some things are just, it doesn't matter what system you're following or whatever, like some things hold true. Regardless, regardless of, regardless of the, the program that we're doing, I noticed yeah. the same things over and over again, and I tried hard not to see it. Uh, whatever, I'm working with uh, one of our guys who used to play at London. He's going, he's playing college, and we're doing some of the, for six weeks, we're doing uh, a version of the metabolic circuit that they did in Nebraska to put muscle on. How and long ago was that program from? It, from Nebraska? Yeah. It Late probably 70s, had his, 80s. yeah, the metabolic circuit has probably been around for a while. I know they've, you know, changed it. So I don't know what impetus they would be on now, but it's probably been 40 years, 30 years. It still works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I just noticed like the, a lot of the same similarities in just what we do with, you know, fire through one program, whatever you want, you know, with the kids and stuff. I'm like, God, I can't escape the the realities. Now I always think, well, maybe I've got bias, which is, and I have also the way I coach no. the lifts, uh, you know, it's primarily from like a West side style. And even when I was in high school, we does like you push hard every rep mm -hmm. on a main lift, you go like you're not just sandbagging the reps. So I think that might have something to do with, you know, I'm just, I thought about all the things about why 
these truths, you know, seem to be apparent no matter what you're doing. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? No, I get it. So then I am like, well, it has, I mean, I'm always, always the constant. So I have to look at it that way, but it's pretty cool. You know, the, and I'm, so I'm starting, when I started this experiment, uh, three weeks ago, I had this entire just hypothesis. And now I'm like, fuck dude, it was like nothing what I thought it would be. Now I have to morph. And it's like, to me, that's the most fun thing because Elijah's such a solid dude. He's a great kid. <clears throat> He's a tremendous technique. You don't even have to coach that shit. You're I'm now coaching how I want. Like I'm programming and like mixing the chemicals now secretly yeah. instead of like, all right, can you guys show up at eight 30 and let's do, you know, mm -hmm. remember when we do pull-ups, that's where we pull ourselves to the bar. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it, yeah, I'm, you can do a little bit of the X's and O's. Well, yeah. Now I'm really doing what I, you know, I love to do. Not that, you know, there's not a place for both, but it's really cool. So it's, uh, I, I'm excited for the next phase that we're, yeah. we're going to do. What, so. What's what we were talking about today is whether it's five, three, one with the, the group of high school kids he's working or the, call it the Nebraska metabolic circuit, do the, the main lift, don't do a ton of it, and then you can do a little bit more assistance work it just, and your body doesn't get the main. Crap. Just what Louie has been saying for years, it's just uh, the main lift has a big price to pay. Yeah. Big price. And that's why when I'm like, well, maybe because it's the way I coach, because we're not just doing the bodybuilding reps. We're fucking going and we're holding one 1,000. <laughs> You know, it's not just this bullshit, you know, half reps and not enough power. And I'm like, well, that maybe has something to do with it. The point being is it's just, you know, all these different programs, you need. there's always tons of more things that are alike than there are different. Yeah, well, I think having a strong bias is a, a solid strong bias. Say something that takes 20, oh my 20 God. years to develop. I think that's, it's extremely important as long as, the ego doesn't get in the way because if you have that bias, then you, if you really know your bias and your methodology, then you also know every hole associated yep. with it. So anything any critic ever says, you already have said to yourself, right? So now when it comes to having to pivot for a special instance, you have a better frame of reference because you've been asking yourself, you know, yep. Here's where this hole is. Here's where this yeah. hole is. Because nothing's perfect. You kind of already have your you know, plan B and plan yeah. C now, say, in place. Yeah. Say well, you don't so have a bias, though. Yeah. You just got a clusterfuck of information yeah, you're trying to stick something to. Well, right. the, the main dude of uh, one of the main guys of Dark Throne said this. I have strong principles and weak opinions. And I fucking love that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, I'm willing to change. Yeah. But I have a core of things that I believe in, and I think that's okay. But uh, I love that saying. <laughs> No, that would yeah. fall. That, that falls true there. I mean, the values, strong yeah. values. You, it, things yep. change around whatever the values are. The values don't have to change. The standards don't have to change. Yep. The principles don't have to change. But, but the circumstances on how they're achieved yep. have to change. And I would say they need to change, because if whatever you're trying to achieve is really important, but yet you're not willing to change to do the things to make it, then that's your fault as the coach or your fault as the individual. Mm -hmm. Like I, I always imagine, if you were uh, a strength coach at Nebraska. 1985 and then you somehow morphed into the future to today like you couldn't coach the same way if with that same group of athletes you know like the current group it's just not the same so i talked to some older coaches like guys been around for, you know 50 60 five years old or something and i always ask them like well how, when did you start like 1978 and i'm like what has changed like holy shit <laughs> everything <laughs> yeah so and they but they're still having great success again they just morphed and you know whatever Whatever obstacles in your way, you have to find a way around it so you get back to those same standards. I guess the one saying. thing I wonder, and you guys might know this because you're around younger athletes, is it's always easy to compare today to yesteryear and you know people that came before. But the top 10% is still always the top 10% of whatever it is. So when I try to think back to high school, it's you know I worked harder than everybody. I always felt in that work harder than everybody else, mm -hmm. and it just not on technique and skills on certain things, but I'm definitely going to fucking effort. work harder. The effort yeah, yeah. was always there. So I'm thinking back, like, was everybody on my team like that? I'm like, fuck no. That's why I hated football so bad, because <laughs> there was only like a handful that actually were. So there was only 10% that were really busting their ass, where when I hear coaches today say, well, yeah, only 10% give a fuck. Has it always been that way, but we just didn't see it? See, the difference, though, Dave, is this. Because is... you, were, you were worried about yourself. You weren't no. worried about the other 90% when you were a kid. Well, I was when I was playing football, and the motherfuckers weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Yeah. But did you really get it then? 
I think so. You did? Because we were losing. Oh, see, yeah. yeah. It's like, fuck this, man. <laughs> yeah, I, we, I, was, I was lucky I was a winning team. So. <laughs> well, <what's, laughs> but you always knew those kids who didn't put it in. What's sad to me is that when you are losing and kids don't see it. Yeah. It's like, hey, it, yeah. it's you guys. It's, it's you. It's well, your yeah, effort. Yeah, it's yeah. your focus. It's, it's, you know, you say you want this, but you're not doing what you need to do. It, well, and then they point the finger. I'm going off on a tangent. Yeah, you were going to say the difference is. Well, let's just we're just going to look at this from a from the view like the not a ma massive macro level, yeah. but the the to even to say top one percent. I'm just like the NFL guys are bigger, faster, stronger than they've ever been. All right, and people always say, well, shit, training must have gotten better, and the answer is probably not. It's the uh, Recovery, human, human evolution. Nutrition. Human evolution yeah. has just gotten there. Oh, Guys are just taller. They're just bigger. They're faster. But it's <clears> – <throat> so if you look at those guys, you think, well, shit, we must have been better working with athletes and all that stuff, when the truth is if you look at the average person, they've gone down quite a bit. So just let's – I'm just – this is not exactly answering the question, but mm -hmm. the kids that maybe didn't work as hard as, <clears throat> as you see now – they were still probably better shape, uh, probably a little more competitive than the kids are today. Doing the minimum. Doing the minimum because yeah. they're already they are the the like I, I you know with my sons you know the kids in the neighborhood man it's fucking unbelievable how many kids are always on their phone and I'm not listen I'm not saying like you know video games are bad my son likes to play Xbox and all that shit I'm just saying in general the average person has gone down when the uh, the top one percent has gone up. So all those average kids, even back then, uh, and I'll give you this, this is a true story, about 12 years maybe after I graduated high school, I went back to my high school and spoke, and uh, I, went, I saw our old track coach, and uh, one of them, and I said, uh, he, <clears throat> good dude, and I'm like, man, I bet you're uh, happy that, you know, my class is gone, because we just drove him nuts. And he's like, are you, he looked at me deadpan, he's like, are you serious, Jimmy? He's like, I would die to have any one of you guys back. <laughs> and he looked completely defeated. He's like, it's so bad now. And so none of us were like great athletes by any stretch of the imagination. He goes, but you guys all worked. When we asked you to do something, you did it, and everyone ran hard. You, you know, know, you make a point because if I think back on the micro level, there were even the ones that didn't play well and didn't do well, usually earned everybody else's respect because they tried hard. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you yeah, your Rudies. So yeah, yeah. And, and if they weren't that, they 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 quit. Yeah. They weren't playing. Yeah. So it, it's it, that's the way I see things. Is is uh, the average? When I get an average kid, it's much different than when my dad got an average kid when he was playing. And it's not, and that doesn't mean that the, these kids are bad by any stretch of the imagination. My greatest coaching achievements, uh, I won't say these kids' names, but they're not even, they barely played and some of them quit. And I thought physically, I've never seen a kid make a bigger change. Uh, as some of my proudest moments. Mm -hmm. And so even though we have all these kick-ass dudes, and I love watching these kids play, I love coaching them. It's awesome watching, like, being able to tinker with it, you know, with the training stuff. It's like, you know, my, we have to bring up the average kid more than anything else because that's the kid mm -hmm. that's going to win you games over the, mm -hmm. the long run. 100%, because th those are the ones most, that are there's, there's most kids. of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. most. That, yeah. Well, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, the great kids yeah. can't display their greatness. Yes, yeah. yes. They need so. the average kids to be able to help them do and that. And if you look even in the NFL, like, it's the same microcosm. You have a lot of average guys they're not average by any stretch but right on at that, that level on that are. level they're average and i always think you know look at the uh the patriots i mean they lived off average dudes except for tom brady there's you know they had some good trust me some great players good players too but other than randy moss like can you really i mean hall of famers like yeah they just didn't have many. a lot and uh so i always think that's why strength coaches and and even teachers exist is to help the average kid exceed you know, or slightly below average, whatever you want to say. I think if, as long as the kid's willing to give effort, I think you can make a massive change. So, how can they do a better job of bringing that up? Bringing what up now? The, the, the teachers, the coaches, uh, neighbors, I talk, everybody. I talked to Rhodes about this, and I, I, the one thing, because of what I do, I'm a behavioralist. And I think that is like Matt and I were talking about in his, where he's working. I'm like, you have to figure. There's, the kids aren't as intrinsically motivated as maybe they once were, or they don't see the benefit to what they're doing. So you have to find a way to make those kids 
motivated. It used to be when we were younger, we had lots of consequences. Like, you know, I know it's like you didn't do what you were supposed to. You were getting a negative consequence. Now, I'm not saying that's the right way to do things, and that's less and less, but now you have to find a way to actually reward the kids. You have to give them something. We think the carrot is doing better, uh, being getting in better shape, being a better football player. They don't see it. So you have to figure out what is going to motivate them and what can you offer them that might just get them to do the work, and then they're going to see the benefit. Like if mm -hmm. um, I, I talked about like in high school, we had this shirt. It was the hit of the week. Oh, man. And they'd give it out at the, every week at football. And then everybody wanted a hit of the week shirt. Only one. So you were out there, you know, you, you didn't necessarily know like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to lift hard. I'm going to run hard. I'm going to. But you just knew you wanted to do everything better because you wanted one of those shirts. So if you find a way to kind of dangle a carrot in front of the in front of the kids the ones who get it are always going to get it but yeah. the ones who don't be like oh yeah you might i i want that yeah i i i, I that's i'm going to work hard for that they don't get that they're trying to work because he works with athletes they, they're yeah. all in sports so they should get that i want to get better so i can be better at this sport but they don't they yeah. don't get they don't yeah. see the yeah. it yet so you have to find a way to kind of, and you're not and I always say like you know when I use behavioralism with my students it's not I'm not taking something away from you you're just not getting the reward that those who did what they were supposed to did interesting it's yeah i'm not saying i it's something you said me sparked a memory in my brain and i'm not saying it's right but when you guys were going through school there were there were, there were, there were paddles no, it was, that was that was no. after that. I got, I did, man. I got them at home. Sure. I didn't get it at school. No, man. I had teachers that would have thin ones with holes drilled in it. Uh. Then I'd have ones that looked like a one board. You know, <laughs> uh, one teacher had. Can one I borrow that like later? <laughs> um, and oh my God, it was either you know you got that or you'd get demerits. The stick or the carrot. And, yeah, <laughs> I mean, so exactly. So yeah. it's you know, it's, I figure I, I this happened a lot. So this is how I know about it. Okay. I remember my principal had a a map of the city, like right behind his desk. And you'd have to stand in front of the desk with your hands on it. And then it would whap, you know, he'd whack you. And um, I, I've realized you start putting, remember the Velcro wallets? I put, one, I put one in these pockets, right? And um, he fucking- Saves your back yeah, too. Whack, it was like three whacks or whatever it was. And before, before he did that, he said, see if you can find your house on the map. No. So it's all well, whack, you know? You know, like, uh, you make like a, a just a fake noise. Yeah. So the, uh. And then when he was done, I'm like, it's right there. He's madder and fuck. I was so happy, right? <laughs> but um, then the music teacher, he had the one with the holes. Um, this is, Obviously this happened fucking a lot. But what this made me think about was you, if, if that was part of the system and then you remove that negative reward, right? And it's supposed to be replaced with some kind of positive reward. But then it's not. Yeah, there's then what do you end up with? Not, there's no consequence. You see what I'm saying? Well, there's, no, yeah. there's no consequence or incentive. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right? Right. right. So there's a void. It's just well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. He's in this. Yeah. I'm not. Well, no, in that's school, what, that's you know? what I'm saying. Uh, but now they'll see not get. So because you can, we those consequences aren't what they used to be, and so the kids see it as when they don't get the reward that they that they're being punished. Yeah, they see that as the punishment. Yeah. So by by giving some by rewarding someone who who went above and beyond and did you know what they were supposed to do, those other kids are like that's their consequence. They're being left. They feel like they're left out. This isn't fair. No, it's not. You just, you didn't earn, but they'll see it as a consequence. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's doesn't make sense. You're not, I mean, weird. there was social consequences with getting whacked too. Like oh, of course. everybody knows it happened. You're a fucking degenerate. You're somebody you shouldn't hang around with, you know, it falls <laughs> into all this other, this is me, right? Yeah. So it falls into all those other categories where it's, I see what you're saying. I just wonder how that it works. I, I, well, I know it works, but I wonder how it's how it's being implemented. So where well, I don't think it is. I don't think enough because it, it, it's hard to do. It's it's you have to think about it, set up your system, and I would imagine once the system's set up and you set the rules, it's much easier to follow. You have expectations, you have rules, yeah. and then it, what happens is you're spending time. You're kind of front loading that behavioralist oh. well, those that behavioralist approach before you're actually worrying about. So uh, talking about. My wife's we, a Spanish. We, my wife's a Spanish. On, remind me, James uh, has his teacher did okay. the positive reward thing. I just remembered. My right. wife teaches Spanish, and she was uh, she was she was having a rough go of it because kids have changed, especially a lot because COVID. And again, we all talk about kids, and I'm not saying 
things are just different, and especially COVID really messed a lot of kids up. So, you know, my wife was an amazing educator, comes back, and now she's struggling with behavior issues. And she's like, she's creating these amazing lessons. She's this amazing teacher. She's one of those people who makes you want to be better at what you do. Like, you're like, man, I wish I could, I could do that. And <laughs> that's good. But then she was, you know, she's struggling. She's coming home upset every day. It's killing. Her. And I said, let's, let's walk this back. Let's, let's put a behavior parent planning. Cause ah, it just, you know, for years it takes too much time. It's too much effort. It's, I'm not going to get to do my lessons. And, but what you realize now is talking to Matt, once you get that in place, you have more time for everything else. You have more time to teach. You have more time to coach because now the kids have expectations. They know it is acceptable. They have rules. They have what they need to do. And because 90 some odd percent are just going to fall in line because most, most people are going to do what they're supposed to do. And now you just have to figure out, what am I going to do with these other couple of percent? What's going to motivate them? Now, nowadays, you don't punish like you used to. And I'm, I actually, you know, it's, it's a good thing from a psychological perspective. No, I I've agree. heard you talk about your childhood. Like, no, you I know, agree. no, I get it. So, so you, know, you, you want to take that away. And it's not where I'm making the kids softer. But you, you find what, like, wow, why is he getting treated so well? Why is she getting treated so well? Why does she get this? You could get it too. Yeah. Well, and think, and you have to just you have to buy into it, and you have to. No, I, I get it. It just clicked. I get yeah. it. You have to do it, and it but it takes time and effort. So I'll start the beginning of the year with rules and consequence. You know the rules and rewards, yeah. and I do that every period, every day, and it probably takes, you know, if it's t it takes over an hour a day when I take it for each period, then it's maybe once or twice a day, and then six months into the school year, it's like once a day, once a week, because you're able to fade that away because now they know it's expected. And when nobody wants chaos, they want to be praised. They want to feel good. So when things just keep getting better, it just, it just, it's a roller coaster. It just, I mean, it just, it's, it builds upon itself, but you have to take that leap of faith to know that, yes, I'm going to get out of my, cause your Matt's area of expertise is coaching. It's not behavioralism. So it's like, oh, coaching is the most important thing. Well, coaching is great if everybody's listening, but if you only have, you know, 50% of the people listening, coaching is only, you know, your coaching isn't that great yet. So you, you, you walk it back. And once you have, once you have people who are more open to listen, they're more receptive. And again, most people don't want chaos. They crave structure. It, you just have to, you have to figure out, you know, what works for you. And my plan, you know, just we modeled her plan different than model mine. I, my principal asked us to speak in front of school and, you know, a bunch of people, you know, came up to us and have been, wow, I've done that. It's really not that hard. Just even if you get a couple people to buy in, it's better than you were doing a week ago. So a behavioralist approach when you're working with kids, especially is just, you're the authority. And Matt gave me one of the greatest quote I use all the time is what is tolerated is encouraged. And if you, you, you just start tolerating more and more because all oh, kids are changing, they don't listen, they don't. So you keep tolerating more and more because you're like, oh, they, you know, that's not about the kids. Sometimes it's about the adults. You know, mm -hmm. you're just constantly making excuses. Oh, they're no kids, no good. Their parents mm -hmm. are no good. Nobody listens. Everybody's, you know, you have your, your space to do with what you want. And that's on you. Mm -hmm. For what you're saying and looking back, you know, with the insight I have now going back to when I was in elementary school i would have worked for that i, I would have you know on, clearly on, on, you work for reward your yeah, life is yeah, based on yeah. that i mean on the on the flip side of that and when they would say shit like get in line in my head i'm like fuck you i ain't getting in line <laughs> yeah let everybody else get in line first then i'll get the fuck up but just because you said that i'm not doing that and that's what how my brain but if there know, was worked. a reward to that well, before all that, you know, like that type of thing, instead of sitting in the back, I mean, there's incentive. Instead of punishing you yeah. for not listening because yeah. you want, you were, you were obstinate and defiant because you were just, you were not treated well. Yeah. What would you say with uh, James? Oh, we had, uh, I don't know if this was all the way through the school, but I know it was in his class. He had Raider bucks and it was money. And if every time you did something correct, you earned like 50, whatever, everything had a, some kind of price tag on it. And, uh, you know, he he's like, I have like 900 bucks, Dad. I was like, what the, <laughs> what are you guys doing? And, you know, whatever. And then at the end of the semester, they had like a, parents can, uh, uh, and teachers had like a big uh, raffle and the kids can, yeah, you know, barter or, you know, bet on certain It's a token stuff. economy. Yeah. And so the, you know, kids got, you know, like a, you know, I don't know, like a, 
Xbox gift card one, you know, or like whatever. Yeah, they buy stuff something. with it. They buy stuff with it. So I think that's really good. And I will say this in, uh, you know, we, the one of the things, and Dave, you brought this up. You asked me one time, like, what do you do when the kids don't want to do stuff and all that other things? I'm like, well, they, I, you got to meet me halfway, man. <laughs> I can't want it more than you. I can't lift the, I can't run for you. And it's like, there is a still a you know we we put a lot of pressure on parents and, and not parents the teachers and the coaches and stuff like that but the the kid's got to go too like he's got to show up he's got to give effort. I can't give all that effort and I can't spend uh, an hour of my day trying to get this kid to run when everyone else does do you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and I think like at some point like you're gonna like some kids are gonna fail but I can't bring down the entire group just trying to you know drag this kid along and uh, you know with what we do with I do it's all voluntary stuff and the kids get weeded out pretty quick um, so I, I don't really have that perspective like you do or like you do it's just I don't think I'm like the kids have to have some responsibility too and I'm not I always say I'm not asking you guys to split an atom here or cure cancer I just want you to show up and give effort and if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Then you don't have to show up. But I think the kids have to be a little responsible too. Like I think, mm-hmm. you know, thinking we need some, <clears throat> you know, asking your kid to get in a straight line. Like really? Like you think? <laughs> wait till you go to fucking work. You well, know? you get other. The nice thing is, and even talking to Matt and Jess, Jess took this beyond the classroom. She created interns in her class. Oh yeah, because there's always kids who want so to help. Did, did it turn like like the Stanford experiment? Did you ever see that? No. The psychological experiment, where half of the students were inmates and half of them were guards. Oh yeah, <laughs> they closed it down after like two days. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because the guards started beating the shit out of the fucking. <laughs> yeah, it's a, crazy, it's a crazy. Yeah, story. let me hear more about how this <laughs> works out. Yeah, and you, yeah. No, but uh, it explains you, a lot of things that happened in history too. So Matt, Matt's talking about how he has to, you know, he's got to make sure the weights and the the board and all this is done. Like, have a few of your have a few of your your student athletes do that, yeah. the responsible ones, because then you don't have to do that. That. So you know, now everything in school is like you know who's got the, you got Chrome. Every kid's got a Chromebook, but who doesn't have a charger? Who doesn't? So Jess has. She's got like four interns. Who gives out Chromebooks? Who gives out? So instead of her taking ten minutes before every class, just handing all that stuff, because there's always kids who want to rise to the occasion, and then yeah. other kids are like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's this. It, <laughs> You know, you just gotta find a way to feed into yeah. the into the I think where I struggle I struggle with it is I because I wanted to go and play sports in college. You get it. You didn't have to tell me, like, do this, okay. Do this, okay. You know, work hard. Like you, I didn't question anything, I didn't fight anything. I'm like, okay, I, I I need to show up to practice, I need to do this. So it's there's a reason And I, I understand that not everyone thinks that way. I don't I can't relate to someone that plays a sport, even if it's not their favorite sport, still, where they don't just want to be good at it and work their butt off. Like I don't. Everybody, I know everybody would squat a thousand pounds who powerlift. Well, I know that. Like fundamentally, I understand that. I can't wrap my head around it though. Yeah. Like you it doesn't make sense. You can. To me. You don't want to. It doesn't make sense. I feel like when See, I do that, I, I'll lower my standards. I agree with what Rhodes is saying because yeah. I don't think you need. You. you you don't have to have a goal to play in the NFL to to want to try hard and be good. I don't think you need that. Uh, no, like, I, like I'll, I'll give you an example. When I was, but I listen I, to the frustration level. That I, yeah. I, I, no. I have no horse in like. If, no, if I, you want half the kids to just well, they're not giving the effort, and then and w- to watch adults be frustrated when they're you know to just feed possible answers. Like I have no horse in the game. Like I don't care. No, None I, of your I kids always, have to wait. I always think uh, like. Oh, I don't even know where I was going with this. Um, even when I was play, like playing college football, I didn't want. I knew I was going to play in the NFL, but I still wanted to be awesome. Like I yeah. still wanted to do it. And it, even when I was in class, I didn't want to get a bad grade. So you did the stuff. So again, I think a lot of that has to like a lot of it, and I can see it even with some kids today. Like you can tell what their parents are telling them. And again, you know, I hate to harp on, you know, putting all the the impetus on the parents, but it's true. There's, it starts at home, and uh, no one wants to say that, but I think that magically, the kids who have, uh, you know, solid parents, whether they might, might only have one, but you know, have good morals and have integrity, like guess what they're going to be like for the most part. Oh, I agree. I mean, yeah, it's, I, so I, it's tough. Then and, you also share about kids who might not have it so good. 
who you've been able to help yeah. change. Yeah. And but they still. What I'm saying is they still want to care. It, we have kids that that get fed some certain right, things. Right, but what about example. that kid who has that? And again, I'm not. This is not. So, no. This is a question. That kid who doesn't have the parents, and you kind of understand why they don't. Care. Well, I know, but what am I supposed to do? Well, that's that's the thing. What are you supposed to do? Yeah. So I give them every opportunity, but if they don't want to do anything, like I can't force them there. Right. You can. So, you can. Like kind of, I kid you who, could trick them into it. I got a kid who has shown up to one lifting thing out of fifteen. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. You know, but you uh, can't spend all your time on those yeah. kids. Absolutely. So, I, I agree with that. But if you could get one of them once in a while, you know, we, we do, we get tons methods. of those kids. Yeah. We get tons, but they all want to give effort. That's all I'm asking. I always say like, I don't care if you bench press, I've said this, I don't care who bench presses a thousand and who, you know, if you give effort, you're going to be okay in here. And that's all I ask mm -hmm. of you guys is just, you know, <clears throat> follow some simple directions and give effort. And I don't think that's asking very much. I really don't. Maybe I'm just yeah. old. And no, crazy. I think I, I agree. <laughs> I see the point that you're making and that there's, it's almost like there's two conversations, right? There's, there's the first one that you have the parents who are active in the kid's life where my parents were active in my life. Now, educationally, they didn't push me that hard, but they also didn't think that I, you know, from what they're being told, we're not going to push him for something he can't really do. Yeah. Right. But they pushed me on, you don't fucking quit. You do your chores, you do this. And my standards and values were high, right? very high, which balanced that out. So now you're gonna have, you know, the kid down the block that doesn't have, you know, the parents to do that, or has a single parent that's working all the time, where that, that went, that, that's that case where it's like, well, fuck, what do we do? You know, right. but when you compare the two, there's, I don't know the answer to that one. Like, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think anybody knows. No. But I do know the answer to the other one, and that is parents should set values and standards for their kids, and I don't believe most are today at all. The, Not, prob the problem is Matt and I are both getting paid to work with the kids who have that from the parents at home and the kids who don't. And so it's incumbent upon us to get those kids who don't have it, because if do we, you see the difference? We, oh, of course, but because if we don't do it, who's going to? No, I get that. You, that, and, that yes. And Jim's in a different scenario because again, we're getting paid to work with all the kids. Yeah. Because my my heart's my my heart says don't waste your time on the kids that don't care. But like Jim uh, Vincent said, I'm getting paid to to I got to care about everybody. So I'm trying. I'm still trying to. I find can make it. the argument that you probably yeah. should care more about the ones that don't have it yeah. at home. Right. But you still have. Yeah. You know, you can't a, let them take a, all your time. That's no, the no, no, you That's can't. the that is the conundrum. Well, not if you got to win. I mean, not if part of the job is actually winning. You know, and being a strength, uh, being a strength coach for a team. Yes. That's got a different outcome. Yeah. Matt's also in a There's different, a lot Matt's of stuff about Matt's got a very unique position in that it's just not a. He's actually a te you're actually a. I'm technically a phys ed and health teacher. Right. Health, so it's yeah, not right. just a strength. Health teacher. <laughs> yeah. But what's cool? Where like, are they? My the AD understands. He's like sometimes we're just teaching these kids how to be young kids. It's not about winning games. It's about teaching them how to act. It's about teaching them responsibility. It's it's beyond. You're lucky the, to have the that. True That's scope. good idea. Yeah, he's fantastic. For, for your position. Again, yeah, he, it's a very unique position. Yeah, it's not yeah. a pure strength and, and conditioning I'm, coach. And I'm of that, like, well, I got to help this team. And that team's coach is, I call it, conveniently committed. They're committed that minute before practice starts, and they've – checked out before practice ends and that's the only time they really care about their sport right well their kids are going to reflect that yes and so i worry about those teams and he's like don't you you can't you can't care more than the coach does no um and it's like okay like i fundamentally i know that but it's hard for me to be like well, you care about give you the coach what the coach gives me kind of thing the kids deserve Exactly. The kids deserve. And you can't hold that against the kids. Right. Right. And like, so for me, like right now, I have four groups a day, three days a week. It's an easy job. But you go from a team that cares, meaning the coach cares. So magically the team uh, kind of reflects that. And then 
this team, eh, they don't really care that much. And then this coach does care. And it's like, oh, my God, like this, the, the, the So you have to focus gears. on what you do. You can't focus on, yeah. I know, but switching gears. With the kids. From a team that yeah. wants to, like, try to rip someone's head off to a team that's like, I showed up six minutes late. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> like, no, you suck. He's really good at that voice. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like, woo, like the, switching yeah. the gears uh, emotionally to like, okay, like I've, I gotta, I've got to gear back and approach them differently, totally differently. And, and sometimes with a three or four minute turnover, it's like, it's a lot. I'm still upset about this, or I'm still super happy about this. And this was such a good one. And then you see this and it's like, why does this not look like that? Well, because it's completely different. Your leadership at the top is right. different. The 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 expectation within the team is you know what I mean? Yeah. That that's I still struggle with that a little bit of I remember when I was at Moorhead, I had women's soccer for a semester or two, I can't remember. And I came off of three football groups in the off season. And it was into women's soccer. <laughs> it was like, oh God, I gotta pump the brakes. <laughs> oh, because I'm coming at them all wrong. Coach, you're screaming and sweating. To, like, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I, it, it's just. <laughs> Look like Chris Farley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> was the motivational speaker. What was Matt that? Foley, the motivational yeah. speaker. He, you're coming at him like Matt Foley. Yeah. <laughs> Coach. He's, he's been in his office drinking coffee for the last four hours. <laughs> I still can't get over this. You guys didn't get. Yeah. Were, do, did other people in your schools get whacked? No. So it wasn't a thing. So did you get was in it trouble? public school? Your... Fuck yeah, it was public school. No. I, I'm, Catholics we were, got did, that. We were also scared of authority. Yeah, but did you get in trouble in junior high at all? Oh. Did I? Yeah. I didn't get in trouble. I did. I was scared. I was scared of teachers and scared of adults. Fighting. Just stupid. Always just dumb kid stuff. Lots of always Give me one of the and... dumbest kid things. Because some of those stories are funnier than fuck. Oh, I, this is a great... I got in a fight in high school. And this is the thing I don't understand. In high school, we were smart enough not to fight in school. We fought outside of school. We never, nobody fought in school. It's kind of like the opposite of bouncing in a bar. <laughs> yeah, we'd go out. So, <laughs> again, a, again, a fight. And we're, in the, we're in the woods, and the whole school's out there in a circle, and, you know, we're hitting each other. I, I was, got it as good as I was given. I was on t finally got the guy on the ground because I wrestled, and, you know, I was rearing back my hand. I don't even know how hard I would have hit him. And I get tapped in the back, and I slap my arm around, swear, and I'm like, it was the coach of the, the varsity coach of the football team, and I was in junior high school. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> here you go. And just everybody scattered. Nobody got suspended. Nobody got in trouble. Just everybody ran. And I'm like, this this guy, he's gonna kill me in like two years. I'm, meanwhile, you know how many kids this guy sees? No, I'm on top. <laughs> like he didn't even remember my yeah. name by the time I got to high school. But you know, uh, he, but I, I a few times I get in fight in high school, and just I I gave a I gave a uh, <laughs> like the teacher the finger once in a while. I was with my girlfriend he's like get to class i'm like leave me alone he's like ah and i just gave him the finger and i'm like oh <laughs> and like i got hit at home i didn't get hit at school yeah like and i did yeah. and it, you know that's when the parent defended the school like yeah it was, it was it, parent and teacher or parent and coach yeah they were on the, the same kid. side now the parents are on the side of the kids and you know it's that's frustrating to that see. is that's that really is, frustrating yeah. to see it's, my kids this no teacher no, no teacher no, not. no teacher <laughs> no coach nobody's going to school to get kids and that's not we don't right. sign up to get kids in trouble right there might be one or two of those you know one a couple bad apples that, but that goes with everything but for the most part coaches and teachers are are in it for the right reason so mm -hmm. when the parents don't side with them it's really kind of like yeah. that that makes it well it's what i've i haven't had a lot of i have had zero negative parental uh encounters i've heard a few parents have called about me and so my answer is, yeah, come on in. I'll talk to him. And the assistant principal's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, I'll talk to him. I'll tell him what their kid is like. Can you share the story about the kid who, uh. Yeah, so I had a. <laughs> this, I had a is, this is good. So I have a zero hour class where I take attendance, but it doesn't get logged in the system because it's before school. And a lot of kids want that class because it doesn't fit in their daily schedule. So this kid skipped, I don't know, 12 or 13 classes in the first semester. And so I went through the proper channels and I kicked like 13 or 14 kids out of class <laughs> after first semester. I had permission from everybody, right? So he shows up to class second semester. I'm like, what are you doing here? I'm in class. No, you're not. You got kicked out. I got the same email you got because I was CC'd on it. I'm like, 
So I, what I said to him, I go, show me you want to be here. So the next day he doesn't show up. Well, if you want to be here, show up, right? The next day he doesn't show up. So on, uh, it, this was a Thursday, he, uh, I was sitting with a bunch of the teachers and coaches and he made a comment like, oh, Coach Rhodes kicked me out of class. I'm like, no, you kicked yourself out of class. And I gave you the opportunity to get back into class. I said, show me, and you haven't shown up. So obviously you don't want to be in class. And he's, you know, entitled little, you know. So I get a message from the front office. His mother called and she wants to talk to you because you kicked him out of class be, right now. He didn't tell her that he missed X number of classes. And so I caught him at lunch and I'm like, hey, you enjoy your lunch because we're going to have a chat when you're done. <laughs> and so I just, I, st I just sat and I watched him eat lunch. And as soon as he finished, I walked over to him. I go, so you told mommy that I kicked you out of class, huh? And I was laying it on. He's just kind of sitting there. And I'm like, we can handle this two ways. I can call mommy. And you don't want that to happen. And mommy doesn't want that to happen <laughs> because I'll tell her the truth and I won't be nice about it. Or you cannot be a coward and you can tell her that you got kicked out of class because you're an idiot and this can all disappear. All you have to do is show up to class and I'll let you back in. <sighs> so I said, I got my phone out. I brought up the thing and I'm like, you call mommy, I'll call mommy or you talk to mommy. And I started my stopwatch on the phone. I go, you got 15 seconds to make a decision. <laughs> Coach, I'll handle it. Are you sure? <laughs> it disappeared. And so I give the kid, and I talked to him like maybe six weeks later. Hey, you did what I wanted you to do. You handled the, your responsibility. You did what I wanted you to do. I told you to show up. You showed up. The kid didn't miss a class second semester. Like he did exactly what he was supposed to do and exactly what I was hoping he would do. It and he handled one, one it. Astral. You know, like <laughs> he, 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 he learned a lesson. Like it was legit. Like the kid learned a lesson. And uh, I remember he came to me. He missed one class because he was going on a college visit. I'm like, dude, that's okay. Get the pirate eye. Like you're going on a college visit. Like <laughs> go on a college visit. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> I got the pirate eye. <laughs> It just pushed it further into my face. Here you go, right? No, I don't trust any of you. It actually, I'm not going to put it. Actually, all right. So the kid had the pirate eye. <laughs> yeah. I got, yeah, we're yeah, just, yeah. I'm sorry. We're all doing some smelling salts. Yeah. So just <laughs> trust me. I'm as bored by you guys talking as you are by me. No, it's not. I saw Jim over there playing. Like we've been to. So anyhow, how did it like, end up? Great. Ended up great. I didn't hear from his mother again. I oh. had no reason to call. Yeah. The, that one got to me. my knowledge, he did what he needed to do, and it just it disappeared. Yeah. Which is what I wanted to happen. I just I wanted a kid. If he wanted it, show me that you want it. Don't tell me you want it. Show me you want it. Show so what's some, so what's something stupid you didn't junior high to get in trouble for? <laughs> I really didn't get in trouble. I was I I was scared of authority and I was scared of adults. And like I had a, I had a kid the other day, a freshman call me bro. <laughs> he goes, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, bro. Some little 14 year old punk. And I wasn't mad about. <laughs> I was mad now. Yeah. Not why I get 14 year old pissed you off. I wasn't mad about the f bomb. I was mad, bro. You think I'm your bro? Like that never would have happened right over there. when we were kids. Now home life yeah. whatever whatever it is but it's like it's like that that stuff dry that really bothered me yeah like that to, bro i'm not your bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do you do shit himself over there no <laughs> trying to just do it oh what pins it with the rapper uh. he did it no <laughs> me <laughs> i'm eating it <laughs> <laughs> Told you to eat over the fucking. Um, <laughs> I really didn't do anything, and I never, I didn't get in trouble. I was scared. Spice I understood story. authority, and I didn't like it. I would <laughs> talk trash behind teachers' backs and all that. You know, the oh real my God, it's like the real dangerous shit, like talking yeah. trash. And I didn't, the teachers I didn't, back. I didn't get in trouble. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was scared to death of my teachers, mm -hmm. and I, I was, I didn't necessarily have <laughs> cause to be scared of my parents, but I was. So I stayed in line. Now yeah. I caused more trouble for my parents than I did for teachers and stuff. Yeah. 
Um, Dude, so my, just, my parents got a cakewalk with me. I tell them all the yeah. time, "You got so fucking lucky." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they were teachers, uh, right? They were teachers, but my yeah. like my I, mom I, was a teacher. I too. was. I wanted to play college football. I wanted yeah, to be yeah. the best. I wanted to. All I wanted to do was train and fucking do what I needed to do. I was yeah. home every night, way before yeah. curfew. I'm like, "You guys got it so fucking easy. You should be paying me." Yeah. I yeah. made your lives so easy. Like well, their you, big you, thing you, was, you, I think you might be overtraining. Well, you, you kind of <laughs> were living for. Yeah, you're kind of on scholarship. You were living for free, and you had food. Yeah, that's true. But I was I was more than holding up my end of the bargain yeah. between a child like, and, I didn't, and a family. I didn't party or anything like that in high school. I saved that for college. Yeah, Juliet's but. having a much harder time parenting you now that you're mm-hmm. grown up. <laughs> well, there's a lot of shit. There. My 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 best one that I like to throw out there, the funniest one. Out, there's a lot of other stupid ones. Is <clears throat> there's this one dude I did not like because he used to beat the shit out of me when I was young all the time. So it became this thing of how am I going to get everybody back, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so. I, I threw dog shit in his locker. Nice. Right? So here, here's the problem. Nice. This one had to be thought out because we didn't have like plastic bags and shit. So I, you know how the yeah, lunch bags, yeah. the, the brown lunch bags, you had to find the real thin one mm-hmm. so it would stink through it. But then I wasn't able to put it in my bag to take it to school without anybody knowing I'm carrying <laughs> fucking dog shit, it. right? So and I'm just like three days in planning, you know, so I end up putting it in, a, in that bag and then in Tupperware. Oh. Right, and then as soon as the guy would, you know, leave the locker, and you know, you you shut the locker behind you. So as soon as you shut the locker, I whipped it in the locker and fucking shut. <laughs> Whole school smelled like <laughs> shit within 15 fucking minutes. No, I don't. And nobody ever. I never got in trouble. Nobody ever found out. But they're like, sir, they don't know where it's coming from. The whole fucking. It was, yeah, yeah, that was. I uh, knew a guy who took a dump in a yeah. bag and then put it in the. Uh, the uh, mobile uh, library book return thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, we, <laughs> one of the funniest things yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> we, we released a thousand crickets into the library. And the oh. mobile, that like where you put the books back? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. An angel you were. Oh An angel. God. That wasn't me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I knew it. Like, we, it was awesome. Huh? He said he saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. saw it. What about the upper deckers? <laughs> Dude, that's classic. <laughs> so I have my mouth full. If you take a shit in the in the tank of a toilet, and every time you flush, it's just shit water that comes yeah. down. That's one of the most amazing things, and it's hard to. You're not going to naturally look in the tank. No, you're not going to figure that out. You could also piss in there too. That's another thing, but that's that's weak shit. Yeah. So every time somebody weak flushes, tea. you know. Yeah. All right, what's the verdict on the muscle sandwich? Good as you remember? So you ever hear my muscle sandwich story? I went into, uh, I don't know, one of the, not GNC, but one of those things like that. This was probably like three or four or five years ago. And I asked him, like, do you guys have muscle sandwiches here? <clears throat> and, uh, boy, the attitude I got. Uh, <laughs> what? By a bunch of but these fucking... Uh, Probably 38% body fat women. Uh, like, they don't, theirs have a lot of sugar, and they were talking among themselves. <laughs> you know, like, all fucking, you're like, he doesn't know. Like, uh. And I was like, do you have fucking muscle sandwiches? Yeah. I don't give a shit it's what the yes sugar is. Yes or no question. And I, you know, I was not, you know, I was more muscular than I was like, you know, than I am now, but it's still like, like, do you want to talk about anything but training wise? I'll fucking <laughs> mm-hmm. wipe the ground with you motherfuckers. But, uh, oh my God, the attitude I got. Like, I just asked for a bag of heroin like yeah. <laughs> you guys selling coke out of here how does this work <laughs> i gotta tell you i enjoyed the smell oh it's good a fun nostalgia with the smelling salts the ammonia i like it's something you forget when you're not competing like you, you, you well, i'll get i'll get with one of the dark side ones there after yeah. we take a, bar, a bathroom break those are nothing i but no but yeah for me i haven't i haven't gone once near one since i've competed so it's like oh yeah, that's that's kind of fun. I need one of those. I need one of those for the house. It's a little waker upper. Yeah, that'll go well for you down in the basement. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it under. What, yes. What could, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, that's the one thing you too miss. Like, and we we talk about like you know, part of the part of the the competing and the training and the in w- failing. Like pushing yourself to that point to where, you know, you, you are going to possibly fail. And, you know, we're kind of now that we're older, we're more in our comfort zone because the consequences are so high. Yeah. <laughs> but like it, getting close to that failure, you know, that danger zone is kind of like y- you miss it. And you mean like missing 13 times and getting it on the 14th? That's it. So, 605. Six, 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 six
After two, I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Everybody was quiet. Finally on the seventh. Rhodes was a great Scientifically, coach. he shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Enabler. Ro no, no. <laughs> Rhodes was really good at knowing when to speak and when not to. And I know it's hard to hear, tell here. But, yeah, you know, he... Uh, you, you're an excellent coach, and I, I, I told him I actually handled a friend at a meet who had a my buddy Rob who had a really really good meet, and uh, um, you know he's struggled at a few meets, and I'm not saying I was the reason. He's had great he had a great training cycle, and uh, you know he's got good coaching, but being properly handled by someone who knows what they're doing and knows how to talk to you, knows how to when you're getting up to lift that that's a lost art handlers mm. by having a team because having a handler like makes a big difference when you when there's one mono lift and there's seven plates mm -hmm. on it and they're warming up too early and you know you got a guy who needs one plate and most people are going to stand around and they're they're not going to open their mouths there and i'm like what well, i'm like let's I, a couple guys let's strip it down to one wait what no 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 we're going down to one plate right now because yeah you're not if you're getting ready to lift you don't need to be in that headspace where you're the one worrying about stripping that bar mm -hmm. down i don't mind being the prick i, I never had you know and that's the great handler does that and they know the timing of everything and they know matt knew when to speak to me he knew when not to speak to me about something that in his no coach or helper or assistant or friend should have let me be like after the third miss like all right dude come on let's let's go let's pack this in matt's like you know what you're on your journey. You're going to, and no earthly reason I should have well, gotten it. I, at this point, I knew him well enough to know the look. <laughs> and he wouldn't hurt anything anyways. So it's like, all right, let's let him, you know. At some point, I would yeah. have just had to be finished. Yeah, but like you could, you <laughs> could tell. I'm either going to get it or at some point, I'm just going to finally give up. You, you could tell it was one of those days where he missed it and he was, he was mad. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I'll get it this time. And then if the second attempt was even worse. And then after the third, I'm like, uh, he's doing this, like, whatever. Like, we're going to be benching for a long time tonight, mm -hmm. I guess. You know, he would have gone 25 sets, I, I think, until he got it. And it just, I, just now's my time to shut up. Well, he'll, the big he'll, thing. He'll learn his lesson or not learn his lesson. Right, it's either going to, yeah. You'll figure it out. Like, but with us, like, the big thing is. And he'll I, burn himself out. <laughs> I, see, I, I see this a lot with people now. We never missed. Ever. And the amount, of, the amount of misses I see in training, yeah. especially in gear, like, and they, it's, well, I almost had this. I, almost. You know what that yeah. takes out of you, missing? Yeah. Oh. And then well, I, I tell the missing kids. Missing takes it psychologically uh, and physically. I'd yeah. rather you leave one in the tank. Yeah. Although, These, you know, finding, if you can find that balance, I think that's what makes the difference between mm -hmm. a good lifter and a, and a great yeah. lifter you know when you when you can get right to that edge and you can you can meet it and mm -hmm. occasionally you, you can't know, do it all the time no. but every now and then you, but failure you, is yeah. not good yeah. but I, like i tell it i i uh always harp about not missing reps and then so i had a kid at moorhead we were doing a 225 i'm like once we do our main work drop down you know you can either do 185 205 or 225 whatever it was and he did 225 he did 14 reps and he missed his 15th. Well, his PR was 12. And I'm like, so you set a PR, and what are you thinking about? I fucking missed the last rep. That's why you don't fail. Because you set a PR. You should be happy about that. And you're not happy about the, the progress you made. You're rightfully mad about missing. You should be embarrassed, and you should hate yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because we did. When we well, there, those, there's some right. nuance there, though, yeah. too, because if you're working with an athlete, their goal isn't a max bench. Right. right. So what, they need to avoid that yeah. a little bit more. Right. Uh, to Vincent's point, you know, to train to the edge, you need to fall off the edge to you know where the yes. edge exists. Yes. An athlete has no fucking business going, going to close that to edge. Because right. their sport's going to put them. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, their sport, they need yeah. to know where the fuck that yeah. is. Yeah. But their sport's going to take, their sport, it shouldn't take them there, but it's going to take them there. Training should enhance the ability yeah. to push that. What edge do you mean out it shouldn't further. take them there? Well, if they're not in good shape, they're going to find that edge, and that's not a good thing. They're going to break down. They're not going to be able to execute their technique. Well, how are you define how are you and, defining edge? Because if we're talking sport, how are you defining edge? Well, like your ability to do what you're supposed to do with the proper technique, and then the other thing I would say would be there's a point where you're going to get hurt 
like seemingly for no reason. But if that's, on the, fatigue, if that's on the field, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Technically on the field, they should be able to do what they're supposed to do while they're hurt, right. while they're fatigued. And right. to know where that it, limit is, they're going to, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess there's specificity yeah. to this yeah. edge thing. Well, right? I'm yeah. also think, thinking about but, with, but, oh, so good, yeah, well, but training shouldn't, sh training shouldn't tax them. It shouldn't take away from what they have to do on their field because we're not lifting to have a big squat or bench or whatever it is you test or you know do. You're lifting to enhance your ability, your general abilities on the field. So lifting should challenge you. It, it should hurt you every now and then. Hurt like you should suffer a little bit with it. But what you're doing in the weight room, we're not lifting to lift. We're lifting to run faster, it's your, jump higher, all is that Is it your stuff. GPP, your sports it's your GPP? GPP, yeah. Lifting is general preparation. Your practice is sports-specific. So whenever people talk about sports-specific training, it's like, yeah, it's practice. Because you're never going to squat on a football field or bench. Those are general patterns that your body will do in sport. So you're working a general pattern and building strength in a general pattern uh, muscle coordination, all that stuff, so that you can take that, what your body's learned, and translate it to the skill of your sport. Mm -hmm. Let's take a piss so, break real quick, Owen. <clears throat> all right. Bunch of dudes. As I want to call out the limited edition apparel, the link is in the description. As I've spoken about before, the limited edition apparel is apparel that I basically come up with. So some of the designs suck, some of them not so much. It's a weird thing. The ones that I think are gonna do really well usually don't. The ones that I think aren't gonna do really well, do really well. Either way, they're all limited runs, so it changes you know, every single month. But all limited edition items are tri-blend material with, you know, the cut that everybody wants now that's a little bit tighter on their arms so they can show off how big their fucking arms are. The limited edition items directly support the podcast. So head over, pick up your shirt today. Could be a hoodie, could be shorts. We got these ball hugger shorts right now, which I would never wear, but I was told they were super popular, but you know what? They were wrong because they're still sitting there and I probably should discount them right now. Anyhow, if you want to see the discount on the ball hugger shorts, head over, over, over to the limited edition apparel, link in the description box. The Swiss Symposium 2023. Yes, we are bringing this back to Columbus again. The date is October 20 and 21. Columbus, Ohio, Hilton, it's the same location it was last year. If you head over to the website, there's a big banner that links directly to Swiss. There's also a link in the description box so you can see who the presenters are as we are booking them for the symposium. The symposium has been going on for 20 years. It's, in my opinion, probably a little biased, but in my opinion, one of the best symposiums when it comes to strength and conditioning, uh, sport medicine, therapy, physical therapy. Right now, the admission is 38% off or 48% off. It's, I'm don't know. I'm not looking. I'm just kind of looking at the camera right now, but it's the early, early, early bird rate. That rate is until July 1st. So now is the best time for you to sign up. When you go to register, there's three different ways that you can res register for the symposium. There's the general admission, which gets you into all the different lectures that you want to go to. The caveat is there's three or four lectures going on at the same time. So the second option allows you to purchase the videos of all the lectures for you to be able to watch at a later time. So that allows you and gives you access to everybody that's presenting if there's two people presenting at the same time that you would really like to see. The format that those are in is it's a streaming service. So it's, it's, if you've ever purchased a training course from anybody before, it's very similar to that. So you log in and then there's all the presentations that are there. You just click, you watch, you stream. It's how it works. The third option is the VIP option. And included in that is the Sunday after the symposium. A limited number of people will be coming out to our gym, the S5 compound at Elite FTS with a handful, maybe a little bit more of the presenters that are there just to train, to hang out, 
have some barbecue, have a good time. And that again is limited on the attendance. It's already 50% sold out or 50% of the spots left, depending on how you want to look at it. Go to the link in the description. We'll have more information about the Swiss throughout the podcast. As we move forward, we have a lot of the presenters booked for the podcast. So we'll be talking more about it. We'll see you there. All right, guys, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Merrick Health. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that Merrick was the first company to step up and help support the Table Talk podcast. You guys are selecting Merrick for your telehealth platform needs, but it also tells me that they're providing the service that you're all looking for. They have a couple different ways that they go about doing this. The first is through a self-selected experience. So you go to the link in the description box. So there's a table talk panel, which is the full panel. That would be the panel that I personally get twice a year, but probably is more suggested to get that full panel once a year. That's checking everything. Optimal performance, longevity, health, hormones, you name it, it's all there. The other panel is a checkup panel. You don't need to have the full panel every single time you have blood. I get my blood work done on a quarterly basis. So once a year, there's a full panel. Sometimes there's even more than that. And then there's the checkup panel, which is going to be every three or four months. With a guided optimization, you're connected with a patient care coordinator. And the patient care coordinator will meet with you to determine what your needs are, what you're looking for. Anything to be able to help optimize your health or mitigate without judgment like you would have if you go to see your physician now. So the discount code again is Table Talk. The link is in the description box, Merrick Health for all your hormone optimization and performance needs. Today's episode is brought to you by EliteFTS.com. Founded in 1998 with the primary aim to live, learn, and pass on. Please help Elite FTS support this mission by smashing the like button, leaving a comment, sharing with a friend, and thinking of us for your training needs. If you can put it in a gym bag or load weights on it, Elite FTS has it. What's going on? I'm Dave Tate, and we are broadcasting from the middle of the Elite FTS weight room, where the underground still thrives and you're part of the crew. It's time to sit down, keep it real, and cut the bullshit. Welcome to Table Talk. But I'm about to get in trouble. Yeah. And he's, I didn't play for this guy anymore. Uh, oh, it was unbelievable. But when, All right. Let's just stay on this topic. So we'll, 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 I'm going to skip questions. We're going to go with who's the hardest coaches that you've ever had. So just recap what you said. Yeah. Real quick. We, before this started, what I was talking about uh, Coach Dino Babers. I, he's at the head coach at Syracuse. And I always say he was the best and toughest coach I've ever had in my life. And uh, – Originally, when I was at Arizona, he wasn't the running backs coach, and I think my second or the second year there, he was. And I remember thinking, "Oh shit, like it's gonna be bad," and it was Sorry, bad. It was very know, difficult. But he, uh, he's the reason why I played. You know, essentially, he made me better. He, I had to push myself a little bit. And I was telling the story as I used to always, not always, but occasionally, still tell stories about uh, Coach Babers and how hard he was. And uh, he was at Baylor at the time, and I think the Baylor strength coaches saw me write this. They would visit Elite FTS, and they told Babers about it. And then one day we get a phone call to Elite. Jim, there's a phone call on line one. I pick up the phone. He goes, Jimmy Wendler. And I tell, like, my asshole fucking, I was like, oh, my God, here it comes. He's going to, I'm going to do up downs for an hour. <laughs> and I, I, it was like an immediate reaction, like, holy shit, I'm in trouble. What do I need to do to make this right? <laughs> 15 years <laughs> removed, know? right? Yeah, and it's, yeah, this was, uh, let's say, 2010 or so, you know, maybe yeah. eight, whatever he was coaching there. And so I don't know, that's, yeah, 10 years. Do you remember what he called for? He just wanted to say hi. He's like, he's like I, I heard you talking shit about me. And I was like, man, it was, it was good shit. <laughs> swear it wasn't me. It's a lie. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And uh, he just wanted to, you know, to say hi and whatever and just check up and see how I was doing. So That's dope. And uh, But it was a crazy uh, – and when Matt went back for uh, – Reunion. The reunion yeah. for 1998 football team, he went back there and uh, all the team met at a dinner – 
and uh, everyone was co-mingling, you know, mingling, and the head coach, Dick Tomey's like, all right, boys, get in your seats. He said, everyone just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, but it was funny because <laughs> some, some of the guys, that like the wives were still yapping away, and they're like, they're like <laughs> stop. <laughs> but it was funny. It was we're like, going to be running laps. His coach Tomey never really yelled. No. Um, and he, you know, he was 80 years old at the time, and he, he, he didn't even really raise his voice. And it was a bunch of dudes that hadn't seen each other in 20 years, had a few cocktails, doing, and it was just like, all right, man. Oh, God. Shh, stop talking. Shh, shh. And it was unreal. It was like, boom. It was like a... Like Who a, brought like, this whore? Yeah. <laughs> it was like a flashback to, like, and to me, that was an awesome... I was too arrogant and narcissistic. I always thought Coach Tommy was a great coach because my first day as a walk-on, I walked on the field... And he said, Matt Rhodes, Westfield, Massachusetts, good to have you on the team. I'm like, why would he know who I am? Right. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm no, he's not giving me any money. I'm a tackling dummy. Him and Homer Smith both knew my name. And I. And so did the defensive coach. Yeah. Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> yeah. That's what he called him. Dusty and then, then Ellerson, uh, yeah, Akina, Dwayne Akina yeah. would call me Dusty. And then uh, Coach Ellerson, when I was on scout team, he would, I, I, he knew my name. I think, but whatever number I was that week, because oh, we'd wear the no, we'd wear the number of the guy we were representing on the other team. Eighty-five. What are you doing? I'd be like, who's he yelling at? That's me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> who's the stupid ass? Yeah. I thought I was fifty. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he would never he would never swear either. God bless America. You knew that was bad. Uh. <laughs> And he said to me one day, are you trying to get us all fired? <laughs> oh, God, what did I do? You know, we didn't get, I didn't get upset about it. I'm like, ah, I suck. Yeah. I got yelled at for a reason because I suck. I screwed up. I whatever. Um, but I had a, a, you said the question was great coaches. Uh, my lacrosse coach in high school was, um, he came up to me about halfway through my junior year. And he was a three-time All-American at UMass. He was a super stud. Uh, lacrosse player and he came up to me about halfway through the year and he said have you thought about playing lacrosse in college I'm like yeah I got a couple calls from division three schools he's like what do you think about going to visit UMass and UMass is a top 15 program at the time and I'm I had no idea I could play at that level and uh, that was kind of the end of it that year but after that every day he would come to find me Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we practiced. We played Wednesdays and Saturdays. He would come to find me, and I'm trying to hit on girls, and I'm trying not to go to practice early. He'd be like, come on, we're going out. And he would, for 30 to 45 minutes, four times a week before practice, he would absolutely humiliate me on the field. <laughs> <laughs> but he would teach me. It's like, here's why I beat you. You tried this. That's not going to happen. You know, and he would... He would sort of coach me a little bit but for 30 to 45 minutes it was one-on-one -on -one versus one of the best players to ever play the game and I hated him I hated every minute of it I dreaded it and then but it helped me so much because he didn't ask me he told me this is what we're gonna do because whatever he saw something thought I could do something never asked nothing just Let's go. Get your stuff. Oh, oh. So then I get to practice against kids that are my age. And I would take out my frustration on them a little bit. Because <laughs> I was just, I'd get beat every time. The guy was unbelievable, you know. It'd be like, you know, you know, playing against Barry Sanders or something. It's like, you're going to lose every time. That's what it was like. And it's like, hmm. And it helped me so much. And um, he never talked. It was... <clears throat> He didn't really ever tell me anything. It was more just, this is what we're going to do. This is how he was going to help me. And it helped. I mean, it helped tremendously. I had a situation like that when I was <clears throat> in a <clears throat> freshman. I was practicing with uh, Finley College wrestlers, and there's you know a higher-ranked wrestler there who was helping me, coaching me. I, I couldn't score a fucking point on this. It, it pissed <laughs> me off like a motherfucker, man. Every And every time I go back, like, I'm... I'm getting a fucking point every fucking for like a year, man. But it helped me more than anything. The 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 humility, the the the, the failing, essentially, the the figuring out how to work through it, 
the competitiveness, whatever comes from that. Well, there's drive too, because I wanted yeah. to be like that. Yeah. Yes. Like, how can I fuck with people like that? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and he, there was no, I mean, like, fuck, you couldn't even give me like a sympathy fucking point. Yeah. It was just wrecked. It, but what you learned from that was <laughs> so much more valuable in the long run. Could you do that today? Could I? Could anybody do that today? Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's kids I think out so. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. I think so. Not but, kids, but, but coaches. Yeah. 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 I think there's some coaches that genuinely care. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're the, uh, Darren Llewellyn, I think is the guy that got you into lifting. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't spoon feed you anything. <laughs> He wouldn't from, talk to me for a year. From what I, re- you know, but, but good what judge he did, of character. But yeah. what he did, if if I remember correctly, he watched you. Yeah, and he sh- saw that you were consistent. He saw that you cared, and then he, I, he after, would give you a carrot every now. Yeah, and then. Every, every once in a while. Uh, I remember after like a two or three years, I asked him like, "Why didn't you ever talk to me?" You know, because so because into- I was lifting in the high school weight room with the high school kids. It's right. incredibly intimidating for yeah. me. And, they fucking hit. my sister was two years ahead of me and they're all told her like we're gonna beat the shit out of your brother he's such a fucking asshole he thinks you know he's i'm like i just didn't want to talk to anyone i didn't want to like step on anyone's toes so that was taken as uh arrogance or whatever you want to say and uh but anyway uh darren would you know he threw me a carrot every six months or something and i asked him eventually like why didn't you ever talk to me and he just said i've seen so many kids i've helped out over the years <clears throat> uh just quit and I want to make sure you're serious. And uh, he goes, because it doesn't matter what I would tell, you know, you know right. how it is. And so uh, I always laugh about that because when I wrote a, uh article about uh, Darren, there was a lot of criticism. Like, can you imagine not talking to a kid? And it's like, man, that's just how sometimes it's okay. Like, right. Like, sorry that you would want to be, you know. Uh, coddled. Or coddled. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But. Or- Right. Uh, you know, that was the other th- good thing about Darren was he ne- like we would constantly write fucking programs every twice a day. Like, dude, I got this the best program ever written. You might want to check it out. Just write it down so you don't forget it. Check out this. Place. Yeah, you're not gonna. Dude, this is the answer to everything. And he never judged it. Never said anything. He's like, all right, give it a shot. You know. And uh, then he like I'd fucking be horrible. He's like, well, <laughs> kind of saw that one coming. Yeah. There's an uh, art to but, coaching and mm-hmm. teaching and to working with people and what. Is, works for one doesn't work for everyone you know yeah. and that's that's when you see when people are really good at their craft when they're able to you know do things like that and some people are just good with certain yeah. groups and they have their method and you know but it, it's not a science you know there really is an art to to work in well, to, the, to get to the hardest thing about coaching is not the X's and O's and the sets and reps at all, at least not from what I do. Now, there's a difference between training people like what I did today with Elijah. That's mm-hmm. training someone. Yeah. Right. Coaching someone is or is just similar to teaching a large classroom. It's there's a lot of to get everyone to listen. That's hard work, man. And doesn't always. It, and what's hard. The hardest thing for me is. Like, I always feel like we're operating about 40 to 50% of where we should be. And it's hard because that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know that sounds really stupid. And I'm like, and I'm not giving up because I'm constantly trying to get things. Uh, and we're a lot farther along than when I first started. But like, when I see how I get to work with a, you know, a single kid and you're like, holy shit, all the stuff that we get done that, you know, we can really focus on the actual execution of the movement, whatever. And, uh, kid did what, like eight exercises in 32 minutes. Yeah. Then? We, and he yeah. pushed hard. Yeah. Like, uh, anyway, the point yeah. being is I think, and I'm Dave had the, probably the best thing I ever heard with regards to training and coaching is, uh, why doesn't anyone ever teach? We were, I remember where we were. He's like, why doesn't anyone ever teach about communication? He's like, it doesn't matter how smart you are if you can't communicate. That oh, yeah. should be as important mm-hmm. as anything else. And I talked to Mason, and mm-hmm. I said, listen, you're going to have to learn how to write. Because everything you're going to do, you're going to have to write. It might be an email, what, a text or something. Make it look good. Uh, you know, obviously be well-read. And I'm like, learn how to speak. Yeah. Learn how to speak confidently. It doesn't mean you have to be Winston Churchill or anything like that or uh, whatever. But I think that's super important. It doesn't matter what job you have. And even I was talking to Mason. I talked to Mason a lot. And I said, even with the advent of the Internet and stuff like that, you still have to be personable. Mm-hmm. I mean, <clears throat> like all the social media stuff, you just can't. I mean, I guess you can hide it a little bit. You know, some people will just get by and looks alone. But at the end of the day, they're not going to survive very long. You still have to have a personality. You have to be someone that wants someone wants to follow. Just, nothing's changed. It's just how how it's presented. And it gives more people 
an uh, opportunity to, to shine, so to speak. Right. Well, you have to know how to communicate to people from different backgrounds. And you actually indirectly helped me to be able to realize and do that because we would go on these seminars. This, You know this fucking guy. He can sit next to anybody on a plane, right? <laughs> and then get off the plane and he knows their whole fucking life story. And he's like telling this to me as we're going, like, yeah, yeah, she's got these five grandkids and there's this one that's doing this. And all I'm thinking is like, how the fuck you know that? Like yeah. the person I sat next to, I didn't say a word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just head down, just through there. And but you learn, man, over a period of time, you got to be able to communicate with people of all different backgrounds and levels. And and kids are another beast, man, because their brain's not right. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. fuck, my kids are like nineteen and twenty one. Their brains still don't work right. Yeah, you could They're have like, the greatest message in the world, but if you can't communicate yeah, it, it's yeah. useless. Yeah. I think that. That's like an overstatement to so many people because they don't get there's a lot of nuance in there and they all think that they do it effectively. Yeah, no, it's like like I've said, I don't know if I've said it on here before. It's like I've never asked a strength coach, hey, have you written a bad program? No. This, this program's going to work. <laughs> it's like they, very rarely we sit there and be like, wow, that, that kind of sucked. Oops. I, you know what? Yeah. Point being, if you're a coach, you probably think you're a good communicator. Because you're a coach, it's like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but you're you you have a certain degree of leverage that's a hack, but that yes. doesn't. It's not true. Right, right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it's well, I'm a coach and I work with with athletes, so you know, communication is important. Yeah. Well, how much time do you put into studying it? Like, I, I'll go every now and then. I need to do it more, but like, just read articles about um, public speaking, mm -hmm. how to stand, pauses for a fact and you know all the, the little the little tips of how to deliver the message you want to deliver and then it's that's kind of the easy part the hard part is like when i write the workouts on the board i know exactly what it is i know what it should look like da, 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 da. but then trying to explain that on a level to someone and i'm going to put it this way to someone that doesn't care and i don't mean that in a bad way but they don't care as much as I do and they don't know as much as I do about it. How can I, how can I get it across to them to get the result I'm looking for so that they can understand it and then execute it? Well, I so, like that you're saying that you should study it, you know, you should look into it, but then you need to apply it too. Cause I, the past year with this podcast, I've been studying the shit out of all this and certain things like that I found like you really don't want to ask the question why because it kind of puts people on a defensive right so don't use that you know reframe yeah. it like how yeah. you know how did that come about and because think about it, anytime I ask somebody ask you why you're like okay wait a minute am I being quizzed here you know is, am I being judged is you know, simple little things like that now when I would read that I'd be like oh my god this is fucking awesome take a note write it down do the next podcast and I'm like five times like <laughs> so why exactly did you like, motherfucker yeah. you know yeah. putting it into practice is it's very, tough, very hard man. Yeah, it, it's take, very, very it takes hard. reps just like anything yeah. else and I, I I don't know. This is just my opinion. I think sometimes when you get into what we're doing with the coaching is the X's and O's are, are kind of more fun. Oh, fuck yeah. It's you more know? fun, but you know it. Yeah. Right? And it's more fun, but in it's, in it's that's hard work. That's just more fun. That's like, for me, that's like history class. I loved history. Did not like math. So the, the, the art of learning how to communicate better to me is like math class. Right. I don't like it's not as enjoyable for me to, to learn about, but it's probably what I need to learn about. It's probably the more, most. It's more important. Yeah. You know so, the X's and O's. Yeah. And better. I was smart enough in high school, and I'm sure somebody told me I didn't like math and science. So when I started my homework, I did math and science first when I wasn't tired and my brain was still fresh. And I saved the stuff I was good at social studies, history, English for the end of my homework because I was good at that stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, with the communication, that's probably what I need to spend more time. I don't I, – I'm at the high school level. Do I need to know about the stretch reflex yeah. and, you know, I just had all a, these – like, these kids don't need that. They're 14, 18 years old. They don't need anything complicated. They need very basic, simple stuff. I need to communicate it better. I just had a uh, very – like, one of those aha moments. Like, it's got to be really hard for you guys to coach kids, you know, in the fact that – because we're probably sitting at a table of four people. There's probably not many more people who love lifting more than we do. Like, we just really, you know, mm -hmm. seriously. I mean, one of our 
probably pe- favorite things to do is train. Yeah. Well, Still yeah. At, at the ability level that we can do it, and we're and sometimes you're working with kids who just don't get it all, and you're like, I, this is amazing. Like this is this is the greatest to have this ability to do this. Like you don't you don't see this and. We really are in the minority. <laughs> yeah, we really, really are in the it's, minority. I mean, I know you're working with athletes and they need it and they want it, but just, just from a Gen Pop standpoint, like people don't love to tra- like. Well, if I, I don't train, I'm pretty miserable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I, I like, it's it's a lot of our kids look at it like it's punishment. Right, and I'm like, like, oh, I have to do this. No, you don't. Well, my coach said I had to sign up for class. So they have to. Well, you don't, but you don't have to. You don't have to. No the one. Kids have to is a little different when what someone's you, telling them. Yeah, but even then, they don't have to because the coaches can't force them to take a class. Right. But if they don't do it, maybe they don't play or maybe they don't, you know. They're well, not- our coaches won't sit anybody that doesn't. Yeah. If they're good, they're going to play kind of thing. So there is really no consequence to yeah. not. But anyways. Kids yeah. aren't always that smart and intuitive. No, to know no, that. they're not. They're not. So Because I don't want to. I flat out. I don't want to deal with the kids that don't right. want to be in there. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care if they don't, if they don't want to be in there, don't, I don't care what you do. If you're in there, you need to follow directions and all that stuff. But, um, I had that chat with a couple kids. Well, Dave, are you training? <laughs> You've been training? No, I quit. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I know what your training's like. Cause I was, uh, I've been training lately. Just, I, I know I'm kind of swinging topics and yeah. the fact that it's just got to talk about himself now. No, <laughs> no, I'm ta- I want to give Dave credit. <laughs> No, I still train like a fucking meathead. I still, yeah. You've helped me in that I was going light first because I'm just so old and beat up. Like, just doing a lot of lightweight. And you, you know, talked about how, you know, you with your joint issues and your hip, like you only have so many lifts. And I've really increased weight, lowered volume, Mm -hmm. and decreased the amount of exercises. And I'm having... And I feel better than I have felt in like the last decade. And I look at Jim's training, which is completely different, which he's doing a ton of volume with what he does. And that's working for him. And it's just, it's just crazy how the, the differences, but that ring has rang true with me. I like, I was just grinding away so much and just remembered what you had said. Like, there's only so many lifts I have in me. And with our with the heavier stuff. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to find a balance with, you know, some type of conditioning circuit type of work. That's right. a tough one for me. You know, it's, I, I always, I try, which means I fucking fail. But all the, all, all the, all the other stuff I got locked in from right. the strength point. But, you know, trying to get cardio. I, I get my steps in. I'll just put it that way. And um, the rest of the stuff is just, I didn't come up that way. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, that's why I think where we kind of move into is, is what we actually kind of started with. So if somebody started training for sport and it was more condition oriented, that's I kind of think that's what I've seen people kind of migrate back into. Right. The strength is still there, but migrate back into what brought them in in the first place. Yep. You know that that love, and uh, if they came in through powerlifting, then kind of migrating back into that is kind of what's in there, and, and finding that blend of what you love to do with what you need to do yes. is the, the important part. Body holding up. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nice. nothing new, nothing new, fucked up. You yeah. know, so just have to check. It, do a little check in. Yeah, you got you got to periodize your stupidity. <laughs> yeah, you know, which is is figuring it's out kind 90% of ninety percent super smart, ten percent dumb. Yeah, as long right. as I can do. I mean, what I love to do more than anything else is squat. I mean, that's right. no fucking mystery. As long as I can keep that in there in whatever realm I need to be, and then all my other training, to be honest, is based around being ready okay. to do that at least twice a month. Where you know when you compete you get on deck right and it's and you have that time it's like you got to get your mind right close everything up and just do that one fucking rep and do that one thing that's what i fucking love it's almost like yesterday i was listening to fucking like turn the page from bob seger comes on and we all think we're fucking <laughs> guitar players right but to me it's like man my stage is the fucking squat you know that that fucking minute before that as long yeah. as i can keep doing that and then once that's over that's all i it's all you think about it's like the next 16 hours, you're like, fuck, what did I do that for? You know, <laughs> but I'll be ready next time. It's just yep. kind of figuring out yep. where that balance is. Yep. Um, you strip that away, and it has been stripped away for short periods of time. It's tough, man. That's yeah. when I got to reach out to other people and be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Because <laughs> this just training shit 
it, it kind of sucks. And it, yeah. even overall, it still sucks most, not most of the time, but a lot of the time for all of us. Mm-hmm. You just, you still do it. I mean, there's, I think that's the difference is there's no option to not do it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not part of the equation. You know, that's not going to happen. Even if I know it's going to be three years of just doing shit that I need to do, yeah. I'm still going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, that, and you're probably doing it harder than because I, I put something up the other day and I was like, ah, I'm mailing in. I mail in most of my training sessions now. And they're like, no, nah, it's, it's your minimum yeah. effective dose. And my mailing it in probably is harder than and I'm not, you know, pat myself on the back. No, but like, it's hey. true, though, because our- but when I can get up for those, like when I'm up for those workouts now, because we used to be up for every workout, mm-hmm. like every session we were like, if you weren't up for a session, it was a bad day. <laughs> And now, mo- and I have made the switch to most of my sessions are not, are not good days. They're, they're average. They're no, average. but it prepares you for that one that is though, And man. when you get that one that is, yeah, it, that's a day. That's the addiction, man. Yes. That's, that's what it's you're a good golf to, shot. right? Which I guess the question I'll throw back out there is, and that's for all you guys. Hey, don't is, ask why. No, I'm not going <laughs> to ask why. So at what point did you realize this training shit was going to be for the rest of your life? 15 and yeah. how why I saw I wanted to learn how to play the electric guitar so badly and you know when I grew up uh, when I was pretty young we you know we, my my family wasn't you know we weren't really well off like you know, they hand me down clothes stuff like that dad working a number of jobs and then food on the table great life but you know so getting an electric guitar was a big deal I was like I think it was 14 or 15 I sucked. I was terrible. I mean, and I should have gotten an acoustic. I knew nothing about it. I just yeah. thought it'd be the coolest thing. I probably wanted to be... It was the mid-80s, right? Yeah, I probably, hair wanted, bands. probably wanted to be Van Halen or... You That's know, funny. Or, and so I sold... There was a thing called the Bargain News, and I sold it. And uh, I had enough money to buy my first weight bench. And I, I just... Uh, once I started training, man, I'm like... I remember kids from the neighborhood coming over, and I could just, I could just lift a lot. And I was like, I like this. You know, I'm good at this. And that's just when I knew. I just always, I love lifting. Just that once I got into it and I did sports so I could lift, so I could be in the gym. Like, I got to, you know, I'd get to get in the gym by playing sports. And then I wanted to work out. And then if I was good at the sport, you know, like I wrestled and football and I'd start and what have you. But it's really, for me, I wanted to lift. <laughs> and so after I finished high school, I'm like, I, I just want to keep lifting. I don't care about the sports stuff. Whereas you guys, sports was. Well, that you reminds know, me of it. My, my parents took me to a fucking... Um, Drum lessons, man, and I left with this little fucking pad, this little wood this thing. This is a drum. drum. I'm like, the fuck, fuck this, man. And like, I'm never doing this again. You know, what, what about you guys? What about you? Where's um, my kit? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there was a time when I realized I was always going to do it. I know my dad instilled exercise in me. He always exercised. Um, nothing ever organized. It was a lot of basketball, racquetball, running, a little bit of lifting, but he always did something. Um, I don't know when it became one of those things where I'm just going to do it forever. Um, that's, a, that's a great question. I don't know when. Like when I finished school, I'm like, well, I'll keep lifting. Jim would write, Kevin yeah. and I workouts, and then I got into the, to the West Side stuff because uh, one of the assistant strength coaches at Richmond when I was coaching football, Jim Roney, He's like, hey, you want to do a powerlifting meet? I'm like, yeah, let's do a powerlifting meet. And that's right around the time when Jim had introduced me to some of Louis' first articles. So I sort of, like, I knew everything, obviously, because I read two mm-hmm. of his articles. Um, but it just, it... it well, he wrote the same article. <laughs> yeah, which was great because you could, it was so easy to, le- like, if you couldn't learn what he was telling you to do, like, you're an idiot. Well, he also wrote it, and this is no knock on Louis at all, but... It was important that he wrote the same article 10,000 times because people needed to hear yeah. the same fucking message yep. 10,000 yep. times. So it anyway, really hasn't so, changed that much. And no. So to me, I don't, know, I don't know the time when I knew. I just, I, I like the effect of it. I got a little better at sports. I looked a little better. I got a little bigger. That was always good. And it just... It is a tough question because yeah. one of them that came up on my on yeah. the Discord. It's server. an awesome question. I just it's, it's almost like like you had said. I read your I reread your the walk on article, and you said you don't know when your goal was to play college football. I don't, it, I just it just don't always know. has been. Yeah. I don't know when it hasn't been. So it's kind of like that. I don't yeah. know. It, it just so I've had two days to think about it, and I don't know how I can answer it either. Yeah. Do you have any clue? 
or any uh, time. So I, I can only say this, uh, much like how Vincent said when, uh, you know, you got your weight bench. I hassled my dad for like a year to, to lift and uh, had no idea what I was going to do. <laughs> you know, it was just like, uh, it's like when a kid sees boobs, you're like, I don't know what the mm-hmm. fuck those are, but I want to touch both those. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how to answer that question, Dave, because it is, is it is, not, I'm, I'm getting all choked up because it's giving me everything. But uh, it sounds so fucking gay, but it's, that's all I know. No, it's know. my life as well. I, I mean, it's, I didn't, yeah. I, I, I can defaultly say I'm not good at anything else, <laughs> right? And so it's, you know... And it was, no, you, you are good at, Dave, you are. But, but it was but that the, that led yes. me to those things. But, I, you know, I can't say, like, I never, like, dabbled in training, ever. I jumped in the, right. fuck, I jumped in the shark-infested yeah. thing yeah. and just went, fuck, I gotta go. And, uh, and I, like, even, uh, like you said, uh, like, I, you know, I can't squat or bench anymore or whatever. Um, or I choose not to, if you're gonna be honest. But uh, I don't even fucking care. I just want to do something that's physically hard. That's all I want to do. I have such uh, a desire to do that. And then, you know, we always talk about, like, I have all these uh, things I still want to do. And if you would have told me 20 years ago, like, this is what you want to do, I'm like, you're fucking nuts. And then I realize now it's all the same fucking thing. It's just stupidity, me trying to push myself. And this is so selfish. It's insane. <laughs> you know, it really is. It's this most one of the most selfish pursuits. And that's why now I feel like it's my op- obligation to give back to my kids, uh, both my sons train and uh, give back to the community and stuff to, you know, share because this is what mm-hmm. I have to offer. And it's not much. Let's just be honest. But uh, I just love it. You know, now, the, the, the follow up to the questions I, that, that's going to be easier to answer is at what point did you think you were never going to be able to do it again? <sighs> That was never... Say that again. What does that it, mean? Was there ever a point where you thought you're not going to be able to do it again? Yeah, when I was... You, uh, yeah. When I was about dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you had the heart attacks too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember laying in that side of the road. I'll never forget this. And I fucking hated... It. Sorry. I hated every day I worked. It has nothing to do with you. Okay. <laughs> I, uh... Luckily, I never, you know, just wanted to see my kids. <laughs> Sorry. No, and thank, you know what? Thank God, it, had you not trained all those years, you might yeah. not have come out on the other side of that. That's right? a good point. Yeah. It prepared, what is the, what is the, what is the saying? Uh, you're harder, to, you're, you know, you're hard, generally harder to kill. What's, there's a quote about lifts being stronger yeah. people are harder, harder to kill. kill. Yeah. 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 More useful and generally, more, yeah. Uh, yeah. generally it's more you, useful and harder to kill. kill. Yeah. It's Mark Ripito. Yeah. yeah. It's a great quote. Cause it's a hundred percent true. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you talk about like your people, I've heard uh, other people, I don't know what's, uh, might've been Huberman podcast. He, he got in an accident or something happened and they're like, I think he wrestled and they're like, if your neck wasn't so strong, you would have been really. You know, mm-hmm. you'd have been really yeah. screwed up. Like, yeah, you probably wouldn't live through that. It's, it's, you know, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. No. Yeah. I can say, and I'm sure you're the same, that the recovery from my hip replacements were way easier because I had a stronger base. Yeah. 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 Now, people would say, well, it was a training that created the issue. Well, what are you I'd supposed say, to do? I'd say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. fuck off, you yeah. know, but either way, yeah. you know, that created that stronger base for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I, I, luckily, the one thing I was, I always kind of, I don't know if it's where it really got instilled in me, but it was, you know, through every surgery and injury I had, I always just did what I could. What do you mean? Like, if all I could do you was... train what was when, trainable. When I, when I yeah. tore my bicep, when my bicep was repaired, I did body weight, you know, I just would do body weight squats as, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever I could do, I mm-hmm. would do. I would, the, you, I would you not... You found an excuse to do something. I would not not do anything that's the, that's what i was yeah, yeah. So, i would always do something you know when i my and when you know i tore my mcl i just i worked my upper body when i i did a hernia whole, surgery, did a whole video know. on this yeah uh, and I, that's yeah it's well, i think that's value based though too because that carries over into anything absolutely you know so if it's work or anything else if something's all fucked up you can't do it you find a way yeah, you got to pivot to be able to keep moving well, forward. It's like that, so. That's I, one of the hard things, though. Is my wife is on me all the time. She's like, "You got to find a lot, some other shit to do." 
because I uh, because she's like when you were hurt, oh, you're unbearable. Oh yeah, she's like, and I still did stuff, but I needed to focus more of my energy. I should have written more songs because that's what I love to do, and right. I just didn't do it because I was so frustrated. Uh, Those would have been better songs, though. What's that? <laughs> Those would have been better. Yeah, songs. that's right, man. I, oh man, <laughs> but it's. Uh, I, I, I think that's something. I used to be really good at that, as far as. Uh, segmenting, but I had my training taken away, and so now I'd like to hold it too dearly. And, Put you into uh, like a depression. Yeah, I was, I, you know, I was, <clears throat> I always have like a 24 hour rule. Like, I was like, listen, I'll give myself 24 hours and I'll feel sorry for myself. And then uh, I would get frustrated, but I never got depressed. I would be more angry than, I, I don't right? Know. Which you would, one of the things that's amazing about uh, all of us in some way, but you, I think, is. That you're always looking, you're always looking to fix it, to figure it out. You're always trying to move forward. And so, like I told you, I always tell the kids, "Don't tell me why you suck." Right. That this is exactly what I mean by that, because you you hit an obstacle, and Jim could very easily. We all at some point could have very easily packed it in and stopped training, because yeah. it was hard to come back from the hip. It was hard to come back from heart surgery. It was hard to come back and not be able to do the things that we used to be able to do. But every one of us in some way were like, okay, what's next? You know, it, there's a piece of all that though, too, because when, when you're in those circumstances, you realize how much you took for granted. And that was yeah. one of the things you took for granted. Yes. You know, the, uh, just yes. as we talk about the, the, the PR style of mindset when, uh, the, the, when I had my spine diffusion, uh, they said, listen, you're going to have to do some walking at some point. And I, and I said, well, what's the fucking record? <laughs> yeah. I yeah. you not. Yeah. And yep. uh, just getting out of bed was a whole fucking thing. And I was just covered in sweat. And they're like, you, you, they wanted to, I'm like, fuck no. And I remembered Ripito talking about putting your head down. And I was like, Burr, got my hips underneath me. Just... And I said, and they gave me a walk. I'm like, no, we're fucking doing this. <laughs> And yeah. I was, and it doesn't sound, and I'm, I'm not tooting my own horn here because a lot of other people have done way more insane things, but I was so excited to set a PR that day. Yeah. yeah. But a and, lot of uh, people don't look at it that way. Yeah, but that's, that's, any obstacle you have, like I always say, you have two options. You can let it fucking bring you down or you can go prove it to yourself. And the obstacle may not be anything great. But it's an like, obstacle. <clears throat> like Life is full of them, though. That's the problem. Yeah, that all people day don't long. figure this out. Yeah, all like, day that's, long. That was the... Uh, <clears throat> and, I, you know, Dave always talks about, you know, all the stuff that you can take from training. The hard thing to do about, like, you know, applying things in life, the hard thing is you love training. Like, I'd fucking die for it. And... <clears throat> gardening and that's so, <laughs> so you have applying to you have to find a way to you kinda, don't love. Yeah, yeah to, to to trick yourself into like let's make this into a you know a, a competition of sorts and then it gets exciting man but it teaches uh, you how to get through hard times too yeah that's so, the one thing it, it does teach you how to get through and hard i think times. a lot of people uh have other things in their life they can draw upon. I think about all the uh, people that were in the concentration camps. Like the rest of their life, they must have looked at people like you fucking pussies. <laughs> <laughs> or I, you know, you talk to guys who were in Iraq or Afghanistan who were in some horrible situations. They like, I remember reading. Uh, there was a great interview with a kid in Iraq. Uh, he was like 20 years old. He took his life, unfortunately. But uh, they asked him, I mean, you could hear the fucking bombs going off. He's just talking to the camera. He's like, there's one thing, man, I'm never giving, uh, never taking anything for granted. I cannot wait to take a shower. Oh. And I was like, how many times, you know, yeah. you take a shower and you don't think anything about yeah. it. Even like you when don't I, when think I got, about hot water. Well, when I had my, <laughs> my, car, my bike accident, they had to scrape all the road rash out of my back with oh. a metal brush. And getting in that shower was like, you know, like, oh. fucking here we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, for like a year, I never, I would turn my back like, oh, like I could feel, like it feels good. good like I, yeah. I, I'm not in pain and I never, so anyway, I just think there's a lot of, you know, just not training, just for the people that are watching this and everyone that's sitting here, that's something we can all relate to. It's something that we can draw upon. The hard thing is, is uh, like, I don't know if a lot of people have that. Yeah. Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be trained, but you know, uh, I don't know. That's why I think just uh, physical fitness in general is such a big thing. Not only does it carry over with health, but you can draw upon it, like especially young kids. Even with my youngest son, he's not the most athletic person, but he lifts and does all this stuff. His confidence to do other things is through the roof because he knows, like, oh, I can, 
of, you know, so I, I think can, I can do important. tough that's stuff. important, you know, because yeah. I come up through a meathead culture where the identity is the actual yeah. mm -hmm. thing instead of. No, and this, then when the thing's over, their yeah. fitness goes to shit, yeah. you know, because it's like, why bother? Well, yeah. that, that happens to football players all the time. You see them blow up because they're like, well, I don't need to do any of this stuff anymore. So uh, anyway, yeah, it's hard, man. I don't know. I, the one thing I think I've, and I'm just talking right now, the one thing I've said this many times, but I've been very grateful for everything I have. And I think that's, I mean, every day I make points to like, oh my God, like I get a house. Like, you know how fucking awesome my house is? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like it's got, we had air conditioning and it was pouring out last night. Did you, I assume you were mm -hmm. in the thunder? No, I was and in I'm here. Like, I'm like, what? I ain't going home now. <laughs> like what the well, hell? You were, holy shit. Yeah. yeah it's, and it, it's probably loud as shit. Oh yeah. There. Yeah. And I remember th I was in the bed thinking last night, like, man, I'm not, I'm dry. <laughs> like I can enjoy the storm where there's, you know, other people uh, who don't get that. So. I mean, I, I try to do that as much as possible. It's like probably to a point where it's a little obnoxious. <laughs> like, well, let me ask you this. Does it get to a point where it inhibits the drive for you to get better? Yeah, well, there, the uh, no, because I'm, I think I'm grateful for the small things. I'm not, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that makes, because a lot of stuff is out of my control. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I, and I, what you're talking about is satisfaction. Yeah, Meaning, yeah, like, yeah. I am content content with where I am. That's a little bit different. Yeah. I think being grateful is, a, is a, maybe a different idea. Um, so, yeah. um, I'm grateful I'm never content. Yeah. Just never, with I'm my satisfied training, that I'm yeah. never satisfied. Yeah, I, I'm grateful that I can do it, but I'm never, I, there's no yeah. contentment. There's so no how contentment. do you do that, though, if you have, because as, as a meathead, right, because you're coming up kind of how I came up yes. through different, different rent, we have to redefine our objectives. There you go. We talked so about this yesterday. This was, you know, and that's hard, this man. This was a good one for me because I told everybody on, I started at, uh, well, I, I powerlifted, I didn't meet as a teenager, and then when I, I and then in adult, <laughs> adulthood I started, uh, I weighed 210 and I worked, you know, I got up to 328. That's kilos, by the 328 way. 328 <laughs> yeah. never made 330. And I always told everybody, I was like, I'm going to take every pound off. And they're like, yeah, uh huh, whatever. You know, when you're walking, when you're sitting in front of Jabba, you're like, I'm going to, I'm going to, and I'm like, and so for me, I had that drive. You know, I'm like, I will take. I don't know. I don't know if the people sitting here doubted you. I mean, a lot of other people did. Right, most yeah. people. Oh, he did. You did, man. I did because there's no that. way. He took a picture of me one time. He's like, I got to use this in a book. Well, he's, he's like, dear God. You're clearly, yeah. the before well, picture. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I already had come down, right? So to yeah. me, it's it's the coming down. It's the going back up. That's the problem, right? So I'm like, there's no. You, he'll get down if you can bench all the shit that you bench. The right. drive. You is apply there. it. Yes. But that to fucking redefine it becomes the problem. So I'm lucky in the fact that next this time next year, please have me on next summer because I'll be retired this time next year. Yeah, from for not sure. from training, from his work. From work, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I want to ski, surf, climb, hike the world. And so for me, when I was laying on the couch, getting bigger and stronger, I didn't have any hobbies. Now I, I lifted, and lifting mm -hmm. wasn't a hobby. Yeah. That was never a hobby. No. You don't put what we put into lifting and call it a hobby. So as I started to experience life, I'm like, man, I went skiing again, which I hadn't done since I was a teenager. I was like, this is kind of fun and started getting a little more active. And I'm like, I'm going to have the opportunity to do this. Like I could probably take a good chunk. I look at Harry Selko and I'm like, I'm like, Harry's, you know, got 10 years on me and Harry looks like the Harry's an animal. Yeah. He like rides, he rides his bike to work every day. Get hits by a, gets hit by a car probably once a week. <laughs> and he just gets on. He's like, he's all bruised. And I, I love here. And I'm like, I could probably, I could have a good 10 years if I'm lucky of just, of being able to do whatever yeah. I want. And if I'm active enough and feel good enough and strong enough, I could do all these things. So for me, I put, that much effort into just being it, I have become what you know what Jim used to say the uh, jack of all trades but master of none like I'm pretty I can run for you know five six miles on end I can I can deadlift two and a half times my body weight bench twice my body weight you know I have these metrics that I'm pretty good at for someone in their 50s doesn't make me great at anything but i will be able to do all of those things that i want to do yeah 
your aspirations were so much different than mine. <laughs> when, when, when I was fat, bloated, laying on the couch, and not, not actually the recliner, not the couch, because the couch too hard to get yeah, off. Right? Yeah, I, I'd have wake apnea. <laughs> so, like, yeah, fucking on the recliner. All I'm thinking is because I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't you know do all this other shit. And two beers, I'd be fucked up. He can prove it. Oh. All right. So I'm like, when I'm done with all this, I'm going to get drunk as fuck. I'm going to smoke all kinds of weed. <laughs> I'm going to fucking do drugs like they're going to. I'm going to do all this shit that I missed out on. Then I tried smoking weed and hated it. You know, oh. it's all this other stuff, and I, the drinking still tastes like shit. So I still got some work to do. You haven't tried the minimum. The cig- well, the cigars. How about the minimum? What do we talked about? The minimum effective dose of heroin <laughs> <laughs> on the outlaw forum. What is the minimum? Of- there is none. There's, There's a no, <laughs> no minimum effective dose of heroin <laughs> that you can maintain. So you haven't figured that out yet. So, so you're still in this black hole of training for yeah. no reason. Well, that minimum effective <laughs> dose, I know, and it wasn't me but i think i know where that came from because it was um it used to be pretty easy to get pain pets then they changed laws and new all other new bane. it's when new everybody yeah, couldn't new get bane. the yeah, new yeah, bane yeah, yeah, so then boom that was the next thing is yeah. you know people were like oh fuck i can't get the new bane i can't get fucking pain meds because it's a pain in the ass to go through the doctor so what's the minimum <laughs> just, it's just a, i do remember you're that. in a dark place where you're putting that on the yeah. internet <laughs> well it's not, i mean well, i'm reading it and i'm thinking well yeah i, I kind of you're reading it or writing it reading it i'm like i kind of get where they're coming from but everybody thank god right everybody there was not one person not one and that's the most fucked up board that ever existed yeah. when you're on that board that not one person said listen you could do this you know here you're like that person's like oh man oh yeah that was you, you that. thought you were in an echo chamber there and you that one didn't hit god, the, hit the mark that. ah that was that was good that, that was when the trolling was at its best uh jim still i still hate jim for the fact that he d- did not have that video that you created oh yeah uh with the- years ago there was a uh website that was free that you could create your God, own animation fucking funny the man. cartoon and i did this whole cartoon about big gary from the morning crew <laughs> that has to i don't know whether it's speed strength man. or strength speed <laughs> the next morning <laughs> I saw on Outlaws, and I was like, I, I called you because I'm like, and I don't even, I was like, Jim did that. That was beautiful. I called him up, and he was howling, laughing. If anybody howling. downloaded that and has it, fucking DM me. Oh, Get a hold please. of me. Please. Because I, I, I know this site no longer exists, and like the, so they their servers probably all mm. uh, went down. No, but somebody could have downloaded it. Yeah. Somehow, there was, but, that was gold. Because so people I, still have our, our, uh, what, pot, the, Radio show, just we did. big, just big. Technically, that was a podcast. There was a pod. If the, if the idiot was a stuck around a little longer, he would have probably made huh? some money. He had a beautiful studio, the, uh, that an online radio. I show. sent that to uh, Will Ramsey, the video, and yeah. uh, you know, I sent it to him, and then he, like thirty minutes later, he calls me. He's like, I had to pull over the side of the road. <laughs> God, it was funny because he goes, everything you said in there was me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big Gary, was so big Gary fun, from the Morning Crew said. <laughs> And people were messaging me. She pee pee. Yeah, dude, weird... it took me forever to get that to say that. Yeah, it had the very weird uh, intonation. Yeah, she pee pee. People but... were messaging me, you know, <laughs> thumbs up, and then people were pissed. I'm like, how can you be mad about this was animated funny. South Park type shit? That was just funny. Oh, oh, it was funny, man. When I did that, I, m- I was you at must my have been kitchen laughing table. Like an idiot. It must Juliet, have taken you forever Juliet, laughing. Juliet was on the couch, and she's just like the whole time like, <laughs> oh my and then God. you hear jeep baby i'm like no that doesn't work you know oh. how long did it take you to put that together you i don't i don't remember it maybe have taken me uh two days but it was like maybe an hour yeah. each day or something just farting yeah. around with brilliant. stuff but i uh <laughs> i try to get all you know then you have all these you know these ideas like the strength speed or speed strength i don't know which one. <laughs> i don't know which one. I still don't know which one. <laughs> They're too high. And I talked about, you know, driving the sled. <laughs> Who was the caveman guy? The Benny Poda thing. That was that was Harry. That was yeah. Harry. Harry. He used to, he said he goes when I would write to you, I would put on like my uh, wrestling headgear and like put on my uh, like my singlet or something and just get get These in character. These were handwritten letters. He was no saying. no no. This was this was on the computer. I actually got some stuff from Harry or from Benny. Potter. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, did you really? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fucking. I still have it. It's is fucking, he still in the cave? He is. <laughs> last time I heard, he was a he worked on a illegal farm and then became a Catholic priest. All right. And he's the, the stories are insane. And I knew someone that had uh, 
spent a weekend with him and uh as just like and it, this the, the stories he, are true oh my god dude he's the guy is benny pota the letters of harry were sent in were unbelievable <laughs> yeah it was unbelievable but the the things with harry were absolutely hilarious and i thought he did and i didn't know it was him for a long time oh really no, no. he never told me and i just i just because you know back in the day uh you know you'd send a uh, message mm -hmm. and you'd go in the back end and do it and i remember it'd be from benny pota and be from <laughs> benny Pata at thecave.com mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever. It was something like that. Whatever he put yeah, in. But that was his email address. And uh, But some of that stuff was just lights out, man. And I love that. I don't think people today understand that impact that the Q&A had. Yeah. Uh, it was some of the best. It was the only place on the Internet, really, that had something like this. Uh, that you could ask people questions of legitimacy and know what they are, but the amount of fucking shit talking. Oh and of course, God. you could, you could, uh, you know, your sign offs. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> were gold. Well, I remember you always putting pictures up in my log. And yeah. people still today is like, hey, you remember that one picture? Because I had a picture of, uh, there used to be a Law and Order video game, which I don't know how that is, but it had Jerry Orbach. <laughs> And it was a still of him going like grumpy, and it just said virtual Jerry Orbach thinks you're full of shit. <laughs> that was the the meme. Yeah. And it was just grumpy. You know, I, like I still get stuff like that. You know, people remember some of the stuff, but I hate that the social media kind of and I I, not, I don't hate social media, but I hate how it took away like the you know the logs and the uh, Q and A. Not just like, the you know what it because that I I really looked forward to answering the questions. I look yeah. forward I look forward to seeing the questions. I, and reading answers from other people. I, I like miss the questions on the original platform. Being yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, on the uh, just the one place you could go to, right? Yeah. Instead of just kind of it being dissipated everywhere, you could go here, even if you were just a fan. Like I was a fan before I was on there, and it's just like you couldn't wait to yeah check uh, and see who. Yeah, who, like when Dave was on the DeepSquatter.com, yeah. you were never if, on a on a new article schedule, and it was like you know every once in a while he'd maybe have. When Deep Squatter, he'd have a Q and A. That's how it started. Yeah, and uh, so maybe it'd be once uh, every three weeks, and then it'd be two in two weeks. Like fuck, dude. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, you know he it was how fast Jason could convert the shit because yeah. he had to write it in yeah. code. Yeah, and he had to edit what I was writing at the time. Well, he didn't edit shit. Yeah, I had. <laughs> well, I'm sure he did a little. <laughs> but it, it was uh, it, it, it was a, definitely an awesome time, and I like you know as <laughs> this probably sounds like I like the. The I don't know how to put this. It was uh, clicky, yeah, in a cool way. And, yeah, uh, you were with your tribe, so to speak. Yeah, and it was fun, man. Oh, we had good times. It I mean, was it, vetted too, so people yes. were getting answers from people that actually knew what the fuck they were. Well, not just yeah, that's about. one of the it biggest. Was, it was vetted. What did you, it was what, vetted on both sides. What did someone say? What you did two thousand st stairs the other day? Oh the, yeah, someone got all like did. with a weight vest. <laughs> he's just posed, you know, a guy who almost died in a motorcycle accident. You know, he's lucky to be walking. You know, post a uh, post on I, the social media. I climbed two thousand steps in like an hour with a weight best on so 2,000 up and then 2,000 down someone's like you fucking pussy I can do 4,000 nothing and it's like Jesus like I'm not posting this it's not a competition yeah, like, yeah, not, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah. this is not great it's good for me but and I'm pretty happy with it it's like uh, those things have long I think I've kind of got rid of most of the riffraff uh, yeah, I don't know the I'm, garbage on those forums and on deep squatter a lot of the you didn't mind the few stupid things because it was either in, it was either good information or it was funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now it's just you know what? Some it's of the, just not even. It's just the best. I, the best trolls steps, had who the cares. Whenever they would post like uh, someone so squat from the 2003 Iron Mine, it'd be like <laughs> Chopper, <laughs> Chopper, Chopper Dave, Dave. <laughs> Nine in the Sky. Oh, it looks yeah, good to yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. The names, man. Oh, God. The names. And it, like, it, there's no message. It just said, "Look, you know," and like uh, Ray Charles, like Solid Squat Boys. <laughs> I posted ones from the the Ghost of Billy Mimna, and Jason Coker wanted to. I guess he wanted to figure out who put that and wanted to kill him. Oh my God. Because he, cause he was so, because he loves Billy and he was yeah. so mad. And I'm like, I just thought it was a great name. <laughs> the, go, the ghost of Billy Mimna. Yeah. The fact that he's still alive is, is That's downright just amazing. That's mind boggling. Yes. Dude, he is, a, he is a fucking fighter. Absolutely. He is a he is a national treasure in my <laughs> book. <laughs> I love Billy. But yeah, that's how that's how revered he was. I think Coker wanted to find where I, I said, Billy, Tom, I did it. I was just kidding, man. I just thought it was funny. I did it for my own amusement. Billy's like, that was that was me. <laughs> Motherfucker's gonna die. <laughs>
Anyway, this, sorry. Yeah, this is an interesting question okay. here because the one we've been asked a million times, and that is if you could go back and give yourself advice, what would it be? This one's a little different. If you could go forward in time and give your older self advice, what would it be? <laughs> oh. Dude, that's, that's older deep. self better be smarter than newer so, uh, today self. That's, yeah. that's uh, a good point. Yeah, yeah I would be... Uh, I don't like continue to accrue wisdom. <laughs> oh, dear yeah. God. What? That's terrible. You're terrible. Thank you. That just, that just really slowed things down. I don't even know how to answer. I, I don't know how much longer I got anyway. Not much. Yeah, Not <laughs> clearly. Much. You look you look horrible. I would say you can take more shit than you think you could. <laughs> I don't know. Because yeah. you're closer to death. Are you talking about drugs? Yeah, or? drugs, everything. Because you're closer question. to death. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good question. Right? I mean, you're closer to death, so fucking do crazier shit. Yeah, that, that, note to self, do crazy, do crazier you do stuff. Do crazier you're shit. You're going to die pretty soon. Yeah, so you're almost out. You're almost like, out. Just do it, man. If Stop you're hanging out. on. It's Stop awesome. hanging on. You go you go forward in time like, where am I? I say, mm. <laughs> don't know how to yeah. tell you this, dude. Dude, you it's know? only six months from now. <laughs> well. <laughs> Live tomorrow like it will be your last. <laughs> Why? Yeah, don't ask. God, these are all stupid. <laughs> some of those are so big yeah i will while you're reading those i'll say uh one of the things if i would I, we actually spoke about this two things i would have done differently if i were to do it over again wouldn't have been the training wouldn't have been the diet wouldn't have been i would have walked just a basic conditioning concept I and mean, matt and i were walking today while jim was coaching like we're bipeds just keep walking no matter how big are you, you are. sure man you had your wife push you through the airport in a oh, wheelchair man, that was, she can still do that <laughs> <laughs> and i would have that, that is actually better if he's in great shape yes <laughs> yeah because you're lighter I used to love being at meets and Jess would be like tying my shoes and put my socks on. Other women would come up like, you're ruining it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, That's why you won't be together too much longer. It did kind of you suck. Look, you look yeah. single. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason you're single. Meanwhile, we're all like taking the deep breath before you go down <laughs> for the first loop. <laughs> you see everybody's yeah. shoes tied and to the side. You, They're never, the laces are never on top. Your hip up yeah. and you have to figure out like you got to put the sock... Oh, yeah. You got to figure out how to get the sock over your toes quickly. It's a power climb. Well, yeah. you're the one that told me the fucking sock machine, the thing. The, so the, good, dude. I couldn't get that to work to save my so life. Good, it's just dude. fucking Crocs, man. I'm done. You guys so saw me good, here one dude. day with the stretch strap. Yeah. I think someone, I had it, I don't know whether it was one of the mm -hmm. PTs, I had it looped around my ankle and I'm hoisting my foot onto <laughs> to my knee to put on. my sock on because yeah. Jess wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, these questions suck. I got better ones. So, <laughs> all right, so when you're fucking eating to gain weight and you have that meal that's just bigger and fuck, you feel the heartbeat in your stomach? Yeah, freaking chilies when Jim ordered wings. No, what do you that, do? That, what did that, you that do to make that gorgeous. pain go away? I'm so here's one where I just I am off the I'm out for this question because it it never it I didn't hit those moments. He's got ringworm. So I he love just to eat. eat. I can, <laughs> what? I love to eat. No, I for real. I can still. I went to a buffet with a friend who was 400 pounds like a year or two ago. I'm on my fifth plate. And they're done it too. I'm like, really? You guys invited me to? Because I don't do buffets anymore. I I'm a garbage pail. I can. He's eat. like a dog. He could eat himself to death. And I one there was one. I, we used to do a bloatathon when I was my heaviest, and it was so. The deal was you got your weight in the morning, and this wasn't a weight cut gain. It was you legit, legitimately on Thanksgiving morning. You wake up whatever you weigh, and then whoever could gain the weight most weight yeah. by the end of the day. And I did 13 pounds, and I was laying Jessica. I was laying over an ottoman. That was the only time I ever wounded myself. Laying over an ottoman, holding my stomach on. Uh, <laughs> it was worth it. Uh, <laughs> but that was, I love to eat till I'm full, which I rarely ever feel. Now, that's why I fasted for a while. So I could just have all my calories in one meal to be full. But yeah, I'm very lucky. Like I, I'm lucky in the fact that when I want to get bigger, that was an issue. I'm unlucky in the fact that I'm very rarely sated. I'm, wow. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> He was to watch him. It was painful. It, it was great. Because I don't yeah, sweating. I mean, yeah, leaving a wing on the table. No, the two of these guys. Like, like, it's yeah. easy to lose weight. I just stopped eating. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> the f what are you talking about? They're like, I just, you just don't eat as much. Losing weight is so tough. You're 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 not doing something. <laughs> that was Wendler. Yeah. yeah. That's a, yeah. You're I'm, not I'm not asking you to do anything, Vince. Yeah. I'm asking you not to do yeah. something. <laughs> so when you <laughs> ate that much, right? You don't even want to get up, and you feel that heartbeat. So what did you do to make it more comfortable? I would call him and ridicule him. <laughs> I heard 
I heard his voice in my head a lot. Like when I'm like, his voice ain't going to help the state that you're in. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yes, it would. I, I just. When I felt that way, and there's X number of whatever left, it's I would hear him in my head. I'm like, I just got to do it. And I don't know if I ever had to, like, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, I've you got to loosen your fucking pants. Oh, you gotta, yeah, oh. I loosened my pants when I sat back down after taking a leak. <laughs> just just for a little extra yeah, yeah, room yeah. there. But, yeah, nothing, nothing, I mean... I, didn't wear a lot of belts and jeans back then. I always wore so we sweats. Wore athletic yeah. shorts or sweats and looked yeah. horrible just so there was no, yeah. there was nothing in the way. Yeah, you were big at 315. Yeah. And we were in Vegas and I was like, you got a pool. I was like, he looks good. Yeah. <laughs> which, I, yeah. It's, what's bizarre? I call him the snowman because everything yeah. looked like a snowball. Like his, he actually had shoulders. Because you, for being your. I have as, terrible shoulders. For as tall as you are, like you just never had big, big you, broad you yeah. shoulders. You had like delts and traps. And I was like, ah, Rhodes looks good. Finally. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> then the hip went, I had heart surgery. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That's uh, before that. Yeah, any any yeah. strategies that you had? Well, I, here's the thing, guys. I, this is I figured this out when I was in college. Is I never eating everything at, like a big meal and just didn't do it. So what I'd always do is I would make, I would have a goal to eat X every day, and however that fucking got down, I don't care. So if I had to eat a little bit here, 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 is at the end of the day I had two pounds of meat and four cups of rice. I was fucking solid. So I never, I could never eat. I, I don't like feeling like that. I fucking hate it. Yeah. So I'd rather space everything out and just have a. I love having goals. Like, I don't sound, yes. So if I'm like, listen, I just got to get from here to here. I got 24 hours to do it. I, you know, wake up in the mornings early and have a little bit. And you can always shovel a little bit in your mouth. So. So did you weigh yourself in the morning and night? On Thanksgiving? No, no. Oh, every, every, every time. All, you're no, I, no, I'll never forget. I was training with, long. I was training with Derek Poundstone once. And he's like, how much do you weigh? And I'm like, uh, I was like, uh, like. 305 he's like you don't know and i stepped on the scale and he goes you're 315 <laughs> yeah. i was like, isn't that close enough i'm like i don't know because once you're a certain weight it's like i I'll, i always remember the training video with all us at, at merce place how much do you weigh i'm like 298 he goes on the moon yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just i would yeah. on just, we would leave work and I'd get, we'd stop at McDonald's at the drive-thru. I'd get McDonald's on the way home. I'd go train, eat dinner. Then I would, uh, then I would do a half, I would eat ring dings on the way home. And then I would, uh, <laughs> after dinner, I'd, I'd eat a, uh, a half gallon ice cream every night. It was oh. fantastic. I loved it. I, I, oh, I miss it. You were it. happier then. I, I was so much happier. I miss it so much. I really do. It's 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 like everybody said. You never look happy in your picture. I'm like I'm not. It's <laughs> happier. I haven't done this in a while, but every now and then I would send a picture of a box of ring dings to him <laughs> randomly, like when he was at school or something, or or a like a picture of a Big Mac or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> when he was trying to lose Torment weight. Torment me. <laughs> I tell these guys, I I don't even like them. I come out just because I know I'm gonna get Popeyes. Yeah, and that's, that's fine. It's my excuse to eat Popeyes, and I get to go home again. I'm like, well, you, you guys do this NOV thing. Is that what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah. tomorrow. So what is it? You Whatever can, you, you want you, it to be. Well, I know that, yeah. but y'all have different challenges. So what are they? So just so uh, I haven't really been able to train since like effect since maybe October. So I just kind of figured out what was wrong. It took me a long time. So I've been training for, what did we say, about three weeks three now? Three weeks, yeah. <clears throat> so three weeks now, I've been, and I'm not 100%, so I'm going to just do the 150 squats, 100 push-ups, and 50 pull-ups with a 45-pound vest and as quickly as I can. And uh, as long as I, you know, it's legitimate, I'm going to be fine. I'd like to get one day to do that with the... The uh, X Fest has eight, the one I have is fits 84 pounds. So if I figure I can do 150, 150 with the 84 pound vest in 30 minutes, it's fucking legit. And until you say, well, what's the big deal? Get off the ground <laughs> with an 84, with an 84 pound 84 vest out of the push ups and try knocking out pull ups with an 84 pound vest. It's not yeah. easy. Yeah, you're not staying on the ground doing just the push ups. No, no. Yeah, you're, so yeah. you're, you're, but, uh, and I always figure, like, if I figure if I can do that or even something close to that, like, I'll be physically mm -hmm. fit to do just about anything. So, but we all, we all have done, like, the, what are you going to do? You're going to do well, I'm gonna the do, five through one I'm challenge? Gonna, I'm going to do the five through one because I'm very proud of myself. This first year, I have not brought, I did not bring a belt wraps anything i'm just like i'm just gonna because i usually lift
but I'm going to do the 500 just body weight squats. 500 squats, 300 push ups, and 100 chin ups. Yeah. And, and then I'm going to set a metric. That, that don't, then I'll have a time because it's like, yeah, if I want to do something stupid, I can recover from that and I could just try to constantly, if I, I can beat that time. It's like finding like that, you know, that edge. Because I, we did, we all did a 12 mile walk. Not, you know, not together, but with a weight vest and, you know, for me, cause I do so much conditioning and hiking and stuff. It wasn't a big deal for Matt. He kind of found his, I found the edge and I'm trying it. to find the edge with something that I can really push, but not have too much cost. So yeah. I think this is good for me because I could go try to pull a PR deadlift tomorrow and I know that's just not gonna, yeah. you know, a PR, a PR at my age, whatever, but th that has a lot of cost. With that weight so, vest yeah. walk that you did, how'd your hip do with that? <laughs> well, it, what's it funny is during, it wasn't bad. Um, the worst pain, if you call it pain, my feet got sore after, I don't know, eight or nine miles. My feet started to bother me. Hip didn't bother me. Back didn't bother me. I took the vest off and my traps felt like I did a thousand shrugs. <laughs> But I didn't hurt. It's and not a bad feeling if it's a pump. No, it was, <laughs> it was, it was on the verge. You know the lat cramps you get every now and then. Yeah. It was on the verge of that. A trap cramp. Trap cramps. Like up into my neck and all. But it didn't cramp. But I'm like, it's coming. It's coming. And it didn't. And then the next day, I was a little sore. But like three days later, my hip was. It, it was. I'm like, I need a new hip. <laughs> like I had pain down to my knee. You know, they tell groin. you not to do shit like that. Right? Yeah. In, like and I thought I'm like I Who's did they? It. Yeah. But anyhow, what do they know? But yeah. I, the man. I thought it was like I was like my hip feels like it did when I had it replaced. And mm -hmm. I'm like now I got it. So I've been stretching and I took about a week where I didn't really do much and I'm still messed up. Like getting on the plane yesterday today, I'm I'm I hurt today. But um, I, so I what are you think, gonna do? Just coach them? No, of course not. I'm stupid. Uh, <laughs> I have a. I gotta take advice from him. <laughs> weirdo goal. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to. <laughs> yeah. No. Go for it. Sounds like you a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I teed. I'm, I'm, I teed that up. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Serve me a fat meatball, Roach. <laughs> Serve me a fucking meatball right down the center. <laughs> Continue. Keep powering through. Yeah, right? doing? Keep powering you got through. it. You guys got me on that one. I lost <laughs> my train of thought on one. Yeah, you got it. I, 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 I got to tell oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I want to I wanna trap bar my body weight for, I think, 20 minutes. See how many reps I can do in 20 minutes. Essentially, the idea being do a set every minute is kind of the general guideline. But I'm going to do probably threes, twos as often as I can in 20 minutes and see how many reps I get. From the floor or off blocks? Floor. This yeah. is not a dig From at Matt. Floor. Yes, it is. No, no, no. And, and then I, I'm going to do push-ups. It, it may sound like No, it. no. And it won't. Suck the pull up. So I'm super impressed by Matt because between the heart surgery and the hip, Matt's very limited in how much he can put on himself. And the fact that he has to temper what he does so much and yet continues to just keep going at it and keep going at it and keep going at it because I can have a stupid day where I can, you know what, I'm going to load up the trap bar and I'm going to do my 540 pound deadlift today. Matt can't do that. Mm. It'll, it could kill him. Legitimately, <laughs> it could kill him. But to continually just keep grinding and just finding a way to just keep going because, you know, I mean, it, it, you got between Marfans, yeah. between heart surgery, between the hip, like it's, you're up against a lot and just continually finding a way for you. The challenge is just, is actually not killing yourself. Like with <laughs> yeah, training, which yeah, yeah, not, yeah. you know, I mean, not, I, I certainly want to go out trap bar deadlift and that's for fun. <laughs> Dave, you, but for us, we love it. Hold on, he, he could say deadlifting. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. have to be deadlifting. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't going out deadlifting yeah. either. No, no, that would. Um, suck. But what's interesting is is learning. Can you imagine how terrible that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They'd all be talking about it in your guess. wake. Oh, he faked a yeah. hamstring injury oh, and we, fell down. As soon as he dies, we'll put like three or four yeah. extra plates on yeah. the bar. It'll be the 
Jordan Vesey. Ever yeah. post on deadlift till I'm dead. Yeah. yeah. A picture of Rhodes slumped yeah. over a trap bar. Yeah. Yeah. Just as soon as he dies, you stack extra yeah. plates on there. Yeah. Look what he was I heard doing. the plates are fake. Look what he was yeah. attempting. The, what, what they it was do, his 13th rep. Trust what me. they would do is they would take off the they would take off the 45s and put on like the five, 15s. We put on the, five the record breakers. Bumpers. The collar's bigger yeah. than the plate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still remember my friend. My, my very first. You started meet with a compliment. By I the ever way. did. I, I knew it had to go this way. I didn't. I didn't take it. There, there was that older group of crew that would open up with the barbell uh, mm -hmm. at the very first meet, and I remember Dave's like, "What do you do your speed work?" <laughs> I remember that. Like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> oh, they were they were they were talking to us, right? Yeah. All respect for anybody that competes. Yeah. And telling us that they were trained kanji, right? <laughs> and I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> what? I'm like, okay, there's like the bar and like collars, right? Like 55 pounds, and like I'm doing the math, and like. What's less than that? Like an easy crowbar? Like, what do you do speed work with? Oh, did they answer you? Did you ask? No, them? I didn't ask them because I. <laughs> what a hey, great I question. I didn't want to know the answer, but it just seemed like a very inappropriate question, you know, to be able to ask. Oh man. Yeah. So that's. Do you have any more challenges for yourself coming up, Dave? Yeah, each year there's something I try to get done with a squat. And what I've been doing over the past several years is doing that same thing at a lower weight. Okay. Right? A so, lower body yeah, weight? Yeah, yeah. So yep. the first time it was like 280 and then 260 and it's like 250 is where I sit right now. 245 to 250. But this this year, the weight that's going to be is something I did. It was a spider bar thing with 800 pounds a long time ago. Is I want to do that without the reverse bands at 250 you okay. know, 245. Yep. You know, so basically something I did before I started having all the heart issues and was over 300, close to 300 pounds. Right. At, at that lighter weight. So this, I like these things because these are, um, they're stretch goals. Mm -hmm. They're obtainable, but I have to, I have to train. You have to prepare for <clears> I have to prepare it. And it's a long process. This is like a year process and then keeping the weight under control, right. you know, which is a big part of Half the, the thing. battle. Yeah. It's been it's been easier for me now because it's I just reversed my approach. Like every time I step on a scale, I can't weigh over two fifty. So if it's like two fifty two, I'm like fuck, I shouldn't be two fifty two. Then I just I just eat less. Yeah. It's like two fifty. For a while there, I was hitting like two forty two, and I'm like, mm, should I make the number two forty five? Because this is how I lost the weight from the two eighty down. Yeah. It's like yeah. I can't weigh over this amount. And then after a while, it's like two seventy five. I'm like. Okay, I guess this is my new number. Yeah. Right? And then it just kept chipping down like Develop that. Develop a new base. Yeah. 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 And all, then, like, fuck, now it's like fucking 10 years of dealing with this bullshit. I'm like, I could have done this from the start. Yeah. This is how I gained yeah. weight. Yeah. yeah. You That's know, you get great. on the scale, yeah. like, fuck, I'm 270. I, I need to eat more. more. Right. right. Yeah. And I need to eat less. Yeah. I kept setting. That's how I did. I just kept setting lunk alarms. <laughs> yeah. My lunk alarm was like, you know, 310. I can't go over 310 again. 300, you know, and uh, now my, my goal is just every year I want to weigh a little less than I do I, well, now. Dan, like, Dan John had that goal of uh, losing one pound a year. It's a great goal. And his logic was beside it. Not, I mean, obviously fairly simple and easy to do, but it's usually gain weight over the years. Yeah. So if you're after 10 years, people would gain 25 pounds, he'll be down 10. So it's a net loss of, you know, theoretically 35, 35 pounds. Yeah. And uh, I, I always thought that was one of the funniest approaches. It's like, uh, so I always love that. And it's also a very doable approach. Yeah. Over time. Yeah. No matter what my cutting phase is, because I, I spent a year, um, you know, what is it? Uh, re uh, reverse dieting. Cause my calories were down to like 1900. I was like 190, seven pounds 196 pounds and i was just miserable that's just not enough calories to train and condition and so that so i gained 20 pounds in a what's year. a reverse diet it you just keep slowly adding calories back in oh so eating more yeah but it's slower it's not i know like, i know i know like, i know it's okay like yeah you got to give them one i mean i know it, it, no because I, I get it because it's you know i i've done like the opposite i've done like blast reverse diets where i gain like 30 pounds in a week <laughs> and then, you know it's that actually the one the first jim was still working at the one i dieted down i don't know who it was with it might have been know, justin no, man I, this was when we went to boston yeah no, before that oh, and was, we had to find a place to eat this was yeah, this was this was before that because it's 
I went down to like 244. We had the stupid photo shoot thing. Oh, okay. Went to Myrtle for 10 days and came back like 276. Right? <laughs> I walked. That's in the, when you ate all the donuts. Oh no, the, yeah, okay, part of it. But I walk in the office. Chris doesn't know what to say. Nobody knows what to say. <laughs> and then Jim sees me and just busts out fucking laughing. <laughs> but that's the that's not a reverse diet. A yeah. reverse diet would slowly, slowly put it on. This was just like a fuck that. I'm just done. So I built back up over 3,000 calories again, but I I had gained you know I gained 10% of my weight. I was up, uh, you know, close 20 pounds. And so, you know, now I'm working my way back down again and finding the balance between, you know, cause running three days a week. Now I'm only training, uh, lifting three days a week cause four days was too much. And you know, I still love to eat. So it's just trying to find, so I'm like, Oh, you know, I'll lose a pound a week for two weeks and then I'll take a break. And so, you know, I, I look at my tracker and I'm like, yeah, through all this hard work, I've lost, I'm back to my same old self losing. Like I've lost three pounds in the last six months. Like I just, I'm not, a, I, I cannot lose weight quickly. So do you still track your macros and all that shit? Every day. Cause I'll like track all that. I'll put Popeye's in. and it, for me, it's just something I do. It's not, it's not perfect, but it just keeps me accountable. You traffic. function well that way, though. You you function well with very high I'm a, structure. I'm a math person. Numbers yeah. like makes training. If you gave me numbers and said, if you do this, this, and this, this many times, you're going to bench this or lift this, and I'm like, that always made sense to but me. But your brain functions well that way yeah. too. Math you, just math works. That's sci- you know. And I'm I don't like, track a fucking thing. I just try to get 200 grams of protein a day. And that's a try. Yeah. Usually it's like 170 or I'm not adding it up. I just know that this, my breakfast is like 70 every day, yeah. you know, and then you know. hope for the best. Well, yeah. there's, uh, there's other meals and yeah. like, okay, if that's 70, then I'm probably getting another hundred throughout a couple other. Yeah. Meals. And everybody, so everybody just find this gym's doing some fasting. Now I, I did keto. I've done fasting. I've done everything, whatever you need that works where you lose weight. Yeah, well, I I think the most important thing is whatever you want to do. Yeah, like want to do because I uh, I've tried fasting before because my wife loves it and I just I was like I guess I'll try it but my heart wasn't into it I was fucking starving like at three hours after you know and now it's like I'm not I fasted for twenty hours today I didn't even worry about it. Like, How's your brain when you do it? Uh, good. Good. You feel fucking awesome. The you point feel great. The, the thing is, is as an example, let's say. Uh, after you eat your whatever meal, there's going to be like this huge hunger thing mm-hmm. and then it dissipates and then you wake up and I'm fine. And then it like, like we said around 10 AM, like you're like, dude, I just can't wait to eat. And once that passes, you're like, you can get not, not that I'm just talking cognitively. No, very that, well. That's what I'm saying. You feel really good. You feel but, sharp. But did you, it start like that or did it? Cause every time I've tried it, my brain yeah, then, just like, yeah, it takes a few days. It to takes shift. a little bit, but oh, yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think it's the answer to everything. I just was willing to try it again yeah. and I'm fine. And I'm already dropped six pounds in four days there was a great so five pounds a great six. quote i'm go sorry ahead. no go ahead uh what a, a um a starving like tiger is a is a great hunter something along those lines like yeah you're you're pretty sharp when you're like when you, well when they starve long enough they're good prey too yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah but so, what i what i took away from that is because i know fasting is not the optimal way to kind of for hypertrophy or strength, it works. And it's in, at that point, you're kind of, you know, you're really majoring in the minors, but so yeah, I, from, from that, I've taken that if I eat protein and vegetables at, for breakfast and for lunch, yes. I feel great. If I have, for me, if I have a lot, a lot of carbs in the morning, I feel like I just, I'm a little foggy. Well, the, I just feel, I feel the sharper. The other thing is generally speaking, I don't eat a lot of carbs during when I'm eating. So I, I just don't feel good. And I hate, I, my wife and I always laugh about this. Like, I hate when you discover truths that you don't want to know. <laughs> it's like, man, well, this sucks. I, I've done the fasting too. Uh, it get, yeah. works with my schedule for the most part. And I find the same thing. A couple days, brain's more active. But if you want to get strong and big, it's, that's yeah. a horrible diet yeah. for you. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. See, I carb up but, when I get home. I'll just start like eating carbs before it's raining, and then I I sleep super well. I, the more carbs I eat, the better I sleep. So I don't I fat and fat and carbs I, I I'm liberal with. I interchange them depending <clears> on like you know I'm not purposeful like I have to have thirty percent fat. It's whatever the meals are. I get the protein. I get my body weight in grams, just as basic. And then you know I I feel I like carbs. I like eating low fat. So I have my kind of what I do and I. Basically, from one time I get home, it's just carbing up, the, training, the carbs, sleep. Other thing is uh, I sleep horribly. Like, I'll wake up 20, 20 times a night. And then since I've been doing this, I only wake up once. 
Really? And that is a massive difference. And I'm up earlier and I'm ready to, you know, pretty much ready to go. Now, when you wake up, are you waking up because you have to piss or are you just waking up? I just wake up. Yeah. No, no. When I, oh, when I, in, at night, yeah, yeah, night, yeah, yeah. I wake up to take a leak. Yeah. And yeah. that's when I take my Synthroid and all that bullshit, but, which is perfect for me because I get my, med, in my, uh, <clears throat> you're supposed to take it on an empty stomach, which I guess I'm always have an empty stomach, but yeah, I wake up to piss, but I go right back to bed. It's awesome. It's, and you guys have all known like sleep. If you don't, <laughs> it doesn't matter oh. how healthy you are. You just feel like shit all the time. Oh, mm -hmm. it's the greatest so, in the world. Yeah. I slept, uh, and we don't, we got, you guys, we probably went to bed at what time? 11 o'clock last yeah, night. Yeah. I was up and I didn't go to sleep till like 12 30 uh probably I was we were up at I was up at 6 30 this point I was fucking fine yeah so and it's so. awesome feeling so yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to stick with this or I think this is greater it's the answer like for right now though. right now I'm happy yeah. the only thing is tomorrow when we train I'm going to have a little bit of like bacon or something so, or nuts and cheese or something before we do the yeah things. I'll need some I'll need some carbs tomorrow so morning. yeah sure. but that's but after that then uh like it feels it feels good to feel good. Well, I know as I've gotten older, there's a lot of shit I can't eat yeah. that I used to eat. That's what I'm saying. Carbs dude, affect me the way you were talking yeah. about, and oh. you too. Uh, if I eat them, if I eat too much in the morning or at lunch, I, I crash. I can tell in my my second half of my day, I have three classes in a row, and when I eat a higher carb lunch, I am fighting. Yeah. Like, See, like those last the, classes I have, I have about 10 to 15 minutes yeah. between like, classes with the change over time. Workouts on the board. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, but if I, desk. if I stick to a higher protein. He puts his glasses on. <laughs> I don't wear those in public. Uh, I feel better. Yeah. And my brain's sharper. I, I, I feel. <laughs> this is one of Matt's lenses. <laughs> That is generous. <laughs> well, your glasses are like that. Oh, because I don't, I don't He's have a lens. He's flying ants this morning. I don't have a lens in my eye anymore, so my glasses are yeah, convexed. There you go. They're they're thick at the top, <laughs> thick at the and? bottom, and thicker in the middle. Are you shitting me, dude? They're, they're horrible. Like Magnifying glasses. Looks like, so you know when in cartoons when they take it off and their eyes are like the size of what? dude, they're awful. Yeah, I wear them all the time because it I don't have like a lens bowls. in my eye. Yeah. My depth perception is terrible. Like, yeah. if I had to drive to the store with him on, I mean, I could. He would drive through the it, store. It, it'd be better to not have my contacts. Son of a bitch. Hog? Who put the farm here? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a whole cow. It's, they're bad. They're yeah, bad. I, got a, I got another question they're from bad. the Discord group. Is uh, you ever blow up a public restroom? Oh, God, yes. I love the anonymity. And then, and then, oh, I love it. What, what, what's the story? How'd it go down? <laughs> One time I was in the... I mean, I, I blew. I fucking love taking huge dumps. But I remember one time, and I think I might have been with a, like, either you guys or not you, something to do with lifting. You guys. And I think it was a, oh shit, Cracker Barrel. And there was a busload of uh, Japanese tourists. <laughs> and so I sit in the, uh, in the, uh, and I just, uh, you know, just, and the guy outside, there's a bunch of them that goes, hi ya! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dude, I don't know if I, I remember to this, man. <laughs> yeah. I remember something about this very faintly. Yeah, I think we were driving to Pennsylvania. I think that oh was. Oh my uh, God, I remember that. Yeah, and I remember like fucking. It was so goddamn funny. Uh, but I love blowing up those bathrooms. I love in the in the. Uh, There's no the consequence. Airport. It's not like your yeah. house. There's no consequence. It just and it echoes. <laughs> See, I'm the complete opposite. Like, I lived in a, a one bed. Well, you know, my wife and I moved into, you know, when we first started living together, we we're in a one bathroom condo. And the, I, we always had the one rule we talked about like, you don't want to be the fat, smelly guy. Because <laughs> we all knew the fat, smelly guy in the gym. You mm -hmm. all knew. So, always deodorant, always really well, well yeah. washed. What's well, that got but to no. do with blowing up a bathroom? So, I'm going to say, so I would, I always, I was the king of the courtesy flush. I didn't want to oh, be yeah. the fat, smelly. I didn't want to oh, offend my wife. So, courtesy, even to the day, like it just became habit. Like so, if I you bring like a bass drum in there and a tuba, it's like. Listen, <laughs> I'm at, I was at. I was at. Uh, it was the drum in the London bathroom today, doing the courtesy flush. I'm like, ah, you well, know, the it courtesy just... flush is good, but that doesn't. So if you're fart audibles, do you feel uncomfortable it... in a public bathroom? Or do you, oh, yeah, you, I, you I, try to siphon your? I farts? restrain that. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god. I've never farted in front of my wife. 
33 years. Uh, I can't say maybe one or two has <laughs> squeaked out, but never purposely. Oh, I'll do it on purpose. Yeah, and I'm not like saying I'm better than anybody. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a complete dirt. No, bag. yeah, no, some, you're not. It's just something I don't do. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I'm very. I, I, I do the same thing, but yeah. I, I woke myself up farting a couple times, and I'm like, <laughs> I go, hey, oh, and she just starts to. <laughs> Or I'd be like, honey, was that you? <laughs> and it was it's so loud and massive that it just uh, it I, mean, I can say there's never been a <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well. You ever blow up a bathroom? Yeah. I, I don't have any particular story, but yeah, there's you just have you ever been in like a um, rest area or an airport bathroom? Matt's, Matt's bathroom with stories this are guy. different. <laughs> with Jim. Have you ever been in any of those bathrooms when he's in there? I've been in his living room, and he's like, hey, i got to take a uh, Grover so Cleveland. you've never been in a public bathroom while he's in there? Not that I know. I what probably would, would remember. What would the purpose of that be? Because it's a fucking airport. You, you, yeah, you, oh, you're, you're traveling. Yeah, right? yeah. I didn't know if you were on the same stuff. They'll together. embarrass <laughs> the fuck out of you, man. <laughs> Embarrass the yeah. shit out of you. He's in the stall grunting. My cousin, my, just take everything that you would do and take it times ten. My cousin Josh is like that. Oh my god, Josh, Josh, oh, yeah. dude, Dr. he'll Dorkin. call. He'll call your name. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, you, Dave, you hear that one? <laughs> boom, boom. I'm like, oh my god, you know. So here's my best p public bathroom story of all time. No, of all time. Though I haven't been. You were, with him on that. you were saving this one. Yeah, this is so. Uh, Kevin Deweese and I go. He was uh, the strength coach for the minor league baseball team in Lexington, Kentucky. So we go to their game. They got a minor league thing, a stadium where there's hard, there's no one there, basically. Uh, I there's go into the bathroom. Eight people and half of them are There's 15 uh, urinals. And there's one guy at like <laughs> urinal four, right? Right next to him. Right. I go right next to him. I pull my pants all the way down and just start peeing and just start farting as much as I can. <laughs> and Kevin, you know, Kevin's being courteous over there and he's... <laughs> This guy doesn't say a word. My pants are... <laughs> this guy was so uncomfortable. <laughs> Should have put your arm around him. That's right. Grab his ear. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Chap. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I oh. broke the bathroom. I told this story before. And I was in, in the... I was, no, no. I, I think it was at a meet. The I was, bathroom or many bathrooms? No, I legitimately... He's broken a few. I, uh, I was trying... So, because, you know, I'm not of great stature, you know... <laughs> 330 pounds with short arms, I'd have to wedge my arm to wipe. So I'd have to stand up. Oh, did you knock the wall down? I took the wall down. <laughs> I got my hand wedged behind my back, and the wall is on the other <laughs> toilet. It just <laughs> collapsed. My I'm, bad. I'm on my side, and I only wish there had been someone in the other stall. Like, the story would have been great if there was someone in the other stall. <laughs> that got crushed that just by got the wall. <laughs> and I'm like, and so the whole, the, so the, the thing separates, now it's wide open. I'm laying on my side. Maintenance to bathroom B. Maintenance. My, yeah, now I'm trying to stand up. Sit to Zenzo again. And I still have to, you know, finish. And the door's hanging. I'm trying to hold on to the door now for leverage because I don't want to take the other wall out. Meanwhile, you still have to wipe your ass. Yeah, the, I'm hanging on to the door, wedging my arm against the other wall, hoping that doesn't go down. <laughs> I took the whole stall down. It was fantastic. And no, I, that is, that's awesome. I only, that might be better than a fucking yeah, world record. I, 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 I love that story. For, I, again, I, the story, I wish the story, I wish there was someone in the other stall. It would have been fantastic. Yes. Like, how would you explain that? <laughs> I was I was in the bathroom. You should. What did you do? <laughs> you know, guy, what did you Next thing I know, there's a there's a wall on top of me. What's a fat guy with his arm jacked up behind his back? Why did you pull this wall on you? And you know when you were fat, like you, oh, you know, it's not yeah. like you couldn't get up or move quickly. Mm -hmm. And you're assessing damage. And hopefully, I, I did. Luckily, I didn't have feces all over myself. I mean, it was uh, it was it was it was classic. It was that was a good. You know, you're big. Like we, <laughs> I had big friends, and we were. Uh, uh, we were in Cancun, and then one of my friends sat down and broke the toilet. And we go to the front desk, <laughs> and he's like, "Yo, man, I broke the toilet." He goes, "Oh, he goes to hand him a plunger." He's like, "No, I I, I sat down. I broke." <laughs> he goes, "You broke the toilet?" <laughs> yeah, I sat and it cracked. It's crushed. Like we need another toilet or another room. <laughs> So I don't have the blow up stories. I have the I have the broken down stories. I, I ran into this situation just last week because it was a graduation, like a 
a parade, graduation parade. So they have the chairs sitting out there, right? So oh, no. out of all the years that we've had to like avoid chairs, I'm still paranoid, even at 250, <laughs> right? Plastic so you're looking at like, uh, yeah, can, uh, do you still have problems? Do you still, which chair, which chair how low is it? Am I going to fall into it? It's going to break. Well, is it going to break? Gonna yeah, break. Because for so many years of breaking them, chairs them. and then just saying, fuck it, I'll stand. <laughs> even now, if the chair is like a husky built chair, I'm like, man, you still have that? No, not anymore. Too so you got yeah. past the chair. Phobia? Yeah, no chair phobia. I did have a friend who was 370. We were at a car show and we, he had gotten a pizza and he's sitting and eating the <laughs> pizza on his lap and the chair collapsed and he landed with his legs out in front of him, still sitting up, not falling back, and he just stayed there. <laughs> Just for like five kidding. minutes eating the pizza <laughs> and then just got up because he's like it was just such a scene and he wasn't about to scramble and make it worse like like this was meant to happen i've got this under control and he stayed there it was it was well, he's like where am i going from here yeah i was, got a backrest it was fantastic it was it's it was a good one he's a big dude the yeah. worst the worst situation for me was if you're in the driver's side and somebody pulls up like curbside <laughs> And you're on that fucking, that would make me so fucking mad, right? Because you're in a low car to begin with. Oh, I know what you're saying. And yeah. you you can't get out. Yeah, you, you, know, have, to, you have to. You have so to, now you got to explain, like, you, dude, this isn't going to work. Yeah, you got an army roll out. Yeah. My father-in-law, he had he had gotten a little big, like and a, my wife and I played a little prank on him and <laughs> put a put a, a sign on, a win, on the side window. Please do not park close to me. I'm fat and can't get out of the car. <laughs> I wrote the sign. His sweet little daughter is the one who put it on the window. Oh, my God. Yeah, because someone saw it was like a meme or something. Someone actually had it on their window in their car. Like, please do not park close to me. I'm overweight, and I need the room to get out. Yeah. And so we put it on, one on his car. It was... Fat, when did, when did fat you, shaming works, by the yeah. way. Yeah. When did you realize this is actually pretty cool not to be 300 pounds? I still haven't. I, I liked being big, man. I you was, flew, I was less, flew out, right? I was less, less self-conscious at 330 pounds than I am now. But you, you flew out, right? You, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I flew yeah. Out. Oh, so yeah. like the airplane seat has oh, to be man, I miss, I, when they, I miss the cart hitting me in the elbow. I miss being a scene. I miss being my you own know, You scene. know what you are? You're the like, guy that gets on and everyone's looking up like, fuck me, you better not be sitting I next told to me, story. fatty. We flew southwest, my brother and I. My brother was a very big dude, and we were going to Vegas, and we were all the way in the back row, and there was a seat between us, and they said, please put everything. The fl flight is completely booked. We saw, I sat on the uh, on the aisle, and he sat in the, so there's about a <laughs> half a foot in the seat between us, and we kept seeing people, because southwest there were no seats. Yeah, yeah. They were walking back and they would turn around and someone didn't fly because no one sat between us <laughs> i loved that i loved being the circus i love i i, I missed i love slopping over and up oh, sorry you know you're half over on the other seat on top mm -hmm. of somebody there's no p feeling terrible like be always being tired that's that i feel good now but i think i was more happy then <laughs> you definitely were i think i was you more happy were. like in a great life but man it was I, I love being big, I love being strong, and I loved eating. You know? And the best part is you didn't take so many selfies back then. I didn't have a kid. Well, phones weren't a thing. Well, you God. certainly weren't taking ab shots. Yeah, I, but I had no shame in my game. I didn't take my I had no problem taking the my clothes off. The best was when you still had quad going. Oh, my belly button? Oh, I got... I, the belly I, button hernia. I was that would stick out. It looked like a fist in his stomach. I was... Oh. I, yeah, it, was, it wasn't as bad as Mike's. Big Mike's, But I, yeah. I weighed in... You at, had a quad I didn't know you had Oh, a yeah, it was a good one. I was uh, weighing in... That at, was a good one. I, was, I thought I was going to make 308 at a contest, and I knew I was close. So I, like, I weighed in. I think it was like a... a Zane McCaslin meter son and so I just get in and I take everything off because I even underwear because you know that's going to weigh so much and like I, they're this big. I was like 315 he goes I had to see that for 315 you weren't even close yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't care like this doesn't matter to me I'm like I look awesome mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it was a, that is, it's, there's no regret in that time I mean you know I, I love the things I do now but I was like I think I love to eat like it's it's it was a very self destruct it's like I'm sure you'll talk to a lot of, you know, ex drug addicts, you know, who are sober now who romanticize like, yeah, I really wish I was still able to take drugs. There are lots of people like, yeah, alcoholics, man, I'd love to have a drink. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I miss eating 
till my heart's content. I miss going to McDonald's every day. I miss all of that. But you know, it, we can't we just can't do everything we want in life. But I well, Jim made a great comment yesterday. I think before right before we picked you up, there's not many five ten, two hundred and forty pound guys that are seventy. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things that because I'm down, I'm about two sixty five right now, and um, I'm thinking. I was about 250 during the fall because I was stressed out getting things organized. But I, my body felt better. So and I'm thinking, too, the heart, the joints with the Marfans and just the, the hip itself and all that, just starting to just chip away a pound or two and just get down to a more manageable yeah. weight that could create longevity for my life. What are you now? About 265. About 265. My dad... When he, uh, he had an uh, esophagectomy, and my dad at his heaviest was two hundred, like two between two twenty, two forty, somewhere on there. Not you know, not a tall guy, and uh, you know, always kind of worked out. But you know, you nobody's you, at that weight. You know, if you're not a, a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, you know, you're not. In, <laughs> yeah, you're not looking. Yeah. Right. So uh, when he had, he lost weight from cancer, and then he had the esophagectomy, and they're like, oh, you're gonna lose. You know, he had already gotten down, like was down to like one hundred and seventy pounds. We're like, all right, you're gonna lose like t- another. 30% of your body weight. He's like, yeah, I lost 30. No, they're like, no, you're going to lose another 30% of your body weight. So my dad now is under 120 pounds. Holy shit. He is 84. He is a double cancer survivor. He was in the ICU for three weeks. He came out of that. He's had COVID. He, I call him Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a testament to his weight. Yeah. And my father's someone who never sits still. Yeah. He, my father, exercise. You know, he has the, uh, uh, he used to do the forever, the Chuck Norris home gym thing. Yeah. That, he would bang away on okay. that thing. He's not able to do that as much, but he's always active. He's, you know, he's taking himself everywhere. He's doing, you know, grocery shopping, whatever it is. Mm. And you can't tell me if he was 200 pounds, he would have lived through yeah. all of that. Yeah. You know, there's like, something to be said. And again, for activity and ultimately, you know, I want to carry a certain amount of muscle. I want to look good. I want to be around. But we, we, you get to a stage where you're like, there's a lot of people I trained with and competed with who are my age, who aren't here anymore, who, you know, Mike Wolf yeah. can't, uh, COVID took some people out. Like, and that's ultimately, you know, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'd love to eat McDonald's every day and I'd love to have Popeyes every night and what have you, but I also want to be around. So yeah. it's, it's about everything in life is about balance. Mm-hmm. And that's, you yeah, know, when, when I look back to, you know, the training partners I had just from high school moving forward, the ones that were closer to me, most are dead. Yeah. You know, and um, now for all, a lot of different reasons, you know, not from, I mean, some are drug overdoses. Right. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of different reasons with that. What I can say, you know, to your point is I chipped that 10 pounds each year. And when I got under 260, I, I kept constant joint pain. It's all it's there all the mm-hmm. time. Once it got under that like, like two fifty five, two sixty range, fifty percent of it went away. Yeah. And now the major shit's still the major shit, but all right. the other stuff now I don't know if that's just the inflammation from the other shitty food I was having or what it's gonna be. But but being overweight it, itself well, causes inflammation. This yeah. is a great quote from Dave yeah. in two thousand and two. We were in Tucson, and we were staying at that one of the sh- shitty hotels for a seminar. <clears throat> and I remember Dave saying one time, GPP is a lot of times just a matter of your body weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I know if I stripped off whatever, 60 pounds, I would be able to do anything. And it's like when I first realized it was good to be light was I was in an airport. I used to visit Mason all the time, and sometimes a flight would be delayed. Back in the old days, we'd be like, where's our fucking gate? Oh, shit. <laughs> now I'm like, dude, I got to go walk. And I would just walk the entire airport, just fucking, you know, That's with the backpack on, fucking just, it looks like I'm angry as hell, but yeah. I'm so pumped up. And I was so excited to be able to do shit that I've always been able to kick ass at, you know? And so that was, to me, it's like, that's worth everything. Yeah, right? now kicking ass, you're kicking ass at being alive. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's just a huge difference, too, because it's. I'll do, you, do you remember yeah. the Swiss conference in Canada? I couldn't get to the. 
Yeah, that was one of the. Yeah, that was a. That should have been an eye opener, but I had another. <laughs> six there years. were so many other stories yeah. associated yeah, that reminded anyway, us from that. I'm no, sorry. but that that was a good one though. That that, that was fucking funny, man. You know, I, I. There's so many stories there. I swiped all these bands, you know, from the warehouse to sell there, and. <laughs> this know, was the very first Swiss. The very first Swiss, and yep. Jim and I are sitting there because we don't know what we're doing, and we got a folding table, like Looks, the brown one. There's no cover. It's about three quarters of this there, there's no half. booth right <laughs> everybody else has got these booths man we just yeah. got this you got a card table we're spit yeah. cups <laughs> right and cups fucking all bands and shit thrown all over the table and fortunately somebody comes up and says how much for all of it and yeah 380 <laughs> right and then it's like okay we got strip club money <laughs> right <laughs> then, then, then we go to the fucking strip club and Ed Cohn gets on my ass because I'm tipping the girls 20, American 20s back then. <laughs> Basically, they're like, dude, you're an idiot. Yeah. You know, you go exchange the money. Yeah. Uh, this just went on for fucking two days. Just like the, oh, There's no way we were going to perceive anything other than that. But just no. moving. Oh. Well, oh my God, I remember walking to that fucking restaurant, that Gretzky's so, place. Yeah, so we go, uh, we meet up with Martin and that whole MMA st you know, crew. So they're all like, fucking retarded shape and they're like hey we're gonna go to was it Kretzky's it's down the street whatever I'm like well how long is it <laughs> like yeah I'm like he's like oh it's like a half mile or something it was like a more than a mile Did you take a cab no but I couldn't walk yeah the my, stop, my back breaks. was so pumped oh, yeah. up and I was in so much pain that when I got there I just laid on the floor I had to yeah. teach him how to walk like a meat fucking sweating and Martin's like what's the big deal and like they fucking ran there probably did burpees on the way there <laughs> I mean I'm on the fucking floor just dripping and I didn't even want to eat I like loved was, watching. I loved so bad. Loved watching Matt get to that point because I had that first <sighs> point. Because after you hit a weight and you go back down, then you hit it again. It's not that bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was at a world strongest man at the casino, and like I legitimately, I that's when I was like close to three twenty, and I had to stop every like every place I could to rest on something. Like any kind of garbage can was my friend. <laughs> any kind of like oh, yeah. you know anywhere I could lean. So I, and you're sweating. And you're doing the the the, the blow back fat man. Walk. Well, you plot your course. Yeah, like you're I looking. Mean, okay, yeah. I'm gonna zig over here, and and then to watch Matt when he because as he was gaining weight because I I was terrible. Yeah, you got to gain yeah. weight. You're too, you know mass moves mass get bigger and you know you just want someone else to be in the same hell that you are. And I I just see him suddenly start like just beating up with sweat and barely being able I'm like yeah well you don't want to teach him the tricks either you don't want to teach him <laughs> no, you how to plot the course so <laughs> just go this we love company yeah you it's want it. the, the one in Vegas I think it's, <laughs> is I'm hurting and I didn't put on boxers that day so I had on like athletic shorts and a t-shirt and flip flops and I'm I'm in one of those modes I'm leaning on something I'm Panting. leaning over and it, it's like my ass is facing the, it's the Hooters casino yep. I think right yes it was and I'm faced my ass is facing the whole casino and he just pulls my pants down and I'm like it's the fastest I moved it that way <laughs> and, it, and it down. wasn't yeah. fast it really he I, thinks I, it was fast it was probably you know most of us would get down there like legitimately like you're, it was probably 15, 20 seconds because he had to hitch to both sides. It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and he's like, he's he's I grabbed, showing the buffalo to the whole <laughs> oh, yeah. place. And I pulled the pan. I'm like, I'm gonna kill you. I, I have a heart attack, you fat bastard. And he's walking away fast. I'm, and I'm waddling, walking after wheezing, him, yeah. crying, <laughs> laughing, crying, laughing. I'm, just, I hope you die, you fat, fat screaming at me, you fat bastard. What are the That's awesome when you're in your position, though. Oh, and Jess, because it's so he had, funny. He had like 12, fucking rookies. He had 12 <laughs> steps on me. He had 12 <laughs> steps on me. There's no way I would have caught him. And then Jessica, she was, the, she was my blocker for the rest of the trip. She just stood in front behind me, so he couldn't pants me because we, we knew he was after me. What is this? Is this yours? Yeah. You want it? Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. What does that say on there? It's uh, It's good. Elegant. It's grapefruit. It's, which one is it? Grapefruit. It's, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. But yeah, we've we've shared that story. But that that's one of my favorite moments, Matt. We've had a lot. Like, that was in Vegas. That was yeah. in Vegas. I was doing. I was competing Europa, at the right? uh, the Europa or the no, that was the Olympia. I was, was at the I think the Olympia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is but, there Olympia still? Like, is there still an expo there anymore? I think so. Is there? Uh, Where I was going with all this before I got <laughs> side railed is <clears throat> I do these clinics every now and again where I'll bring people out to train. 
and it's like 20 hours over two days and it's uh, basically i do what you guys do like a strength coach for fucking two days so i'm a pretend strength coach and it's <laughs> fucking exhausting man, oh. because you're screaming at people you're yelling and um if i don't have like i have to prepare myself before these happen if i don't push my steps up to like 10 15 000 steps per day it's insane how into much you it, put in then i got to deload the week beforehand just to fucking recover or it will wipe my ass out it's it's hard to to i've i've put my step counter on during a day of coaching what do you got uh so now this was this is skewed Mm because it was covid and i had six football groups plus running uh it was like twenty one thousand steps now keep in mind when you're doing that you're carrying weights around and shit too right so a lot of that's loaded carries and if i if i'm heavy like if i'm over that 250 (laughs) i'm fucked if my steps aren't there i'm fucked you know everything's on one time i really peaked for it and i was able to do two in a row (laughs) right and i'm like holy shit like conditioning kind of matters it was like this wake-up call and then otherwise i'm like fuck i can only do like one and not the other mm-hmm. but and then when you're but you also add the mental stress that's what i was right. gonna say and then the, the mental stress on top of the physical stress you get home at night and you're just like that's why i used to hate when we do those and then we'd have the training so we do those on yeah. a saturday and train on sunday i'm like because you catch half the guys laying back disappearing not spotting not loading because i don't think people realize when they come out and i'm not even like you know this is a plug for when you do it yeah. is how much effort the people who are there to help put into oh, it yeah. because that's legitimately would be harder than a meet for me. Cause I'm, I'm actually doing the lifts, you know, showing examples, you know, you're coaching every, cause you know, they're put people pay good money for this stuff. Oh yeah. You're coaching every lift, you're spotting, you're loading. And then you see half the crew, like drinking water over in the corner BS. And I'm like, yeah, now I got to train tomorrow. So that's why I used to love when you just do, when you do the pure underground strength because it'd be nice for the. It's just a chill thing. It's just yeah. chill and trained. But to do both together, I was always miserable. Well, when you're just, when you're pushing them and they're doing hard weight, and probably like the guy you were working with today, you're kind of doing every set with them, right? right? So mentally, mentally you're like mentally, fucking you're right you're shot, right? And then it's like that's why I don't train during those things either. It's like mm-hmm. what what's what is the point? Yeah, you know I can't. You, you can't. Uh, what is the old? You can't scrimmage with your players. Yeah. That's what uh, I heard an old strength coach say one time. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but <clears throat> I remember the first day I was at Kentucky, uh, I had just not been working those hours and in that kind of intent. I remember just being so fucking exhausted, <laughs> so exhausted. Then after you know a week, you're fine, but the amount of it's almost like you have to learn. This sounds really bad. You can't care a ton all the time. You got to learn how to just ride the, that doesn't mean you don't care, Yeah. but you can't get so wrapped up. And that's what you learn with coaching. Obviously, like you learn how to temper it. It's hard. Cause I only have usually at the most, like during COVID, we had like three groups or something like that. But you know, I only trained at most two groups in a day and uh, it's still exhausting, man. Mm-hmm. That's why with teaching, uh, like I talk, you know, with Matt, like he's, coaching all day and like it's there's not a lot of jobs where you, you just legitimately legitimately can't go pee if you have to yeah like okay all right you so it's just all day you're on it's a, when you first start like you're wow when it's performative too you're like you're exhausted you really you know you know you at the end of the day you're you're really really during spent. one of my workouts i put my uh not steps it was how long i walked you know how the london weight was not huge mm-hmm. and i paced so much it was a mile and a <laughs> half in one group i'm just, I can, I can I'm just fucking yeah. yeah you know yep. and uh you're on the prowl Oh God, I get so wrapped up and stuff, and just start getting crazy. About I thought it. they looked good today. I, and what did yeah, you say I, you gave I, them percentage-wise? I'm we're about forty percent of where we should be. Wow, and I, I really, when I looked, they I all just, looked, you know, over I, what time though? I mean, forty percent of what you want them to be come the season? No, forty percent of what I think would be uh, where I like the, the highest standard. Oh, okay, we're okay, never going to okay. get very yeah, close yeah. just because there's so many people in there, and, and mm-hmm. it's just so, very difficult to at this time of year. What is the best percentage you would expect or want? So forties right now. What you overall you'd want? Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, how, but you're, this, you're you're thinking of you're, what you're thinking of is not exactly 
what I'm saying. Um, it has nothing to do with the time period we're in. It's not like we're going to build up. Oh, really? No. It's just uh, because where they are is where they are, if that makes sense. And I don't know if we've ever been. Like, if when I, after this metabolic stuff that we're doing with Elijah, you know, we're going to morph into something. It's going to be, you know, 90% of where I want it to be. And this right. is, like, where I want to be. And, but that's uh, just him. So he's, like, a test subject for what you Yeah, he's, about. you know, he's, I'm tell, like, he's the kind of kid that, like, if you want to, like, hey, you want to test Olympic lifting? Like, oh, I can <laughs> fucking try this. He's, all right, I'll, you know, pull everything You're going to go run a so. marathon before you lift it. Okay, crazy. Yeah, yeah. and, yeah, you'd figure it out. So, but, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not the kid's fault. And, and it's no. not... I'm not, it's obviously my responsibility, but like what I envision, like the perfect training session with the perfect, all that stuff, it's just, you know, it's hard to do. Rose, and, what would uh, you put your kids, like if you looked at your kids compared to like, let's just say. My kids compared to his? Yeah. Oh, horrible. 10%. They're 10%. Horrible. Uh, yeah. Because from it, the naked eye, for me looking yeah, at them, I'm like, and, these kids were all doing what they, I didn't see any, you know what it is? I didn't see any, the lifting might have been one thing. I didn't see any, I didn't see any horsing around. Yeah. You know, I didn't well, see any. Yeah, that yeah. will not be, that is not. Yeah. Well, I've tolerant. got to tell you, you're probably way ahead of 99% yeah. of yeah. strength and conditioning in high schools yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. we're and That's a high bar you have there, yeah. which and is good. Yeah, you know, The thing that I've learned is, and Kyle was a big thing, is uh, I remember our first like year or something i you know, i was like kyle you know what this you know i want this and this and he goes then put it out there man i guarantee you they're gonna rise yep and i you know i was like i'm kind of reluctant about it and sure enough i after i said it fucking done it was like i had to say it one time and it was perfect yeah. so the best part is most of those juniors and seniors have been through all this shit so they start coaching that what they you know the yeah. expectations and stuff and especially when we do our gymnastic stuff oh my god i don't coach a fucking thing <laughs> i just sit there and let the seniors coach everything yeah. and it's brutal because <laughs> you know because uh i think part of it is they're trying to learn how to be leaders and i think that's super important because it's hard to be a leader when you're young like we talk about all this stuff but man they're 16 17 yeah. years old they you know they're still learning their way in the yeah. world yeah. so yeah. see so, like my i'm at a point where i haven't even had a full year yet when when football camp starts on August 1st, that'll be the beginning of year two. Right. So they're still learning. I don't have hands on all the kids all the time. During the school year, I don't have a team first period. I have a bunch of kids from different teams. So you don't have, like, the football culture in the weight room or the volleyball culture. It's this class one which could be everywhere from freshman or sophomore, like cross country kids to senior football players. So in a couple of years, you'll have so, seniors that can. Yeah. Well, in theory, yes. Um, but the, where I think it, it is always going to be hard where I am is because I've got football for like six weeks in the summer as a group. And that's it. If those kids even show up. Right. Yeah. You know, we got kids that want to win and, you know, 27 show up. There's like 53 on the roster. But. You, what no, the hope is back in a, where Dave was when yeah, he was a kid. in a couple of years yeah. you yeah. hope that it's you know, snowballs. We made yeah, it snowballs in the right direction. Um and then the the better the kids understand how I want things done, they've improved tremendously. But compared to Jim's kids, they're horrible. Right. You know, so seeing that today yeah. was good for me because it's like, okay, here's a couple things that I can clean up and that I probably need to look at a little bit more. Um, what are what are those things? Well, it's I, I and I don't know how to do it. Like our kids are very um, it, the weight room to most of them, not all, most is like it's punishment, and so they don't look at it as like okay, this is part of practice. It's like oh, I got to lift, and it's not. They don't. They, don't, they don't approach it like they're improving. They don't equate it to them having success yes. in a given sport. Yes. Do you know what's funny? Real so. quick is when you, today, uh, <clears throat> my wife and uh, you guys, like every time I go in, I'm fucking angry as hell. Just so mad. <laughs> and he's like, well, why are you doing this? Do you, you, do, you know, do you think it's just you need to give back? And I was like, no, I, I love to do it. I love to do it. But mm -hmm. what's even better and it goes back to what Dave said, you know, your roots are in powerlifting, ours, at least mine's with sports and stuff, is there's nothing better on a Friday night and beating the living shit out of another team. To me, that is the greatest. It makes everything awesome. Yes. And I always tell the kids when they're, like today during the Prowler, and we did all low handles for three laps, and the kids were just, and I looked at them like, you're going to thank me. 
you know, maybe not for a couple of years, <laughs> but, yeah. and I always say, you know, so it, to me, there's nothing better than it's, you know, 35, nothing in the first quarter. And you're like, motherfucker, this is, you know, yeah. it's a great feeling. Yeah. Fourth yeah. quarter, in fourth quarter, the other team's got their hands on their knees. <laughs> yeah. And you're yeah. 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 Smiling. Yeah. Fucking smoking a butt, you know? Yeah. 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 So the starters are, are all sitting on the so sideline <laughs> and the freshmen are mopping up. <laughs> so when you say you don't know how to re, re, redefine you know that punishment thing you got two people here that can tell you how to do that well the thing is he, his kids need an example of success so like hey we know we've had this really good year and now oh why did we have it well the kids that did really well lifted oh okay so could you he needs that example could you record one of jim like i don't you know the whole thing with students and you know who can be recorded but can you show a video of what you want a session to look like with the kids uh, I probably could. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's. Like, it, it took us a long time no, to get but anywhere. You just, the thing is, is we got very lucky. My first senior class, thousand percent in. Like, they had yeah. like a, a a knife in their mouth when they right. came in. You know, their yeah. faces were painted. Yeah. So I was very lucky, and I'm. I'm. That's to me. That is the most important class we've ever had by far. And I because they didn't have to believe in me. They had a horrible year. You know what I'm saying? But like, the kids are very visual. Kids are very yeah. visual. If you show them, this is what the weight room should look like. This is this is what you should all look mm -hmm. like. You there's no no fluff. You're you're there's no nobody. There's no wasted motion. There's no wasted talking. This very training centric. Mm -hmm. And for them to see an example of that, I mean, because like, a lot of kids are just they just don't know. They just don't know any better. And and again. Maybe it only works for one or two kids, but yeah. the one or you, yeah. if you keep building on, you, now, listen, you have I have some kids that do well. Don't you, get me of wrong. Course. Don't get me wrong. Of course. But I'm not worried about those. I'm worried about the, like the bigger group and getting more people on board and understanding. Well, I think what he's saying is how can you yeah. get those kids to, to spread it? Yeah. Right, and the, you, the more tools, it's like with training, the more tools you have in your toolbox, yeah. you might only get a couple kids with that video. You might get a couple yeah. kids with some kind of positive reinforcement. You know, before you know it, then you got, you, you know, you have 24 kids, you, you got the four or five who are good, you got a couple who are mediocre. You bring, before you know it, you're, you, now, you've brought, now you've brought it up to 12 good kids. You know what I always w thought would be cool to do is in your weight room having, I don't know, th four or five big screen TVs and pipe in the old Bulgarian training hall thing or like, somehow compile a two-hour video of dudes lifting weights and training and stuff i think that would be awesome when i'm on the and I'm, I'm talking like you know from power lifters to football players to yeah. guys you know doing whatever just yeah. a massive like a training, montage yeah massive just compilation of crazy mm -hmm. shit and i think i would even when i you know of course i was like a love of all this stuff i would be like oh my god look at that guy he's 150 pounds he's clean and jerking you know 400 holy shit you know, i have a, my treadmill in the basement like when i don't want to i don't like running in my basement you yeah know? but sometimes because it's one of those curved treadmills it's really you know it runs on yeah. your own power it's, you it's, have one here right Dave? Mm -hmm. they're right. amazing for my back i'm gonna try that thing i i but for me i like to run outside because once i'm halfway out you have to come back i have to come back and if i <laughs> yeah. i'm like That's i'm like point. i can walk but then it's gonna take me twice as long yeah so I'm like, I just want to, I just want to be done. So for me, it's painful when I have to do those sessions in the basement, but I, I put on, on YouTube, I throw on CrossFit cause I'm like, dear God. And I, I, I I'm in, I, I find CrossFit, I love to see how they challenge themselves, but it's not so much I want to be fit. Are you talking about like the games or something? Yeah. Cause okay. I'm just seeing these people. I'm like, dear God. Like just they they just keep going. I'm like I, I'm I'm running you know a, a 12 minute mile. There's no there's no excuse that I can't do this for an hour. So it's like kind of that motivational thing on the screen, like you know of athletes playing their sport hits or whatever. Yeah, I mean any I've, any I have you can find thought, to motivate. I've, I've thought about doing stuff like that, and maybe I will. It just it's a lot. I think. <sighs> I think our kids are still at a point where they would stop and watch the TV instead of working out. <laughs> well, I'm serious. Like it's a, it's amazing that no, all of our teams had a winning record this year. That's, a, that's yeah, awesome. That's awesome. You're part of that but, success. We, you yeah. are. You were there yeah. for the year. You're part of the success. And, but it's it's they don't. It's weird. Like so, our football team hosted a home playoff game for the first time in I don't know seven or eight years, and they had a five and five regular season record. And they're hosting a home playoff game. And kids are like, is football any good this year? It's like, yeah, we're hosting a home playoff game. Oh, well, like, what? it's like they don't, there's no pride in, 
their school. It seems, it seems, it, it's like they, they, they're used to being, I mean, honestly, they're used to being losers and they don't know how to come out of that because if you try to come out of it, you might fail. But if you don't try, you definitely fail kind of thing. It's like, they're afraid to try hard. It's like, they're afraid to come in sometimes and be really focused and be really good because they might struggle at it at first, or they might then be held to that same standard all the time. Grade yourself, and, grade yourself as a strength and conditioning coach. You know, the your first year at Moorhead compared to your oh, last way year. better to compare way to your better. last year at Moorhead. Oh yeah, w way better. So it's it's not yeah. necessarily about the kids. Well, yeah, I know, I know it's on me. I know that. Yeah, no, and I'm yeah. not even saying that in a yeah. bad way. And you said they had a successful year, so yeah. take that yeah. that with you. But yeah. be just open. Well, it is. Be well, open. I am. I know it's on me. It's I have to work through what I think are maybe the the downfalls or whatever, and figure out how to approach those. Yeah. You know, you get it. You get it. Kids that want to win, for instance, they all, they all tell you they want to win. But then they don't feel like going to practice today. It's like, well, that what does that have to do with anything? Right. How do I, like, I got to figure that out so that I can figure out how to try to help, if that makes sense. Totally. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm still in that process of communicating with a college kid is way easier than a high school kid. And part of the biggest problem is, like, even when I've I dabbled in which, why I would never coach anybody. Like I have people ask, well, you train me to coach me. I'm like, there's only one person who can afford me. And it's my wife because I'll care about it more than you will. And oh, I yeah, just, I, and yeah. I, that's the biggest yeah. problem I think with any one of us yeah. is that we care. There's nobody that cares about, I care more about your success than you do. And that's a really rough place to start from. You're more, you own it more than they do for the, you know, 100%. For, for a lot of them and that for most of them, honestly, that, and for that's most why I give you guys, I can't do that. Yeah. Like with lifting, like, cause yeah. we're so far beyond that beginner level and, mm -hmm. you know, from the, from the psych psychology of it to the actual physical portion, like, and so I can't even set my brain there. And I, I truly like, I'm astounded when that, when that's one of the, re like we were talking about a, a while ago is like, I think that the communication portion I have to get better at X's and O's doesn't, they don't need anything fancy. Yeah. It's learning how you to, don't even really have to change that as much no, as you like to I, tinker with yeah, it. Yeah. I never have to look at that again, ever. Like yeah. really in the grand scheme of things, I never have to look at it again. Um, but it's learning how to teach them the why I want this with our main lifts and why we're doing this and why we don't do that many exercises and what I'm looking for. And all those little things is just learning how to communicate it on their level in a way that's easily understandable. Yeah. Because I they don't, you know, you can sit and quote, well, this is why we train in this percentage range. Da, 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 da. They uh, okay, can't lift heavy. <laughs> well, you can't lift heavy because your form sucks. <laughs> this is heavy and, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's real it, heavy. You know, <laughs> Take a look at your form. <laughs> you know, it, it, isn't that crazy, Dave, that magically when they do the correct weight, their form's pretty good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. everyone's like, what? You know, what happened to my sports? I have like, form breakdown. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's too heavy. It's too heavy. Yeah. 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 I know what would cure that. Yeah. <laughs> Light in the way. Yeah, sometimes it's just too heavy. <laughs> but I, sometimes. What, I, yeah. what I have found, though, is when, when you watch people squat and they're like, that's not a good sign. That's no. that's too heavy of a weight. And I'm not talking for power. I'm no, like, I get it. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like you should... I think yeah. their stance goes from here, 135, 285. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Depth. <laughs> the little stuff, like I'll sit there like, right, upper back round hey, Dave. You got to go lower so they move their feet wider. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they do that all the time. I'm like, that's they find, your knees. They find depth with their nose. <laughs> yeah. Just go yeah. Lower. Don't lean for it. But with 531, this is where I had to like take it, which, which I still follow. That's like the core of my lifting where I had to kind of veer off is preaching the low training max. That was for me. That was killing me because when I'm getting up into the reps of 15 to 20. Well, that's why you cap them. Right. But then I don't feel I don't enjoy that. So and you have to find a way. Yeah, right. right. So I've lowered. So I, I, I get I've increased the weight and I've lowered the reps and I make sure they're still 
Yeah, there's good there's, reps. There's so a, there's other ways around it. I'll teach you. But I, yeah, and I and I the thing that's where you know you get to a point where you just have to. You, Again, everybody's are you still th- do five. Th- I'm like, yeah, the core, it is. Yeah. It's it, it's what it is. But I, the one thing I've learned about what you did is you give a basic. You have some books with a lot of you have a lot of books with with great prescriptions. But you also you could just take the basic tenets of it. Yeah, that's what. I, that's all. If you saw what we do on bench day, you're like, well, that doesn't look like the program. I'm like, right. Yes, it is. I just morphed it. So people are like, well, you're not doing five, <laughs> but but I am. I I took the tenets of it and it's probably taken me how long have I been doing it where where I'm no longer I'm no longer keeping track of my assistants yeah I I'm just I if I do this way I'm doing this many sets I don't care how many reps or how many I'm just I only have one main lift everything else that day is assistance and it I just do it yeah well the older I get like our kids have to push their assistants because Louis I think. I think this got lost in a lot of what Louie was saying is uh, we talked about this, but that main lift is definitely a little bit lower because it's taxing. Mm-hmm. You're lifting now, you know, four days a week and, and doing all that stuff. And you really have to push the assistance. Then as you get older, <laughs> like that assistance has to be less, but it has to be done in such a way to make sure you don't lose a lot of stuff. But that yeah. <clears throat> everything gets taxing then. Right. Uh, well, with- so it's, it's very funny how, uh, the principles for the main lift kind of stay the same. And then, you know, after that, you kind of have to, um, you know, even like when Lou was really hurt, uh, he would do so much assistance. It was insane. And it's like, well, this is the only thing that's going to keep my, my strength up. Uh, so I don't just, uh, it's, it, like we were talking today, how everything kind of has the same, uh, the same principles can be applied to just about any program and people's like to nitpick on the stuff and all I see is the same thing I'm doing. I just see it in a I'm not saying this is me like being a right. I just see it at a bigger level. I'm like, oh it's you know, it's the same training program as X, Y, and Z. Where I get screwed up I think coming from the conjugate west side to like then going to five three one is supplemental drove a lot of your mm-hmm max effort work so you you know you, you some people like supplemental to me was always a little different than assistance you, you're, you're yes. keeping track of your supplemental yeah. yeah so what happened when i'd go over to five that when you're doing amrap you don't have to worry about the supplemental no that is your supplement right and so but i was constantly keeping score on my assistance like it was supplemental True, and that's recover. where i drove myself into the ground and it's taken me 10 years yeah. of my body just slowly giving out and being like wait a second like, it's all systemic now, like, now all i get it fit. yeah you know the it's a hard the, lesson to learn the other thing that i think people need like when you're a competitive athlete or whatever you are like you have, uh, and you're usually in better shape, you're younger, you have all these advantages. When you get older, you can only do one thing. That's I tell Kyle, our head coach, like, dude, you got one thing today that yeah. you can do hard. Doesn't mean you can't train and, and have fun and all that stuff, but like, just give me one thing that's really, that I don't care what it is. And uh, he always fights it. And then after like three weeks, oh my God, I should have. I'm like, just do one thing, <laughs> kick ass today. And then let's, you know, I hate to say mail it in, but uh you do it's, it's the other the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I'll, I'll see the opposite end of that. So the, the hack that I've done, if I start somebody on, you know, a block and it's five sets of five, I just put out five sets of five and let them pick the weight because they're going to do it anyhow. No matter what I put it, yeah. they're going to do it anyhow. Week two is 20% less of week one because <laughs> I know what they're going <laughs> to oh, do. That's, it mind fucks them, right? But now I know. Okay, do they that, actually follow that? Yeah. All right. Because now, now I'm at where I they should have started from, <laughs> right? And but because they always, engineered yeah. It. <laughs> now your people that wouldn't work, right? Because they're gonna be they're on already the, so the other low. end. It's, so, it's too low. But they, they wouldn't even that. get through five sets. Like mm-hmm. you'll get, like you, and you've seen this. You'll get a kid that let's say their bench is one seventy five. They'll start with one thirty five, and they'll go right to one seventy five and miss it. And it's like. Five sets, guys. How about we start with 95, and then we yeah. put on 115, and then we do 135, and then we do 155, and bingo, 20-pound jumps up to 175. Right? For us, that's a super simple, sure. obviously, but it's, it's crazy that it, I think you, we talked a couple weeks ago. You said, yeah, you let them work up, and it was a nightmare. It's like, and you, you were saying, like, guys, do I ever have you make jumps like that? Yeah. You know, you give them a little. So for me, it's like um, you have to, like, I have a sheet that 
literally tells them every weight they should, whatever their number is for the day, their weight for the day is. It literally it tells them every single set they should do to get there because they'll they'll screw it. They up. all want to start at one thirty five. Well, I, I get that. But you're not at that level. Yeah, yeah. Your first you're, set you is 145. Need, <laughs> you need to start yeah. at 65. Yeah. And that's okay. Because eventually you will start at 135. It, but it, it, they don't... The idea of, of making logical jumps to prepare yourself well, for that the, top set... It, the and that's the stronger just, you get, the smarter uh, you get, and then you, the less ego you have because the kids don't want to... I, I was like that too. Huh. Uh, I hated having to put uh, on the bench, having to put 25s hey. on when I was like in college and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, yeah, I'll, we'll stick with the 25s for yeah, a couple I, need to, I, got I, was, I got no yeah. shame in the game. I yeah. swear to God, I was just thinking in my head, one of the hardest things I've had to do is like, yeah, everything was a quarter plate. And now I'm like, oh. I love 10s and 5s. <laughs> I'm like, now, now. I, got, yeah. I got a 10, a 5, a 2 and a half. Wait, I, I do have the fractional one and a quarter. I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh, man. And, again, like, and that's not the It's humbling. Like, they you're don't like, know yet. Yeah. You're like, Fuck, I used a tsunami bar for the first couple sets. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Can we reverse band the barbell? Reverse band. <laughs> bar. reverse. I like how you work the reverse chains. I was yeah, yeah, very yeah, impressed yeah. with the reverse chains. Yeah. Dave finally yeah. figured out the reverse chain bench. When, when you retire from teaching next year, what are you going to miss the most? Nothing. <laughs> I love, I actually, yeah, it's a lie because people are like, what are you going to do? I'm like, nothing. I, I love my job. I love the kids. I hate paperwork i hate bureaucracy i hate everything about the politics uh, how mm -hmm. how education has become politicized it's really none of anything that's talked about in politics is going on in the schools if it is it's very very fringe very few people know what's going on in schools except the people actually teaching and uh just it, i'm just done i'm i'm ex i'm mentally and physically exhausted every day and i've i put a lot into it and I don't have it anymore. And there's just, there's just too much to do before it was just teaching. And now it's, it's, I, every day I told, told my wife, like I used to expect to have a normal day and every day would get upheaved with crisis emails, things that have to be done this second parent calls, what have you. And if it was just me and the kids all day, I could probably do it another 20 years. Well, that's like when I was at Kentucky, I'm like, dude, this is awesome. I get to coach athletes. And then you realize, well, being a strength coach, that's about 30% of your job as the head guy. Yeah. You got to do all this other shit. I'm like, why can't it just be about training the kids? Wouldn't that be awesome? I'm not saying I don't, I don't have to go to a couple meetings right. in there, but let's just be what I am. But people tell me what a great job I do. Then just leave me alone. Yeah. Just, just leave me alone. Leave don't, me out of your shit. Yeah, and 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 that's that's it. So, I'll I'll miss the kids. I love and I work with two. I work with amazing staff. I love the ladies I work with. I've been with them forever. I, Jess is in my building. Like the funniest thing we talk about is Jess is working one more year after I do. If I had to work one more year, and she was get to retire, she's like, "There's no way I could retire. There's no way you'd get through the day." I'm like an orchid. <laughs> it's very hard to keep me going. She drives me to work. She I, like I have like four or five work wives who get because I'm a wreck. I'm emotionally unstable. I'm hostile, but I, I I give everything to the. I don't show that to the kids, and so I spend myself every day. So for me, like training is cathartic. I'm like ah. Mm -hmm. I get home like yes, I get to release because that all day I'm just hanging out. You know, you work with kids and especially special needs kids. I'm not taking anything out on them, and I'm trying. And man, adults, I wouldn't let most of people I'm adults around walk my dog, let alone teach my kids. I mean, it's a <laughs> scary world out there. So I'm like just done, and I think I'm that old dude. I just put too much into it. I, I care too much, and you know, I still work with Special Olympics with powerlifting, and I I will donate time. Um, I'm in a position where I. Don't I don't live extravagantly. We talk, I've talked Jim a million years. I said I don't, don't live beyond my needs. I have simple. I just want to travel, and I'm my wife's not bougie. We can stay in a hostel. Like I just I just want to experience, and I'm done. Like I, there's no part of me. Like I see people are like, oh, they're retiring, and I, I the concept of me being one year away, I'm giddy. Like ever, <laughs> I, so that's all I can think about is the amount of days left, and it doesn't mean I hate what I do. I just rather not. I'm fulfilled. My life is fulfilling enough without work. My father was very, he was very driven to be successful. He's very self-made. Like, and I watched, you know, when he retired, he like just really 
my dad's 84 years old, double cancer survivor, and really struggles with health, and he's still putting business deals together because that's what drives him. So I watch that, and I'm like, I, I just want to enjoy my life now. I just want to spend my life and just with a wanderlust when I'm lucky to have Jess and hobbies. And I'm gonna visit. You guys are gonna get sick of me. I right, come out visit friends and go see Harry. Go to Costa Rica. No one's home. <laughs> Housekeeping. <laughs> so I, I again, I'm done. Yeah, I put my time in, and I, I'm I'm just thrilled. So yeah, this time next year, there there will be less tempered language, and probably I could probably share a lot more stories that I I wouldn't. No, those are today. the ones that we're looking forward yeah. to, right? It's like all the... <laughs> I'll remember them as the year, yeah, and I'll write yeah, them down because. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's in Matt knows that, you know, in that field, you can't, you can't be, your, you can't be your true self. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta temper it a little bit. Yeah. And, it, and that's unfortunate bit. because I'm lucky it doesn't change well, what I do and, and who I am. Unfortunate, and it's unfortunate and frustrating because it's, these are important jobs, you know, yeah. and it kind of sucks to sit here and hear that, but it is what it's become, yeah. you know, and let people listen, you know, let people have a personal life. Let them talk about their personal lives. Let them do their thing. The fact if I was on here cursing or talking about various things in my past wouldn't change what I do in a classroom. And that I constantly have to worry about that and how I comport myself outside of, you know, of what I do every day. You know, I'm not saying I should be breaking the law and, you know, but you can't. Every, mm -hmm. every, every step is, you know, a, a landmine. And you can barely find people to do these jobs as it is. And yet they make it tougher and tougher. And it's like, just, just leave me alone. Let me be a human being. Like, isn't doing my job well enough that, that I have to worry about it? You know, it, it's, that's, it sucks. It, yeah. it really does, yeah. you know. And, you know, the powerlifting, especially the world we came up in, is a pretty wild place. Yeah, it's pretty, say whatever the fuck you want. Right. Roll, the, you people, know? the people we came up with. And so, like, yeah, what, does that change who I am? And but uh, to share those stories, yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'd, no I'd, be, I I'd be retired much earlier. <laughs> you, I mean, Jim would know, but you have no idea how many people that we've had be a part of the team that end up going into a different profession or moving into a certain profession and then send us messages like, Hey, man, can you delete <laughs> you know my training log or can you delete? And I understand it. Yeah. I mean, part of it's like, fuck it, you should be, you should be able to leave this up. Yeah. Everybody you know? should be able to leave <clears> it up. But yes. that's stupid. And it's just stupid shit. There's nothing there that is that bad. But to somebody, it will be judged and characterized and all this other kind of shit, which is stupid as fuck, you know? I tell you, the best thing about getting old is I know why the guy wears Velcro sneakers and has plaid pants up to his navel, up to his, you know, his, 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 his breasts. He no longer cares. <laughs> yeah. And that's awesome. And I love the fact that most people lament getting older. I'm like, I, I could care less when I go, but I love the fact that each year I don't have to care as much about being who I want to be. And mm -hmm. just to be, to be able to be my authentic self a year from now, it's, it's very liberating. You know, that sounds like a podcast for sure. <laughs> We need to start making the notes. Now, yeah, right? we'll show like everything he says, just fucking nod it, you know, yeah. right? jot it down. Yeah. <clears throat> Were there any topics you guys wanted to bring up or talk about that I didn't push out there? Or that didn't just did come you, up randomly? Did you answer all the questions that you were going to ask? There's like three I answered. We had them perfect <laughs> done. Perfect. Yeah. Now, this is, I, I just love coming out. I, I mean, it, it's. Uh, no, this is my I favorite podcast. You guys, We've yeah. done this like fucking eight times oh, or whatever. I want to share something. something crazy like that, yeah. I go back and look to like, cause I like answer questions and, and I, I remember always getting like, you know, if you, you did well, you kind of get chewed up there. There's one guy out there. I can't remember, but I'm sure there'll be five, 10 comments. He'll just post about how awful I am and how much he hates me <laughs> on this. And I just want to share with I you. I hope it's Jess. I, I just want to share with <laughs> I just want you to do something that's good enough to get you heard anywhere where people can talk about you. And if not, maybe you should just shut up. 
or the stop trolls listening. were getting to him. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I just like I just think about because it, the greatest thing is well, yeah. one time when I got trolled and Shabbat called me up. And he's like, I'm like, dude, they're killing me on Outlaws. He's like, you made it. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He goes, they don't talk about nobodies. <laughs> you shared that with me when I yeah. was getting. Yeah, you were getting hammered yeah, for a squat, yeah, yeah. which would have probably been like you know would have been like uh, th- three white lights nowadays. You know, with well, we we can redirect all that by just saying you know the one thing we didn't talk about is the Desenzio warm up, but we'll. <laughs> We'll just bring that up at a different time. Jim understands the humor behind this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. No, thank you yeah. guys for coming out. Thank you. As always, always, it was always, great. Man. And um, we're Dave. I appreciate it, but no, yeah, thank always. you guys. We're done. <clears throat>